Lu Yida's student said that he would do it if Miss Zhang Minghua herself wanted it so much and now he wanted to surprise her with playing the accordion. Lu Yida's disciple thought that he was handsome and would now play so that all the people would be surprised and ask him to play even more music. Lu Yida's student was proud of himself and asked all the people what kind of music they wanted him to play, he could do whatever his friends wanted. Peng Xinghua told Lu Yida that he could play Lake Baikal and he had never played this song very well and he could learn the song. Lu Yida told Mr. Peng Xinghua that he agreed with him 100% and began to play a melody on the accordion and was happy about everything. Lu Yida thought that he was doing great and he could be so proud of himself because he surprised all his friends and did not waste his skill. Zhang Minghua was happy and told Lu Yida that he was doing very well and Peng Xinghua also liked this student's melody. Zhang Minghua asked Lin how he liked the song and he said that it was all very cool and Lu Yida played the accordion well and had talent. Zheng Wenjia asked if Lin was familiar with such an instrument as the accordion and if he would like to give him some tips on playing it. Director Lin thought that the system had given him talent for other instruments besides the piano, and did he really want to humiliate him now? Zi Qing Yen was furious and said that this was impossible and Lin Yi had not studied music at all and how could he ask him to play a melody there. But Lu Yida's student told Zi Qing Yang that it's okay and he still wants to listen, after all, everyone is there anyway and it's not difficult. Peng Xinghua agreed with the student Lu Yida and told director Lin that he should not be shy and then everything would work out for him there right away. Director Lin finished his food and told Lu Yida that he would then say everything directly and would not delay in answering his question and he was very tired. Principal Lin told student Lu Yida that he had made too many mistakes and there was no point in giving him any advice and that was his problem. Zhang Minghua and Peng Xinghua were shocked by Director Lin's words and they wondered if he was reprimanding their talented master Lu. The students were also shocked by Principal Lin's words and thought that he himself understood music and that he himself could play right now. Disciple Lu Yida was angry and asked Principal Lin if he had made a lot of mistakes and asked if he was being too clever. Zhang Minghua asked Lu Yida not to rush to conclusions and first they wanted to listen to what Lin would say and what he would play for them now. Director Lin finished his food and thought that they did not believe that now he could perform the melody perfectly and they would be amazed by the performance. Lin told Lu Yida that he was not on time in the second part and already in the middle he began to rush too much and there were still many problems in his playing. Miss Z was delighted and thought, is there really nothing that her dear Lin doesn't understand well and he knew everything in this life and in the world. Teacher Zhang Minghua and Peng Xinghua were shocked and did not believe that Lin was able to notice all the mistakes in Lu Yida's game and he knew their solution. Lu Yida told Lin that he played in front of professionals and he personally wants to hear how he plays and there is a big difference between them. Zhang Minghua was happy with this idea and told Lin that her student Lu Yida was right and she really wanted him to play for them and it was interesting. Director Lin said that if teacher Zhang Minghua wants to hear him play now, then he is not against it and now he will start his game. Director Lin stood up and asked the guests to let him show them how to play the Baikal melody correctly and they would learn all this now. Director Lin took the accordion and thought that he would succeed, and student Lu Yida looked at him and wanted the scoundrel to fail there. Principal Lin began to play the melody and thought that all the students had never heard such a performance and they should learn from Master Lin. Director Lin continued to press the keys and thought that this melody was not difficult and you just need to adapt to it. Teacher Zhang Minghua and Peng Xinghua were surprised because they never expected that Lin would be able to answer for his words and play even better. Director Lin continued to play the melody on the accordion and all his friends sat silently and listened to the melody because the music was the best. Director Lin realized that he was right and he still had the skill and could still play any melody perfectly on different instruments. Peng Xinghua told Zhang Minghua that Lin was indeed very good and could be compared to a professional and could do absolutely everything. Zhang Minghua told Peng Xinghua that when she listened to this song, she felt like she saw a beautiful landscape and it was all so incredible. Principal Lin told teacher Zhang Minghua that she was too kind to him and it wasn't that difficult and he was happy to show them his skills. Lu Yida was not happy about this and told teacher Zhang Minghua that now such a talent is still not very useful and he is not at all surprised by it. Lu Yida said that he wants to say thank you to teacher Zhang Minghua for what she made him into and now his company is growing steadily. Lu Yida said that they will soon reach the billion yuan mark and teacher Zhang Minghua was very happy and said that this is so cool. 
Lu Yida said that teacher Zhang Minghua may not even understand this, but he assures that now he is conducting serious business in the company. But Lu Yida said that the person with whom they are negotiating for investments is their classmate He Yuan and this company of theirs is very cool. Director Lin and Miss Z froze in surprise and thought that they did not expect that Lu Yida was collaborating with Yuan and he was so proud of it. Teacher Zhang Minghua told student Lu Yida that she can only wish him success and she believes that he will succeed soon. Lu Yida asked Director Lin where he worked and said that if he wanted, he could invest in his company and give him money. Lu Yida told Lin that Zi Qing Yang has a family business and he can help him with investments, but Lin must work hard there. Director Lin told student Lu Yida that he did not need investments and thought that he thought he was talking to a beggar and he did not know. Lu Yida's student put his glass of wine on the table and immediately asked Lin how stupid one would have to be to refuse there. Lu Yida's student told Director Lin that Zi Qing Yang would not save him from bankruptcy and he should not have refused because he could have helped him with his troubles. If Principal Lin told student Lu Yida that he was allowing himself too much now and it was better for him not to say such things and it was ugly. And at that very second someone knocked on the door and the guests thought who it could be because all the friends had already gathered in the house together for a long time. The student opened the door and told the girl that she came to their house just in time and they were just talking about her and she was glad to meet. It was He Yuan and she asked teacher Zhang Minghua for forgiveness for being late and said that she had a lot of work and she was so ashamed. Lu Yida immediately stood up and asked He Yuan to sit next to him and he said that they understand everything and now she is a very busy person. Yuan smiled and asked Lu Yida not to talk nonsense and she is not such a busy person and should have arrived on time like her friends. Zhang Minghua asked Yuan to sit down and said that she would go and immediately bring her cutlery and he Yuan said thank you to the teacher. But suddenly at this moment Yuan froze in place in surprise and she was in shock and did not expect to notice her boss Lin in the house now. Yuan approached director Lin and asked him what he was doing there now and she was surprised because she thought that he had gone somewhere on their business. Director Lin told Yuan that Zi Qing Yang invited him there and they were having a good time with her friends and they were all great people. Lu Yida's student was surprised to hear these words and asked he Yuan what she called Lin and could not understand why she respected him so much. Yuan told Lu Yida that she called director Lin the boss and immediately asked if they really knew each other and when did they manage to do everything. Principal Lin looked at student Lu Yida and thought that this guy had just realized that he was mistaken and he shouldn't have talked to him like that. Lu Yida was shocked and asked director Lin if he was the head of that same Lin Yun company and how is this possible and it looks like a dream. Yuan asked Lu Yida if director Lin didn't look like the head and said that he had a lot of money and owned the Twin Towers. Yuan said that Director Lin has all the machines worth more than 60 million yuan and he still manages to make more investments. Yuan asked the boss why Director Lin didn't tell her that he himself would be there and said that this was impossible and she was not ready for this. Afterwards they went outside and Miss Z asked teacher Minghua to take care of her health and she hopes that they will meet again soon. Teacher Zhang Minghua and Peng Xinghua said goodbye to Zi Qing Yang and they asked them to be careful on the road and she was very happy to meet. And then Lu Yida approached director Lin and asked him if he was busy and if he wanted to play golf after lunch and they were friends. Director Lin immediately hugged Yuan and thought that he had a plan and he would now show Lu Yida that he made a mistake and he would not forgive him. But director Lin also hugged Zi Qing Yang and thought that the two of them would help him with the plan and he wanted to tease Lu Yida for all his affairs. Director Lin asked student Lu Yida what was interesting about golf and said that he had more interesting things to do than golf and should go. Director Lin left there hugging the girls and student Lu Yida looked at him and realized that he was wrong and in vain he mocked him in the house. Director Lin asked Yuan what was going on with the Fenlang Culture Company and what she had learned about the company and he was interested in knowing all these nuances. Yuan told Director Lin that Chao Qingqiu just contacted her today and she offered her something and they had a long dialogue. Yuan told Director Lin that when asked if she intended to invest there, she answered positively and thought it was good. Director Lin asked Yuan to make an appointment with her tomorrow afternoon at the Bandao Hotel and they will discuss all matters with her and solve all their problems. Yuan agreed with Director Lin and thought that he would definitely decide all the matters himself and they would be able to agree on a deal for their company. But Zi Qing Yen asked Director Lin how much can she talk about work and suggested that they better have fun because they are not often together. 
Yuan told Director Lin that she didn't want to be a third wheel and that it was too much and suggested that they should go together and have fun. Zi Qing Yen asked Yuan what she was talking about and she wanted to invite her to swim and there is an excellent pool in Jaya's house. Yuan was surprised and thought that she better not go with them and they also want to swim and why should she go and interfere with their romance. Yuan told Director Lin and Miss Z that they would be fine there without her and quickly ran away from there and realized that it was right. After Director Lin and Miss Z arrived in Jaya's house, she immediately dived into the pool and thought that she was so tired after a long day. Zi Qing Yen continued to swim and thought that it was in vain that he Yuan didn't go with them now, because she works a lot and could use some rest. Miss Z swam and started to get out of the pool and realized that Director Lin did not want to swim and was only sitting next to the pool. Director Lin continued to look at Zi Qing Yang and realized that he was so lucky and had a very beautiful girlfriend and he was so happy about it. Miss Z was surprised and asked Director Lin why he was looking at her like that and what he wanted to say because he scared her a little there. Director Lin pulled Zi Qing Yang towards him and thought that she was right and he wants to tell her something and thinks that the sweetheart will be happy. Director Lin invited Zi to become his CEO and he quickly wants to integrate all available resources by the end of the year. Director Lin told Zi Qing Yang that if she went to him, he would be very happy because he needed such a valuable employee like her. Miss Zi told Lin that Chao Yang company had not lived up to expectations and she was afraid that no one would like her sudden change of company. Director Lin told Zi that if she gets tired he will help her and he will do whatever she asks and he promises her this. Director Lin began to wait for Zi to answer his question and he wanted them to work together on the project and this would definitely give them success. Miss Zi told Lin that she would think about it then and she only asked Director Lin to give her time to think about it and she would say. The next morning, Director Lin took Zi Qing Yang to her Chao Yang company and thought that she would work every day for the development of Chao Yang. Director Lin said goodbye to Zi Qing Yang and thought that he would wait until the end for her to be able to work with him and this is his dream. And at that very second, Wang Ying appeared behind Director Lin and he was surprised and asked her where she was going, so beautiful and elegant. Wang Ying asked Lin if he remembers about the Qing Feng project and the company owes them more than 10 million and this which Yu Lily is interfering with them. Director Lin asked Wang Ying if they had not repaid the debt after so much time and he also wanted to go with her to these hyenas. Wang Ying said thank you to Director Lin and she will definitely be much calmer when he is around and can protect her from scoundrels. Director Lin called Yao and asked him to send someone to the gate of Qing Feng Company and this is important and he cannot wait for them for long. Director Lin sat in the Pagani with Wang Ying and told Yao that they just need to force him to repay the debt and the scoundrels will regret their actions. Half an hour later, Director Lin and Wang Ying arrived at Qing Feng Company together, and Lin thought that he would quickly teach a lesson for the delay. Director Lin got out of the car and began to wait for his people and then a car drove up to them and he was glad that they arrived on time. Yao told Director Lin that he was glad to meet him and asked the boss what the order would be and they were ready to carry out whatever he wanted. Director Lin told his people that they would enter the building and ask him to repay the debt, and he should wait for his instructions there on the street. Yao and his friend told Director Lin that they understood him and they would be there waiting for him and ready to help at any time if he needed it. Director Lin and Wang Ying went to Qing Feng Company and the administrator asked them who they were looking for and if they had an appointment for today. She said that she was the manager of the company Chao Yang Wang Ying and next to her was Director Lin and four months ago they owed them millions. Wang Ying told the administrator that she wanted to talk about it with Director Li there and he owes them 11 million yuan. The administrator told Wang Ying that she was very sorry and that Director Li was there to meet guests and they would not have time to receive them and they both had to leave. Director Lin told the administrator that if they don't all want the good, then it will be the bad and he himself will go look for Director Li. The administrator was furious and told Director Lin that if he wanted to break into the director's office, she would call security now. At this time, in the general manager's office, Li Ching Feng told Miss Chao that this was the last payment of 600,000 yuan. The head of Feng Lang Culture Chao Qingxiu took the check that Li Ching Feng gave her and thought that he was doing a good job there. Chao Qingxiu told Li Ching Feng that she hopes that he will continue to work in the same spirit and it is hot there and she does not want to run there. The director of the company, Li Qing Feng, told Miss Chao that he would completely rely on the media company Fenlang Culture and they were all their friends. 
And at that moment the door to the general director's office opened and he didn't know who it could be because he asked not to disturb him now. Director Lin came into the office and said good afternoon to Li Ching Feng and they had not seen him for a long time and he missed his best friendly. The receptionist ran after Lin and told director Li Ching Feng that she couldn't stop them but said that she couldn't go there now. Director Lin asked Li Ching Feng if it was time to pay off the nearly 12 million debt on their project and they waited for a long time. Li Ching Feng told Director Lin that his business was not going well right now and they should come back later and then he could pay off all the debts. But Director Lin sat next to Li Ching Feng and thought that he thought that they would just leave there and believe his words that he would pay off the debt. Director Lin asked Li Ching Feng who he wanted to deceive and said that he would give 10 minutes to collect the money and pay off the entire debt. Director Lin told Li Qing Feng that otherwise he would lose the company and Li was shocked and asked Lin if he was threatening him there now. Wang Ying told boss Li Qing Feng that they would not create problems without a reason and Lin is doing everything right and he should pay off his debts. Wang Ying said that the PR department and the legal department of the Chaoyang company will not tolerate such treatment, but they do not want to spoil their reputation. Director Li Qing Feng told Wang Ying that Miss Chao's company was also working for him now and he no longer had to fear for his reputation. Director Lin turned around and thought that this couldn't be and how could it be possible because he never expected to see someone he knew now. Director Lin looked at Chao Qingqiu and thought that the world is so small and they met her without an appointment and he didn't know that she was there now. Director Li Qing Feng was angry and asked the administrator why she was standing there and told her to call Bin there and he would deal with everyone. Li Qing Feng told Director Lin that even if he breaks both of his legs in the office now, it will not affect him in any way and this is all a fact. Li Qing Feng pointed his finger at Director Lin and said that it would be better if he left there himself and did not force him to take action now. But at that very second, Director Lin's men dealt with Li Qingfeng's guards there and they fell to the ground and could no longer protect the boss. Yao Dong and his men entered the room and they were armed and waited for what boss Lin would order them to do and they would all do anything. Director Li Qingfeng looked at brother Dong and could not understand why he came there with his men and what he needed from him now. Li Qingfeng asked brother Dong what happened and why he attacked his men there and offered his friend a cigarette to calm his nerves. But suddenly Yao Dong grabbed Li Qing Feng by the shoulder and told the director that anyone who crosses the path of boss Lin will immediately pay for it. Li Qing Feng was shocked and wondered if Lin is the boss and controls even such influential people and he even has his own army. Director Lin told Li Qing Feng that no one would help him and they would now round up the amount to 15 million with his interest. Director Li Ching Feng was surprised and couldn't believe his ears and asked Lin why such a large percentage and he didn't have any money yet. Director Lin was furious and asked Li Ching Feng if they could now exchange the interest for one of his legs and that would suit him now. But Li Ching Feng was horrified and asked Director Lin not to be angry and he would give him all the money and he might not be nervous about this matter. Li Ching Feng gave Director Lin a check for the entire amount of the debt and realized that it was good that he had money, otherwise he could have suffered there now. Director Lin took the check and told Wang Ying that they could leave and there they finished all the business and he had no more questions for Li Ching Feng. Li Ching Feng exhaled and told Miss Chao that he hoped that now she would put pressure on Chao Yang company and they deserved it all. Director Li Qing Feng told Miss Chao that he wants them all to fully feel the extent of his grievance and that this is all serious. Chao Qingqiu told Li Qing Feng that she understood his words and as long as he paid her, she would do everything possible and solve the problem. Chao Qingqiu told Li Qing Feng that she had a meeting with her new investor soon and therefore she should leave him and go about her business. After Chao, Qing Qiu arrived at the Bandao Hotel and thought that she was so interested in what kind of character this investor had and what he could give her. Chao Qing Qiu went to the Bandao Hotel and wondered if this investor had come there and she wanted to quickly resolve her affairs in Bandao and leave. Chao Qing Qiu noticed that the investor was sitting there and asked Mr. Lin if he had already arrived and if he was waiting for her there and she barely made it. But at that very second, Chao Qing Qiu froze in surprise and was in shock and thought, is this really the person she's been thinking about all this time? Chao Qing Qiu asked the director if he was the head of the Ling Yun company and it was he who came to the director Li Qing Feng for Wang Ying's debt. Director Lin moved the table and thought that he hoped that he could surprise her and he succeeded and Miss Chao was surprised. 
Chao Qingxiu sat down on a chair and Director Lin asked her if he didn't look like the head of the Lin Yun company and many people were talking about it. Chao Qingxiu told Director Lin that he really took her by surprise there and she did not expect that Lin was such an influential businessman. Chao Qing told Director Lin that their funding plan is already 14 million and has he read their work plan? Director Lin told Chao Qing Chiu that he had not read their plan yet and he said that he would give them 20 million to implement their plan. Chao Qing asked Director Lin if he really wanted to invest his extra 6 million for no reason to get her. Director Lin told Chao Qing that she thinks too much and he said that he wants 36% shares and this is the condition. Chao Qing told Director Lin that with a normal ratio of shareholders, 20 million would receive 32%. Director Lin told Chao Qing that other companies could not give them that much money and buying shares would not be a loss of money for him. Chao Qing agreed with Director Lin and said that if he is so generous, then she will forget about the incident with Li Qingfeng and has already forgotten everything. And then someone called Chao Qing and she told the person that she had already told him not to call her and asked if her brother was at home and where he was. Chao Qing Chiu said that she is currently having negotiations and she can no longer talk on the phone and she will call back later and they will discuss all matters. Director Lin heard Chao Qing's conversation and was worried and immediately asked her what happened and if there was anything he could do to help her now. Chao Qing told Director Lin that this is nothing and her dad can't handle something and wants her to help him and she will go there. Chao Qing got up from her seat and began to quickly leave from there and Director Lin looked at her and thought that something was wrong there and he knows. And at that moment, Director Lin received a call from Wang Ran and he thought that he should find out all the information about the conversation between Investor Chao. Director Lin asked Wang Ran if Chao Xiangyu had made another move and the interlocutor said that yesterday he heard the news about Cisco. Wang Ran told Director Lin that Cisco seems to have an idea on how to expand the foundry, but he doesn't know when it will be implemented. Director Lin asked Wang Ran to wait for him at the factory and find him two excavators and drive them to the factory area, and the faster the better. And after a couple of minutes, excavators were already standing on the territory of the plant and Director Lin was glad that Wang Ran quickly completed his task. Wang Ran told Director Lin that the excavators are already here and she is already waiting for instructions from the boss and wants to help him solve the problem now. Director Lin told Wang Ran that she should inform all the drivers there and let them demolish a couple of internal warehouses and quickly. Wang Ran was surprised and asked Director Lin if he really wasn't joking and wanted them to demolish the warehouse and why did he decide to do this. But Director Lin asked Wang Ran to do everything as he said and he knows that they will be stopped and this is part of the plan and he knows what he is doing. Wang Ran told Director Lin that she understood his instructions and immediately ran to the drivers to tell them what their boss said. Wang Ran approached the drivers and said that boss Lin asked them to quickly demolish the four warehouses and then dig a hole two meters deep. The driver was very surprised and told Director Lin that these were very good warehouses and it was a pity to demolish them and maybe he would change his mind about demolishing them. But Director Lin asked the drivers not to talk and if they work quickly, he will charge them another 500 for each day of work. The drivers were very happy with Director Lin's words and said that they would quickly demolish all the warehouses and quickly ran to complete everything. At this time, Director Lin was sitting at the table and eating sweets and himself watched how the drivers worked and what they did well. And at that very second, someone started calling Director Lin and he realized that his plan worked and he was waiting for this call and now he will find out everything. Wang Ran told Director Lin that Chao Xiangyu was calling him and she asked if he didn't want to answer him and maybe this was an important matter. Director Lin asked Wang Ran to behave calmly and there is definitely an informer there and therefore Chao Xiangyu knows about their every move. The drivers wanted to start work and thought that nothing could stop them and they would quickly demolish all the warehouses and get their money. But at that moment, Chao Xiangyu quickly ran there and asked all the drivers to stop demolishing warehouses because they are very good. Director Lin said that brother Chao Xiangyu came there and he was so happy to see him and asked how his life was and what interesting things happened. Chao Xiangyu was angry and asked Director Lin why there were these two excavators and what he wanted to do and this was a very bad idea of his. Director Lin told Chao Xiangyu that he wanted to demolish all the warehouses and dig a large pond there to raise carp for transportation. 
Director Lin told Chao Xiangyu that he had been so unlucky lately and that the money he gave him he spent quickly in two days. Chao Xiangyu told Director Lin that then he would give him another 200,000 but asked him to transfer management of the warehouse to him and this is important. Director Lin told Chao Xiangyu that this was too much and said that if he handed over management of the warehouse to him, he would become the director of the plant. Chao Xianyu signaled to his assistant and thought that he had a plan and he could implement it 100% and he himself was confident. He, Chao Xianyu told Director Lin that he would rent his warehouses and Cisco products would be stored in them and this would all be to his benefit. Director Lin told Chao Xianyu that then the warehouses at the factory would already be under his control and any problems would be his business and not theirs. Chao Xiangyu smiled evilly and thought that what an idiot Lin is and he gave away four warehouses for only 200,000 and this is a cool deal. The assistant told director Chao Xiangyu that here is the contract and she and director Lin can sign it and they will quickly close the deal. Chao Xiangyu told director Lin that he should sign this contract now and then they can get down to business and that's good. But director Lin showed Chao Xianyu his phone number and said that he must pay first and then he will sign the contract so quickly. Chao Xiangyu thought that he would now transfer the money to Director Lin and then he could trick him into getting all the idiot's buildings at a discount. And then Director Lin noticed that a notification had come to his phone that the transfer of 200,000 had been successfully completed and was so happy. Director Lin signed the contract and told Chao Xiangyu's brother that they would hand over the production line and warehouse to him and he would be happy. Director Lin told Chao Xiangyu that he wishes his brother success in his business and wealth but not to forget his brother and all his help. Chao Xiangyu told Director Lin that of course he would never forget his help and now he will go and he still has a lot to do today. And then Wang Ran approached Director Lin and asked the boss why he should give all the warehouses to Chao Xiangyu because he didn't deserve all this at all. Director Lin told Wang Ran that of course he did it for the sake of these 200,000 yuan and originally he had a plan and this is his success. After Chao Xiangyu came home and thought that he had successfully done everything he had planned and that idiot Lin couldn't understand anything and he was stupid. Chao Xiangyu told his dad that he had news for him and he would be so happy because he had long wanted to hear good news about their business. Chao Xianyu saw Chao Qing Chiu in the house and asked if she was there too and why didn't she tell him that she would come to visit them today. Chao Qing Chiu told Chao Xiangyu that she didn't want to bother him and he is so busy with business every day and he is trying hard for the sake of the whole business. The father asked Chao Xianyu to have tea with them and he told him that he had news and asked him to tell him about all their affairs. Chao Xiangyu told his father that the Kichuan conveyors were now completely under his control and sat down on a chair and realized that he could relax at home. The father got up from his seat and asked Chao Xiangyu if this was true and he said that this was excellent and that he competently ran the business of his entire family. Chao Xiangyu told his father that this is not all and now he also manages the warehouse himself and he was able to convince Lin to sell him a profitable warehouse. Chao Xianyu pulled out the document and told his father that according to the contract, their people would be able to dispose of it as they wish and he did not believe his luck. The father told his son Chao Xianyu that he was great and should continue in the same spirit and soon he will reach a new level and he will become the best. Chao Xianyu told his father that he not only completed all his tasks well, but also exceeded them and he would never let his family down. The father told Chao Xiangyu that he had done a good job and when this project was finally completed, he could return to the family company. Chao Xiangyu thought that Chao Qing Chiu is a creature and she wants to reach his level, but she won't succeed because she doesn't have the same mind. But suddenly Chao Qing Chiu asked Chao Xiangyu who was the person in charge of Kichuang and how he committed this stupidity and was blatantly deceived. Chao Xiangyu asked what stupid thing he did and she doesn't know how much effort he spent on this matter and she recently graduated from college. The father told Chao Qingqiu that she was thinking too much about it and the contract had already been signed and his son had done everything right as always. But at that very second, Chao Qingqiu took her wallet and told Xianyu's father that they would pretend that she didn't say this and she was silent. Chao Qingqiu began to leave home and told Xianyu's father that she would not interfere with them and they could solve their problems themselves and that's all. Chao Qingqiu was driving a car and she was wondering why all her relatives were so stupid and did not understand obvious things. Chao Qingqiu thought and realized that she should check this very strange Kichuan company and she thinks that there is a hidden catch. At this time, 
Director Lin had already arrived in Jaya's house and was lying in his room at night with Miss Z, and everything was fine with the businessman. But then at night Director Lin received a call from manager Shen Tianzhua and he thought what he needed at such a time and he had to answer. Director Lin glanced at Miss Z and realized that she was still fast asleep and thought that was good and he didn't want to wake her up there now. Director Lin asked Shen Tianzhua why he called at a late hour and asked if he didn't know about the rules of decency of people. Shen Tianzhua said that he wants to return to China and discussed it with the team and they booked tickets and will arrive in Zhonghai tomorrow. Director Lin told Shen Tianzhua that he would pick him up tomorrow and he learned that 22 people with family members would fly in with the scientist. Director Lin told Shen Tianzhua that he understood him and they would see him tomorrow and discuss all the important matters and he should sleep now. The next morning, Director Lin looked at the hotel and thought that he should decide where Shen Tianzhua and all his acquaintances would live there. Director Lin thought that Shen Tianzhua would arrive in the afternoon and he must quickly resolve the issue of their accommodation. Director Lin entered the hotel and began to look around and thought about how to solve the problem and accommodate so many of his friends. At the director's entrance, Lin met Feng Qian and asked Boss Lin if he needed an apartment and how she could help him, and she was very happy. Feng Qian told Director Lin that their Longjing home is famous for the fact that they deal with residential apartments of even any class. Feng Qian told Director Lin that although their price is a little higher than others, it is worth the money and he can trust them. Director Lin thought, isn't this at home and told Feng Qian that he seems to have come to the wrong place and he apologizes for taking up time. The man told Lin that when he learned the price, he immediately changed his mind and it was clear to them that he could not afford such expensive housing and Lin was poor. Feng Qian asked Director Lin not to pay attention to these people and if there is no apartment they need, they will continue to look for it together. Director Lin told Feng Qian that the problem is not money and he still remembers seeing their villas but now they seem like houses. The workers told their friends that Director Lin was afraid of losing his dignity there and if they were him, they would simply leave there silently. Feng Qian told Director Lin that Long Jinghong has villas and she can show them to him if he wants and he can choose the villas. The workers said that as far as they know, the cheapest villas there cost more than 200 million yuan, and Lin is a beggar. The workers said that it was time for Director Lin to stop doing nonsense there and that he was just wasting their time and it was a shame for him. Feng Qian began to show Director Lin the layouts of their villa and she said that she would choose the best option for him of all. Feng Qian told Director Lin that their villas have the most incredible views and the most luxurious one costs 360 million yuan. Director Lin told Feng Qian that he understood her and she need not continue further and he wanted to tell her something and he listened to her words. The employee asked why he froze and 360 million is too much money and he got scared and he wants to go home. But Director Lin told the employee that he was wrong in his guesses and he would buy the most expensive villa and even pay the entire amount at once. Feng Qian froze in surprise and was in shock and wondered if Director Lin really had so much money and didn't believe that Lin would buy. The workers were also perplexed and realized that they were mistaken and thought that Director Lin had no money and he only came to chat with them. Feng Qian asked Director Lin if this is true and he wants to buy villa number one and it is the most luxurious villa among all the villas. Feng Qian agreed with Director Lin and said that then she would go and use his card to pay and then draw up the agreement. The employee asked Director Lin how much money he had on his card if he bought a villa for more than 300 million without looking at him. And at that very second, the workers began to run to Director Lin and they wanted to quickly close the deal because this was their largest deal. The woman told Director Lin that everything was ready and his card and contract were stamped and all you need to do is sign and he will buy the villa. The employee did not believe his ears and realized that Director Lin was not lying and he actually purchased the villa worth more than 300 million. The woman looked at the employee with rage and said that he would be fined 10,000 for such rude treatment of customers. Afterwards, Director Lin came to the airport to meet Shen Tianzhua there today and he promised that he would find a place for him and friends. Director Lin entered the airport and noticed that some girl was standing next to him and he was looking at her without taking his eyes off and he froze there. Director Lin thought that this girl was so beautiful and there was something unusual and secret about her, and he couldn't take his eyes off her there. The girl's name was Liang Ruxu and she continued to stand in place and wait for someone at the airport and thought about something and was so beautiful. But after a couple of seconds, 
Liang Ruxu noticed that Director Lin continued to look at her non-stop and she didn't like it at all. Liang Ruxu began to move away from Director Lin and told him that the exit was there and he could leave the airport if he wanted. And at that moment, Shen Tianzhua arrived and he began to go to Director Lin and thought that he should have personally met him today. Shen Tianzhua continued to walk towards Director Lin and realized that he had kept his word and arrived at the airport on time to meet. Director Lin noticed Shen Tianzhua and Liang Ruxu was also so glad that they had arrived and she was also waiting for these people there. They started to go to Shen Tianzhua to meet him and Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin why he kept following her. But Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he was not pursuing her, but was also going to meet people, and he stood there all this time and was waiting for them. Liang Ruxu was surprised and thought that she could not even think that this man also knew Shen Tianzhua and what he needed from him. Liang Ruxu shook hands with Shen Tianzhua and he told Mayor Liang that despite being so busy, she came to meet him and that it was an honor for him. Director Lin heard the conversation between Shen Tianzhua and Liang Ruxu and he was surprised and wondered if this girl was the mayor and he didn't imagine. Liang Ruxu told Mr. Shen Tianzhua that his return to China would have a profound impact on the high-tech industry. Liang Ruxu told Mr. Shen Tianzhua that she was simply obliged to come to the airport and meet a respected person like him. Shen Tianzhua told Liang Ruxu that as long as there is a place where he is useful to his homeland, he is only happy to help the country in developing technology. Liang Ruxu told Mr. Shen Tianzhua that she had arranged a banquet for him and his team to celebrate his arrival and he should go with her. Liang Ruxu told Mr. Shen Tianzhua that there are so many people at the airport and there is no place to talk and they will go to a cozy place. But Shen Tianzhua told Liang Ruxu that he was afraid, but today he already had a meeting with this person behind him and would not be able to go to the banquet. Liang Ruxu turned around and saw Director Lin and thought about going with him and he said that he was sorry but Shen Tianzhua should go with him. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu if she was hungry and didn't mind him taking Shen Tianzhua away from her because they had a joint business. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that then all she had to do was agree with him and she would be very happy to keep both of them company. They all went out to the parking lot and got into the car and Shen Tianzhua immediately asked Liang Ruxu and Director Lin that the two of them had not met yet. Liang Ruxu said good afternoon to Director Lin and she is very glad to meet you and she is in charge of the city economy and she is in politics. The director told Liang Ruxu that his name is Lin Yi and he is the director of that Longsong Institute and he is also very happy to meet a beautiful lady. Liang Ruxu was surprised and asked Director Lin if he was the head of the Longsong Institute and she didn't know about it and he clearly surprised her. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she did not expect that the director of the Longsong Institute was so young and he knew Mr. Shen Tianzhua. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he also did not expect such a young girl to be the mayor of the city and he was also very surprised. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he and Shen were planning to secretly develop a lithographic machine project and that's why he returned. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin if they really wanted to develop their own steppers together with Shen and they were not afraid to be left with nothing. Director Lin told Mayor Liang Ruxu that he was good at thinking and spending his money and energy, and he thought everything out in detail at the beginning. Liang Ruxu listened to him and Director Lin said that perhaps in the future he could become an example for the new generation and that's cool. Liang Ruxu thought about Director Lin's words and thought that he was really smart and was thinking about how to take on some business. Shen Tianzhua told Mayor Liang Ruxu that in truth Lin himself is also an expert in the field of computer chips and he is not even weaker than him. Liang Ruxu smiled and told Shen Tianzhua that she finally understood why he decided to return to China and this was his brave decision. Liang Ruxu told Shen Tianzhua that he returned to China because he and Director Lin had mutual sympathy and they created a miracle. And a couple of minutes later they all arrived at the Bandao Hotel and Director Lin thought that he didn't think that today he would meet the mayor. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she did not have a chance to invite him at the airport and she would agree to organize another place. But suddenly Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that she shouldn't do this and she was surprised and thought why he didn't want to rent a room. And then Director Lin smiled and told Liang Ruxu that this was his hotel and why should he book a place in his hotel and this is a fact. Mayor Liang Ruxu was surprised and asked Director Lin how this hotel could also belong to him and there are so many surprises today. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that if this is all, 
then she asks them all to come to the restaurant and they will sit together and have a banquet today. Manager Wang Tianlong met them there and told Director Lin that the banquet hall and guest rooms were ready and they could go there. They all went into the restaurant and thought that they all needed to rest because Shen Tianzhua had just arrived and had not rested at all yet. There they were met by Lu Yin and her colleague and they told Mr. Shen Tianzhua that they were very happy to see him there and wanted to discuss with him. Shen Tianzhua bowed and asked all the people not to be nervous and said that soon they would all be colleagues and work together. Shen Tianzhua told all the people that he believes that through their joint efforts the world will meet a new generation of their lithography technology. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu if she could say a few words there and people would be happy and they always wait for the word of the mayor of their city. But Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that he didn't think it was the right time for her to tell people something. But Director Lin gave Liang Ruxu a microphone and said that he was mistaken and her authority would allow them to direct all their forces in the right direction. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that this was embarrassing her and he could rest assured that she would help them all in this technology industry. But Director Lin continued to pass the microphone to Liang Ruxu and he said that she could tell this to all the people so that they all know. A couple of hours later, Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he would take her home himself and it would not be difficult for him and he would be glad to have his friend's company. But Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that there was no need to do this and she would now explain to him why she refused his offer. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that if she went in a luxury car tomorrow the whole city would know about it and said goodbye to him. After that, Liang Ruxu returned home and thought that she should talk to her father and he would learn many interesting events today. Liang Ruxu went into the house and told her father that she had returned and at that time her father was sitting on the sofa and reading news about the events in their city. The father asked Liang Ruxu how the meeting with Shen Tianzhua went and how he was feeling and whether he would stay in Zhonghai because this place is their home. Liang Ruxu told her father that Shen Tianzhua would stay and she found out that he was invited to work by a very good person for development. Father found out about the lithographic machine and told Liang Ruxu that she was right and this man's ambitions were not small and this was all so important. Liang Ruxu told her father that he needn't be nervous and that she already had a plan and thought it through carefully before starting it. Liang Ruxu told her father that there was nothing she couldn't personally handle and he didn't have to worry and his daughter wouldn't let her father down. At this time, Director Lin entered the room and sat down on the sofa and realized that he could use some rest and he was tired from all the work and he was so exhausted. Director Lin thought that finally this job was done and he had time to start his new career and this motivated him. And then Lin Wei appeared in front of Director Lin and he asked his system to open a new career and she said that she missed him. Director Lin told Lin Wei that he was also very happy to see her there and he had started a new profession and was interested in knowing the details. Director Lin remarked that this was a new career as a clinician and he could receive 80% of Baba's shares as a reward. Director Lin told Lin Wei that the rewards are excellent and with Baba's shares everything will be much easier and he wants to start this career faster. Afterwards, Director Lin went out to the parking lot and began to look for the place where the system hid the attributes and tools necessary for his career. Director Lin opened the trunk of the car and noticed that there was a box there and he could open it and start a new career with attributes. Director Lin opened the box and noticed that there were all the tools that were very necessary for a career as a clinician and he was glad about it. But Director Lin thought that he had the mind of a sage, but this was still not enough and he himself was completely incompetent in such a profession. And then someone called Director Lin and said good afternoon and he was the head of the Human Resources Department of Huashan Hospital and wants to tell the news. The head of the hospital department congratulated Director Lin and said that he had passed the selection and certification and they were waiting for him the day after tomorrow at the hospital. Director Lin got into his car and drove away and thought that he should carefully study all the information before doing important work. Director Lin came to Linyun Corporation and thought that he should find out how his company was doing and talk with Yuan about business. All the workers sat on their computers and continued to work without stopping and everything worked out for them and there were no problems there. Yuan saw Director Lin in the office and asked the boss what he was doing there and why he came there and what he wanted to talk about with her there. Director Lin told Yuan that he bought the remaining 80% of Baba's shares and it is now a subsidiary of his Linyun. Yuan was surprised by the boss's words and Director Lin told her that they need to go there and fill out the documents and then everything will be fine. 
Yuan and the others couldn't believe their boss's words and asked Director Lin if he had bought all of Bab's shares and how he did it. Director Lin sat down on the sofa and told Yuan that he needed important data from Baba Company and this could greatly help them all in their business. Director Lin told his people that they should quickly prepare everything together and he wants to move their head office to Zhonghai. Director Lin's man told the boss that he will do everything 100% and he doesn't have to be nervous about it and it's nothing. Yuan said that Director Lin first makes the two of them play spies and then dumps them and he immediately buys the Baba Company. Yuan told her colleague that she would definitely have a heart attack soon and such a position takes a lot of her strength and energy. Director Lin told Yuan that he really likes to give people work and asked he Yuan if he is not a great guy and the best boss. He Yuan thought that Director Lin thought too well of himself and told him that he was the best boss in the world and that was true. Afterwards, Director Lin came home to Jaya's house and thought that he could talk to Miss C tonight and he missed her. Director Lin went there and told his dear Miss C that he was at home and missed his loved one and wanted to know how she was doing now. Miss C told Director Lin that she is also at home and she has been waiting for her sweetheart for a long time and is glad that he came home tonight. Miss C came closer to Principal Lin and asked why he came home so late and maybe he had a lot to do today. Miss C Ching Yang told Director Lin that she smelled wine while sitting there and asked the darling if he had been out all night today. And Director Lin smiled and told Miss C that today was a good day and there was something to celebrate and he bought Baba's company and that's cool. Director Lin told Miss C that now in terms of clothes, housing, food and transportation, and transportation has been settled, all that remains is food and housing and will be settled. Miss C asked Director Lin to take his time with his business plan and it was time to look at other companies' reactions to it. Director Lin thought about it and told Miss C that she was right about everything and his sudden appearance could make all people unite. Director Lin told Miss C that competitors would try to push him out of the market right away and taking a defensive position was a wise move. Miss C told Director Lin that he had received a kiss approving all his actions and now they need to go to Yangcheng and formalize. Miss C told Director Lin that she really missed Mom Wang and they could meet and talk with her there about everything. Director Lin asked Miss C to better talk about this closer to departure and he has a lot to do and may not have time to go himself. Miss C asked Director Lin if he doesn't leave everything that concerns the Yuan company to the rest of the people to decide everything. Miss C asked Dear Lin what business he might have and she was very interested to know about it and she thought that he was free. Director Lin ran his finger over Miss C's face and thought that he knew for sure that now his sweetheart would be so surprised when she heard the news. And then suddenly Director Lin told Miss C that he had changed his profession and now he would be a doctor in the hospital in their city of Huangshan. Miss C Ching Yang was shocked and asked Lin if he really wanted to work as a doctor and didn't understand how he decided to do this and everything was strange. Miss C told Director Lin that she couldn't imagine him becoming a doctor and he could just buy equipment for hospitals. Director Lin asked Miss C why she thinks so because he is a versatile person and is sure that he can even work as a doctor. And Director Lin asked Zi Qing Yang if she didn't believe in all his powers and said that he could show her his powers if he doubted it. Miss C told Director Lin that she wants him to convince her that he is strong and these are not empty words and he can surprise her there. And at that very second, Director Lin threw Zi Qing on the sofa and said that he can check now to see if my dear has any diseases. Miss C told Principal Lin that he is like a child and all his actions are like he has a baby in his mind and has no control. Miss C realized that she was in vain asking Director Lin to show her that he was strong, because he could understand her words seriously and he would be offended there. Miss C pushed Director Lin away from her and asked him to stop acting like a fool and think about the important matters of their family. Miss C told Director Lin that she recently liked a piece of government land and wanted to participate in the tender. Zi Qing told Director Lin that she then found out that the same Zhao Zheng Yang from Kong was also participating and he should go there with her. Director Lin agreed with Zi Qing and asked if she had any information about other bidders and this was all very important. Miss C told Director Lin that the Han Hai and Yuan Dong companies owned by the Qing family would also participate in the tender with her. Director Lin listened to her and Zi Qing said that with three giants, their chances of winning the tender are slim and they are all much stronger. But Director Lin told Miss C that this is not important and they have something that competitors do not have and this is a price advantage and still every chance. 
The next morning, Director Lin and Miss Z arrived early at the tender center and realized that today they had to win there. Director Lin noticed a man next to the tender center and he was surprised and thought that he had not seen him for a long time and he missed him. Zhao Zhengyang stood in front of Director Lin and he was not happy to see Lin there and he did not like him more than anyone in this world and humiliated him. Director Lin immediately grabbed Miss Z and pulled her towards him so that Zhao Zhengyang could see everything and understand that last time he lost to him. Director Lin smiled in his face and Zhao Zheng said that Zi Qing is no longer interesting to him and there is no need to provoke him anymore. Zhao Zhengyang told Director Lin that he advises them not to participate in the tender today and they have no chance of winning. But Director Lin told Zhao Zhengyang that they would sum up all the results at the end and then find out who could win the auction there today. Director Lin began to leave from there and Zhao Zhengyang continued to stand there and thought that he would soon take revenge on the scoundrel for all his dirty tricks. The assistant asked Mr. Zhao Zheng to wait this time and after the competition they will give Director Lin a sweet life in the world. But Zhao Zhengyang told his man that they need to go and there he should talk with the mayor of Liang Ruxu and discuss everything important. The assistant told Zhao Zhengyang that he heard that Mayor Liang has a very beautiful appearance and moreover, she is from Yanjing and she is so pretty. The assistant told Zhao Zheng that the power of the Liang family is so terrifying and he asked the assistant if this is not logical and understandable. Zhao Zheng said that Liang is so young and already occupies such a high position and there is strength behind her, and even in Zhonghai everyone values her very much. At this time, Director Lin and Miss Zi went into the waiting room and they were waiting for the tender to begin and they could defeat all the competitors. Director Lin noticed that a lot of people came there today and they all want to do this business, but they won't succeed. And then suddenly Qin Han was standing in the room and he noticed Director Lin and was happy and realized that he had to say a few words to his friend. Qin Han asked Director Lin if he and Miss Si had also come there and said that he would take them to the VIP room for their rest. Director Lin was surprised and asked Qin Han if there were VIP rooms there and he had just found out about it and it was so strange. Qin Han told Director Lin that people like them usually all wait for the opening of the competition there and they can also sit there together. But Director Lin told Qin Han that they are no different from other people and they do not have any special status and this is all a lie. Qin Han told Director Lin that he was just jealous because he didn't know about it and he can admit that he just found out about it. And then Director Lin was noticed by Luo Wan and he is the deputy director of the Yuandong company and he was very happy to see Director Lin there. Luo Wan shook hands with Director Lin and said that he thought that no one would compete with them there today, but when he saw him he thought differently. Director Lin told Luo Wan that he is not participating in the tender today and this is his girlfriend from the Chaoyang company and she rules everything and knows everything. Luo Wan told Director Lin that Miss Si Qing is a very famous beauty in the circle and a real talent and is glad to see her with him. Miss Si told Luo Wan that she hoped that at the competition he, as a friend, would show mercy to her and she could win her tender. Director Lin put his hand on the deputy director of the Yuandong company's shoulder and said that he would understand what Zi Qing told him. Director Lin told Luo Wan that Zi Qing Yang meant that he sometimes needs to give way to young people so that they can prove themselves there. And then a man came out into the waiting room and told all the guests that this tender would begin soon and they should all be ready for it to begin. Director Lin and Zi Qing Yang sat down and he noticed that his sweetheart was talking anxiously on the phone and wondered who called her. Director Lin asked Zi Qing what happened and she said that the person responsible for this bargaining is Mayor Liang Ruxu and she is the head. Zi Qing Yang said that she wanted to say hello to her but Mayor Liang Ruxu did not answer her call and she doesn't know why she is ignoring. Director Lin stood up and thought that now he would quickly solve this problem and make Mayor Liang Ruxu become Zi's friend. Director Lin asked Miss Zi not to be nervous and said that he would look for her himself and tell Mayor Liang Ruxu a few words about this tender. Director Lin went out into the corridor and wrote a message to Liang Ruxu saying that she was also in the tender hall and he wanted to tell her something there. Liang Ruxu asked Lin how he knew that she was there too and she said that she would come to him in five minutes and she was not alone there now. Qin Han asked Director Lin what he was doing and did he really want to go through the back door and he had heard something about Liang Ruxu. Qin Han told Director Lin that he heard that Mayor Liang Ruxu, who is in charge of this project, is not an ordinary person and she is very beautiful. 
Director Lin began to walk up the stairs and asked Qin Han to just follow him and said that he was talking too much there. Director Lin began to go to the floor to find the room where Mayor Liang Ruxu was already sitting and he wanted to find out something and follow her. And then suddenly Director Lin noticed that Zhao Zheng Yang was standing next to Mayor Liang Ruxu's room and he was holding flowers in his hands and waiting for her. Qin Han asked Director Lin if this was not Zhao Zheng Yang and he assumed that he entered through the back door and did not know what he wanted. But Qin Han asked Director Lin why Zhao Zheng Yang had a bouquet of roses in his hands and did he really want to give them to Mayor Liang Ruxu? Director Lin told Qin Han that maybe Zhao Zheng is waiting for someone and such an annoying person like him likes to bother and do dirty tricks on him. Zhao Zheng Yang glanced at Lin and Qin Han and told his friends that they were both late and thought that he was the first and could impress the mayor there. Qin Han asked Zhao Zheng if he really asked Mayor Liang on a date and he said that he had not done so yet but it would be soon. Zhao Zheng Yang told Qin Han that he was just first in line and he and his friend should wait until he completed his negotiations. And at that moment, Mayor Liang Ruxu opened the door and thought that the guest should have already arrived and she wanted to hear what the guest wanted from her. And at that very second, Mayor Liang Ruxu froze in surprise and couldn't believe her eyes, and she didn't expect to see people there. Liang Ruxu noticed everyone there and wondered where there were so many people there and what they wanted and why everyone gathered near her room and was waiting for her. Zhao Zheng Yang handed flowers to Mayor Liang Ruxu and said that he brought them especially for her, and Director Lin asked him to get out of the way. But at that moment, suddenly Director Lin hugged Mayor Liang Ruxu and he thought that Zhao Zheng was a very vulnerable person and this would hurt him. Director Lin told Zhao Zheng that Mayor Liang Ruxu had just left the room to see him and Zhao immediately froze in surprise. Director Lin began to walk with Liang Ruxu and Qin Han was shocked and thought what Lin was doing and how he knew the mayor of the city. Qin Han called his father and said that this tender was a waste of their time and Lin had the plot in his pocket thanks to the power of the mayor Liang Ruxu. The father asked Qin Han not to say nonsense and Liang Ruxu everyone knows this with a heart of steel, but he saw Lin flirting with the mayor. The father asked the boy to pull himself together and told Qin Han that he could change everything and the success of their family in this tender depended on him. At this time, Liang Ruxu was furious and asked Director Lin what he was doing and told him to let her go and not hug her there anymore. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that the man with the flowers wanted to molest her there and he found out about his dirty plans and saved her from him. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he was just pointing this guy to his place so that he would know not to flirt with his friends there. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin why he was looking for her and whether he really wanted to get a loan for the project and what his business plans were. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he was there because of the tender and asked her to give Chaoyang Company a chance and they would not let her down under any circumstances. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that Chao Yang definitely has no problems with qualifications and reputation and they still use all resources wisely. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin if he really decided that this is how it all works and she will abuse her official position. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu not to be so categorical and they all know why she came to Zhonghai and this has not been a secret for a long time. Liang Ruxu was shocked and Director Lin asked her to give him some time and he would reveal her and she would not regret it and he himself was sure. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that she had such a soft waist, but he learned that she had a strong character and would not give anything up to anyone. Director Lin started to leave from there and Liang Ruxu was furious and wanted to yell at him but he no longer listened to her and she was angry. Liang Ruxu began to feel her waist and realized that Director Lin was acting very brazenly and how dare he hug her so suddenly. Liang Ruxu looked at Director Lin and thought that he was a fool and how she didn't do anything and she had to hit him with all her might. At this time, Zhao Zheng approached Miss Zi and said that Director Lin is amazing and he can sleep with the mayor for the sake of his sweetheart. Miss Si Qing Yen was angry and asked Zhao Zheng what he was talking about and whether he had thought before saying such dirty things. Zhao Zheng continued to stand next to Miss Si and said that he does not lie to her and he saw all this with his own eyes and he never lies to her. Zhao Zheng told Zi Qing Yang that Director Lin recently left somewhere hugging Liang Ruxu and he doesn't know what they did there together. Miss Si asked Zhao Zheng to stop talking nonsense and Director Lin doesn't even know Mayor Liang Ruxu and how can he love her without knowing her. 
And then Director Lin approached them and asked them what they were chatting about now and Zhao Zheng realized that he should have left there faster. Miss C pulled Director Lin towards her and said that now it was their turn to hand over the documents for participation in the tender and they would go there. Qin Han told Director Lin that it was cool and thought that his friend cleverly got out of this situation and nothing happened to him. And a couple of minutes later, Miss Tzu stood on stage and said that she would conduct business competently if she won the tender today. Everyone heard the words of Zi Qing Yang and the presenter said that the next ones are the Han Hai Company and they will listen to what they have to say about their tender. Miss Zi and Director Lin went outside and she was glad that they had finally finished all their work and now she could take a break from work. Zi Qing Yang invited Director Lin to celebrate the fact that they had completed a deal with him and hoped that they were successfully running their business. But Director Lin told Miss C that tomorrow was his first day at work and this was not a good idea and he had to be 100% ready. Miss C told Director Lin that then he should go home and rest and she would go to the spa with Yuan and she would rest there. The next morning, Director Lin came to Huashan Hospital and he thought that today he should not be nervous about his new job. People stood outside the hospital and asked if someone would help them and his grandfather suddenly got a stomach ache and he couldn't get up and was lying down. The guy ran up to the girl and asked her not to move and said that he was a good doctor from Huangshan and he would examine her grandfather and draw a conclusion. The doctor told the girl that her grandfather had acute appendicitis and he needed to be sent to the hospital as soon as possible, otherwise he would die and he was in danger. The girl was in shock and asked the doctor if her grandfather really had acute appendicitis and how could it be that he had recently been healthy and walked with her on his own. And then Director Lin approached them and asked the doctor why he got the idea that his grandfather had acute appendicitis and how he was able to understand it so quickly. The doctor was furious and told Director Lin that he could not be mistaken and that these were clearly symptoms of acute appendicitis and grandfather needed to be treated. But Director Lin asked the girl not to be nervous and not to listen to everything the doctor said and said that her grandfather was not in danger and he would recover. Director Lin told the girl that the grandfather must have eaten something wrong in the morning and his stomach was swollen and this is not acute appendicitis and this is true. The doctor shouted at Director Lin and asked if he doubted the competence of the doctor at Huangshan Hospital and who he thought he was there. Director Lin told the doctor to go to the nearest pharmacy and buy lactobacillus and galactosidase for his grandfather, and his grandfather will recover quickly. The girl picked up the paper on which Director Lin wrote all the medicines and agreed with him and said that now she would come to them. And after a couple of minutes the girl ran back and told her friend Lin that she bought everything he asked for and hoped that salvation. The grandfather took the medicine and the granddaughter asked Director Lin what would happen to the grandfather next and whether he would recover after all the injuries to his stomach. The Director Lin began to feel his grandfather's stomach and thought that he himself knew that this should definitely help him and grandfather would get up soon. And at that moment the grandfather woke up and began to cough heavily, and he came to his senses and realized that someone had helped him and he could have died without help. The granddaughter was very shocked and asked her grandfather how he was feeling and if anything hurt him and what should he bring for him now. The grandfather told his granddaughter that he was much better now thanks to Director Lin who knew how to help him in difficult times there. Director Lin said that from the very beginning it was clear that this was not acute appendicitis, as some thought, and he immediately understood the reason. The doctor at Huangshan Hospital was at a loss and he asked his grandfather if he was really no longer sick and how could he make a mistake with the diagnosis there. The grandfather was angry and asked the hospital doctor if he really wanted him to get sick and what kind of doctor was he if he couldn't distinguish bloating. Grandfather told the doctor that he made the wrong diagnosis and his life was in danger and how Huangshan Hospital is recruiting doctors. Director Lin told his friends that he had to go and was late and asked the girl to monitor her grandfather's health and take care of the man. The girl asked Director Lin to wait and asked what his name was and she didn't even pay him for saving her grandfather's life. Director Lin told the girl that he didn't need money and he just wanted to help a person in a difficult situation and he was glad to meet them. The girl was surprised by Director Lin's words and realized that this is a man of honor and he loves to help all ordinary people always. Director Lin walked into Huashan Hospital and thought that he realized that he could quickly master the new profession of a doctor if he wanted. Director Lin wanted to go into the office and knocked on the door and realized that there were doctors there and they told him that he could enter the office. And suddenly, entering the office, 
Director Lin noticed that the same doctor was standing there who said that his grandfather had very acute appendicitis. The doctor's name was Zhou Zichiang and he was standing next to a girl named Xiao Exian and the doctor asked Director Lin if it was he who had come again. Director Lin told Zhou Zichiang that he was a doctor like him and he should not be surprised by this and they should do the same thing with him. Dr. Chen Ping asked Director Lin if they were new and she wanted to introduce them to all the nuances of their new work. The doctor told Miss Chen Ping that he is Dr. Zhou Zichiang and he treats in the field of cardiac surgery and they have already met with her and he is very happy. Dr. Chen Ping told Dr. Zhou Zichiang and other doctors that they are all from cardiac surgery and will save people and do feats. But Chen Ping said that first they will all be emergency room doctors, and after a month they will be able to return to cardiac surgery. Director Lin told Dr. Chen Ping that he had no objections and would agree to any job as long as he helped people and gained experience. Dr. Chen Ping was happy and told Director Lin that she was very pleased to hear such words from the new doctors at their Huangshan hospital. Zhou Zichiang was angry and thought that Lin was a pretender and he did not yet know that his uncle was the head of the Department of Cardiac Surgery. And at that moment a girl appeared behind them and Director Lin realized at one glance that she was a very beautiful and serious lady. The girl looked at them silently and Director Lin realized that it looked like she was in charge of the doctors and it looked like she had a very serious job. Dr. Chen Ping asked to let the newcomers introduce the head of the department, Li Chu Han, and she can solve any problem with people. Li Chu Han asked the trainees to follow her to the department and she would show them the interesting equipment they would encounter. Li Chu Han took all the newcomers to the cardiac surgery department and she wanted to show them everything and answer all the questions and help them all. Li Chu Han told the deputy that they had three newcomers and asked them to distribute them and find a use for each of them in the hospital. The doctor thought that now he would be able to communicate with his own nephew and they would discuss important matters and how his studies and life were going. The deputy told Miss Lee that he had many operations and was so tired and asked them to take over because she was full of energy and strength. Li Chu Han nodded to the doctor and said that she would take charge of the newcomers and thought that she originally wanted to help each of them. Li Chu Han told the newcomers that tonight two of them should stay on night duty together and asked who wants to do. Zhou Zichiang asked Li Chu Han if he could stay there with her and let the two of them go to the emergency room to be on duty with him. Zhou Zichiang thought that he should get closer to Li Chu Han and he should not remain on duty and he would take revenge on Lin for all his affairs. Li Chu Han told Zhou Zichiang that he could stay in the ward and she would take the two of them to the emergency room tonight. Zhou Zichiang was very surprised and asked Miss Li if she would really be with them and why she didn't want to stay in the hospital and help. Li Chu Han told Zhou Zichiang that they need at least a week to familiarize themselves with the work process and all her newcomers will gain experience. Dr. Li told Zhou Zichiang that when his turn comes and he remains on duty, his mentor will be Dr. Lu and she decided it. Zhou Zichiang was very surprised by Dr. Li's words and asked if he could join them and they could all work there together. Dr. Li frowned and asked Zhou Zichiang if he wanted too much because he had just arrived at the hospital and he was a newcomer. Dr. Li told Zhou Zichiang that then he would go to the ward with her first and then they would go to the emergency room with them. Director Lin put on his robe and thought that today he should understand the whole essence of the work and get acquainted with the staff and everything will be fine. Director Lin and the rest of the newcomers entered the office and thought that they were very interested in learning how everything works at Huangshan Hospital. The woman asked Dr. Li if the handsome guy behind her was her new doctor and she didn't think he was such a handsome doctor. Dr. Lee told the woman that these were their new trainees and she was there teaching them everything and preparing new doctors for the future. Zhou Zichiang said good afternoon to the woman and his name is Zhou Zichiang and he has recently been a doctor in the Department of Cardiac Surgery and he is glad to meet you. But the woman was not happy at all and told Zhou Zichiang that she was not talking about him and meant another doctor behind his back, his friend. The doctor told the woman that his name is Lin Yi and he is a trainee doctor in the cardiac surgery department and he is glad that he met her today. The woman told Director Lin that her heart suddenly hurt there and she asked the doctor to examine her now and tell her. Director Lin froze in surprise and thought that he didn't expect that the first day in a new profession would be so interesting and that's cool. Dr. Li told the future doctors that they would finish their rounds and immediately go to the emergency room and she would show them where they would be together. Dr. Li continued to lead all the newcomers with her and they wanted to quickly get to the place that Dr. Li told them about. 
And at that very second, Dr. Lee turned around and asked Director Lin not to come there for more rounds and she hoped that he would understand her. Director Lin was very surprised by Dr. Lee's words and asked why he shouldn't do the rounds and isn't that his direct responsibility? Dr. Lee told Director Lin that she was afraid that their hearts would give out and she would have to operate on all the ladies in their Huangshan hospital. Director Lin was very surprised by Dr. Lee's words and asked her for forgiveness and wondered if she was talking about what he was thinking about there. And at that moment a gurney appeared behind them and one guy was lying on it and the woman asked all the doctors to let them in and everyone to leave. The woman shouted at the doctors and said that they were doctors and everyone had an obligation to help her son, because now he really just needed help. Dr. Lee asked the woman to step aside and said that she and the young doctors would examine her son and try to help him. Director Lin noticed that the guy was wounded in the stomach and Doc Lee should examine him herself and then they will find out what happened to him. Director Lin was shocked and asked the woman how this happened and maybe her son had a fight with someone and had a deep wound on his stomach. The woman was furious and asked Director Lin why he got up and he should call the head doctor and let her perform an operation on him. Director Lin pointed his finger at her son and said that this was a stab wound and that it was nothing serious and they would stitch him up themselves. The woman angrily pushed Director Lin and asked how old he was and he had no experience at all to treat her son and he was not a doctor. Zhou Zichiang told the woman that he had a medical degree and graduated from Fudan University and had the skills to be a doctor. The woman asked Zhou Zichiang and what about it, she is the head of the ministry and if something happens to her son, Zhou will be punished. Zhou Zichiang was terrified and began to step back, and he immediately began to doubt and no longer wanted to have the operation and was so afraid for his life. Dr. Li was surprised and asked Zhou Zichiang if he really thought that he couldn't handle the operation and now he wanted to carry it out there himself. Zhou Zichiang told Dr. Li that perhaps he was no longer competent enough to stitch such a wound and did not have enough experience. Dr. Li asked Director Lin and his friend if they both could do the surgery and she thought they should have enough experience. Director Lin told Dr. Li that he could do it and he himself was very interested in performing the operation and stitching up the guy's wound. The woman screamed at Director Lin and said that she would not allow anyone to operate on her sweet son except their chief doctor. Director Lin told the woman that he agreed with her but he had to tell her that then her son would die and they would not help him with his injury. Dr. Li was surprised by the words of the new Director Lin and realized that he seemed to believe in himself too much and overestimated all his skills. The girl doctor was also shocked and thought that Director Lin was the bravest doctor of all and only he could operate on him. The woman furiously asked Director Lin how dare he tell her such things and what kind of doctor he is and she will sue him for all this. Dr. Li told the woman that she was the main person on duty today and she could stitch up the wound if she didn't mind or they should leave. The woman agreed with Dr. Li but said that if she doesn't sew up her son's wound now, she promises her that she won't leave it so easily. The doctors prepared the operating room and Dr. Li thought it would be a good experience for newcomers and they would see how they help people. Zhou Zichiang approached Dr. Li and said that he wanted to assist her there now and he hoped to become her favorite student of all. Dr. Li told Zhou Zichiang that if he was afraid to do such a simple stitch, then he would definitely not become her favorite and he was very weak. Dr. Li told Zhou Zichiang to step aside and not interfere with her with this operation, and the doctor froze in surprise and realized that he was very mistaken. Dr. Li told Director Lin that he would be the one assisting her and he should be ready to give her all the instruments at any second. Director Lin agreed with Dr. Li and they began the operation and so far everything was going well and they were not afraid for the life of the wounded man. Dr. Li said that the muscles and fatty tissue were sewn together and there was still skin there and asked Director Lin to try to sew it back together. Director Lin agreed with Dr. Li and began to stitch the entire wound and he did a great job and did everything without mistakes as a doctor. Dr. Li looked at how Director Lin stitched the wound and she was very surprised and said that this was a great job and he was very cool. And after a couple of minutes, Director Lin completely stitched up the wound and Dr. Li assessed everything and realized that everything was fine and the student was so good. Dr. Li thought that to also stitch up a wound like Director Lin, you need to have at least 10 years of experience and this was the work of an experienced. Zhou Zichiang was indignant and said that there was nothing good in this and he was not surprised at all and thought that Lin did his job poorly. 
Afterwards they left the operating room and a woman ran up to them and she asked the doctors how her son was feeling and how everything went. And then the woman noticed that the doctors had successfully stitched up her son's wound and she looked at him in surprise and wanted to say a few words to the doctors. The woman started screaming and asked the doctors what kind of stitches these were and that they would leave a huge scar on her son's body and how they could do this. Diar, Lee and Director Lin were very surprised by the woman's reaction and thought that she seemed to not understand anything at all and was a stupid lady. Diar, Lee told the woman that this was normal and asked how such a large wound could not leave scars and it was completely impossible. The woman asked Diar, Lee who she thought she was and just one call and they would both lose their jobs and they would leave in disgrace with Lin. But at that very second, Director Lin blocked Diar, Lee and he told the woman that they would see who would be fired in the end and that he was interested. The woman asked her sister to look after her son and said that she would call his father and he should deal with one problem. The woman told her sister that serious measures need to be taken and all these doctors will be punished for their impudence and she promises this to all doctors. Zhou Zichiang began to be afraid and asked Dr. Li and friend Lin what they should do and this woman could do anything and fire them from their jobs. Director Lin looked at his friend and asked if she really filmed all this there and he was interested to know if she did it. The girl doctor told Director Lin that the woman behaved very inappropriately and she wanted to write it down as an alibi and it would help them. Director Lin told the girl that this would help them a lot and asked her to send him this video and he wanted to look at the woman from the outside. Afterwards, Director Lin sent the video to Mayor Liang Ruxu and he told her that it looks like this woman is a director from the Ministry of Construction. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that this woman was creating huge problems for all of them and asked them to sort it out and help everyone. At this time, Zhou Zichiang called his uncle and said that Lin was now getting stitches and the family was unhappy and wanted to complain. The uncle told Zhou Zichiang that he knew about this and he and Chief Zhao were already on their way and he was happy and thought that Lin would soon be thrown out of there. At this time, Diar, Li with director Lin and his girlfriend were sitting in the office and drinking tea and then they noticed that someone had entered the room. People kept going towards the doctors and wanted to talk to them and discuss important issues right now and solve all the problems. Dr. Li said good afternoon to Director Zhao and she was very happy to see him there today and didn't know why he came to see them there. It was the vice chairman of Huangshan Hospital Zhao Jianwei and he arrived with Uncle Zhou Zichiang and they looked at Dr. Li. Uncle Zhou Zichiang was angry and asked Dr. Li what she had done there and how could they entrust this operation to a newcomer from their hospital. Dr. Li told Zhou Zichiang's uncle that she had not done anything illegal there and the patient's family was causing trouble for no reason. But Uncle Zhou Zichiang told Dr. Li that it doesn't matter and it's better to fire the newcomer for all this so that there are no problems in the future. Zhao Jianwei asked Director Lin to show him the patient's chart and said that he personally wanted to look into this situation. Uncle Zhou Zichiang told Director Zhao that everything is clear at first glance and Lin is new so he doesn't understand anything yet. And at that very second, a woman suddenly appeared in the corridor and she was sobbing and telling Dr. Li that she had made a mistake and was sorry. Uncle Zhou Zichiang and everyone else looked at the woman and they were very surprised and could not understand why she was running towards them. The woman grabbed Dr. Li's hand and asked him to give her another chance and said that if she was fired, she would be finished and she couldn't leave. Director Lin approached Dr. Lee and said that he wanted to see who would be fired in the end and he told the woman about this in advance. Dr. Lee turned around and thought about Director Lin's words and how he knew that this woman would be fired and it was impossible for him to guess. Director Lin sat to the side and silently watched as the woman begged Dr. Lee to forgive her so that she could be brought back to work again. Director Lin thought what he was saying and warned the woman about it, but she did not listen to him and now she must be punished. The woman cried and asked Dr. Lee to forgive her and even her husband was fired and her family has nothing to live on and she doesn't know what to do now. Director Zhao Jianwei said that he thought it was just some kind of misunderstanding and hoped that the woman would leave them alone. Zhao Jian told all the doctors that this incident should not be told to anyone and the patient was operated on correctly and this is a fact. And then Lin Wei appeared and told Director Lin that for saving the patient he would receive 100,000 master points and she was happy about it. Lin Wei told Director Lin that the profession degree is 10% completed and can so seems at a professional level. Director Lin was happy and thought that Lin Wei informed him in time that he was doing well in his profession and that was all great. 
Director Lin asked Lin Wei if this suturing technique is really that good and he wants to know detailed information about everything. Lin Wei told Director Lin that what he had mastered before was all the basic basics, and this is the best clinical skill of a doctor in the world. And then Dr. Li approached Director Lin and asked what he was doing and he realized that he was distracted by the system and forgot where he was. Director Lin asked Dr. Li if she needed him and thought that he was happy to help her in any situation and with her he was gaining experience. Dr. Li asked Director Lin to get ready and said that he would have a test and he should know all the important things about medicine. The girl doctor asked Dr. Lee if she really wanted to check Director Lin for stitching of nerves and blood vessels and it was very difficult. The girl doctor said that it usually takes at least five years of experience to deal with such stitches and she thinks that Lin won't be able to handle it. Dr. Lee asked the doctor's girlfriend to go to the equipment room and get an electron microscope and she agreed and ran from there. And after a couple of minutes the doctor came running and told Dr. Lee that in the control room they said that the electron microscope was broken and that was a problem. The girl doctor told Dr. Lee that if she wants to check Lin for stitching of nerves and blood vessels, it looks like it won't work today. Dr. Lee listened to the doctor and said that she understood her and then they would wait for the delivery of a new microscope and then she would check her knowledge. But Director Lin told everyone that he doesn't think they need this electron microscope and he won't use it for work. Director Lin asked Chao Xian to bring an ordinary microscope and this would suit him and he would do whatever Dr. Lee said now. Dr. Lee and Chao Xian were surprised and she asked Lin what he said and whether it was possible to sew together nerves and blood vessels using an ordinary microscope. Director Lin nodded his head and told Dr. Lee that it was almost the same and it was still just a test and no one would die from his operation. Zhou Zichiang asked the arrogant Director Lin if he is now too self-confident and thinks that he can do anything. Director Lin told Zhou Zichiang that it was normal that he did not understand anything and that he was still far from his level and had to grow for a long time. Dr. Li thought about it and realized that they could try this and it was a good idea and as Lin said, no one would get hurt from it. Dr. Li asked Chao Xian to bring an ordinary microscope and she was happy and said that she would quickly bring it there in a couple of seconds. And after a couple of minutes, Chao Xian brought a microscope into the room and Lin could start the test and all the doctors were ready to see the result there. Dr. Li told Director Lin that everything was ready and he could start the test, and he agreed and began to study the hospital's regular microscope. Director Lin began to make clear movements and he did everything very correctly and he performed the operation on blood vessels and tissues so quickly. And after a couple of minutes, Director Lin told everyone that he had already finished the test and began to take off his mask and thought that he had done well. Xiao Xian Zhou Zichiang and Dr. Li were very surprised and froze in place and she asked Lin if he had already finished the operation. Dr. Li took a look and realized that Lin had applied the stitches and the seam was indeed very neat and the threads were even, but he did it very quickly. Dr. Li was amazed and asked the newcomer Lin how he did it all and he did it correctly and carefully placed sutures on the vessels. Director Lin told Dr. Li that it was not that difficult and he asked her if he had passed the test and he hoped to succeed in the test. Dr. Li silently looked at Director Lin and thought that he himself had not yet realized that he had completed the test perfectly and that was so cool. Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that from now on he will be her right hand and she will take him with her to operations in the hospital. Xiao Xian was very happy and told newcomer Lin that he was so cool and passed the test without any problems and she congratulated her friend. Zhou Zichiang was very angry and thought that it was just stitches and what was there to be proud of, because he, too, could handle the whole thing perfectly. Afterwards, Director Lin and Dr. Li were sitting in the office and he looked at his watch and thought that he wanted to help her as much as possible with her operations. Director Lin thought that he was hungry and should have lunch there because Dr. Li could already assign him a task whenever he wanted. Director Lin asked his man to bring lunch there and he will have lunch in the office and will not be distracted from business and this is so important. Dr. Li asked newcomer Lin to listen to her and tomorrow she has a very important operation and she simulated the whole process many times. But Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that the risk of stitches after surgery was too great and she wanted his opinion on it. Director Lin asked Dr. Li if, with her skills and all her experience, she really needed his opinion on this operation. 
Diar, Lee said that the risks come from two aspects and so on the one hand the patient's condition and on the other because of his personality as a person. Director Lin was very surprised by Dr. Lee's words and asked her about what personality she meant and he was interested in this. Dr. Lee told newcomer Lin that he would soon find out about their patient and that he was an important person and they could not make mistakes in the operation. And at that very second someone started knocking on the room and he wanted to go in and ask Dr. Lee questions, and he immediately opened the door and went in. It was the deputy head of the material department of this Huangshan hospital and he wanted to talk to Dr. Lee, and he felt good. Dr. Lee was surprised and asked Mr. Duan Peng what happened and did they really need her help and some patient was feeling bad right now? Duan Peng told Dr. Lee that it was almost noon and she had not eaten yet, so he brought her something to eat and she should think about her health. But suddenly Dr. Lee told Duan Peng that there was no reason for this and Dr. Lin ordered food and they would eat with him and said thank you. Duan Peng looked at Dr. Lin with anger and wondered where this guy came from and why Dr. Lee believed so much in the young hospital doctor. But Duan Peng asked how food from delivery could be nutritious and he bought roasted duck ham and beef bone soup and it's healthy. But at that moment the door to the office opened and Director Lin realized that it looked like his man had come there and brought what he asked of him. Manager Wang Tianlong came into the room and told Director Lin that he had brought his order and he could be satisfied and he personally checked it. Manager Wang Tianlong said that there is the best abalone in also Australian lobster, Russian sturgeon caviar, beef steak and salads. Duan Peng looked at all the dishes that Director Lin ordered and he realized that his food could not cope with this one and he was speechless. Director Lin told manager Wang Tianlong that he just wanted him to bring some simple lunch and he misunderstood him then. Manager Wang Tianlong thought that this menu suited the status of Director Lin and he could not bring the usual dishes for his lunch. Dr. Li asked Duan Peng if he saw that they had enough food and she still thanked him for taking care of her there. Duan Peng told Dr. Li that he would not disturb them and he immediately began to leave the room and realized that there was no chance of love. Director Lin told Dr. Li that they still hadn't agreed and he asked her again who was having the operation and he wanted to know him. And then suddenly Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that the operation would be with the authorities and he was shocked and he himself did not expect such an answer. Director Lin asked Dr. Li if this was true and said that it was cool and they would stand with her to help the patient. Dr. Li said that tomorrow she will be an assistant and there will be two main doctors and she will only have to get stitches, she is a little nervous. Dr. Li asked newcomer Lin to look where the heart was and there was an aneurysm and there was a thick dissection and that was the problem. Director Lin told Dr. Li that this was a very difficult operation and one wrong move and his blood pressure would rise and he would die. Director Lin told Dr. Li that there is also information that the patient's weight is 180 kilograms and this is also a problem. Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that she understood him and asked if he would have any recommendations and she would listen to them with interest. Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that she wanted to know what he was thinking and he could help her make the right decision and help her a lot. Dr. Li said that due to the specific nature of the patient, it is impossible to find a foreign doctor for this, so she wants to give him this chance. Director Lin agreed with Dr. Li and said that he would make her a plan and she could use it if she thought it would help. Dr. Li didn't understand and asked newcomer Lin if he really wouldn't have lunch and he had to eat and gain strength for their plans. But Director Lin told Dr. Li that first he should quickly write a report and after that he could sit down and eat all the dishes. Six hours later, Director Lin was still sitting alone in his office and thinking about what could effectively help the patient with this problem. Director Lin continued to type a report on the computer about this entire operation and thought that he could do everything right. Director Lin finished writing the report and thought that he was very tired, but he could rest after the patient was saved from harm. And at that moment, Dr. Li came into the room and thought that newcomer Lin was still sitting in the office and typing out the plan and he was so kind. Dr. Li called newcomer Lin and asked him to turn his attention to her there and she wants to say a few words to him and this is all important. Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that he didn't have to go there for the night shift today and he should be done with his report and he was tired. But director Lin told Dr. Li that he had already finished the report and she came in on time and he was thinking about how to help this patient of theirs. Dr. Li froze in surprise and was in shock and asked Dr. Lin if he had already finished writing the report and it was all very quickly. 
But suddenly Dr. Li became angry and asked newcomer Lin not to lie to her and said that he could not finish writing the report of their operation. And then Dr. Li pressed herself close to director Lin and thought that she should see what the newcomer Lin came up with and how he was thinking there. Dr. Li was surprised and asked the newcomer Lin if he had filled out the report himself and said that it was very interesting and useful. Director Lin told Dr. Li that of course he filled out this report himself and said that there was no one else in the office except them who could write. Dr. Li checked Director Lin's report and said that this report was excellent and he could go home and rest and she would think about it. Director Lin stood up and thought that he had done a good job and now Dr. Li was right and he should rest after his work reports. Director Lin said thank you to Dr. Li for everything and thought that he would return tomorrow and help the doctors with the operation and advice. Director Lin walked out of Huangshan Hospital and thought that he never thought that the first day of work would be so good. And at that very second, Director Lin received a call from Chao Ching Chiu and he realized that he needed to answer and she could provide important information. Chao Ching Chiu said good evening to Director Lin and if it weren't for her habit of looking for information, she would not have found out about his connection with her brother. Director Lin told Chao Qing that he decided to step away from the factory for a while to do other work and is now a doctor at the hospital. Director Lin told Chao Qing that he is now working in Huangshan and if Miss Chao has a disease, he will always accept her without a cue. Director Lin asked Yuan to find a site where all the necessary information about corporations is collected and hack it with a hacker and do something. Director Lin asked Yuan to change the legal entity name of their Lingyun Corporation from his name to Qin Han's name and this is so important. Chao Xiangyu was sitting in his office at that time and he was busy and there he talked with a girl and did not expect any guests at his place at such a time. But suddenly at that very second the door opened and a guest came to him and it was Chao Qing Chiu and she wanted to tell him one piece of information. Chao Xiangyu was shocked and asked Chao Qingqiu what she was doing in his office and why she didn't warn him about her visit at night. Chao Qingqiu told Chao Xiangyu that she came to him for a reason and she wants to tell him an important thing and he should listen to her. Chao Qingqiu told Chao Xiangyu that he must immediately stop cooperating with Kichuang today and she will explain everything. But Chao Xianyu asked Chao Qing what kind of nonsense she was talking about and whether she knew how much effort he spent to cooperate with this company. Chao Qing told Chao Xiangyu that she knows that this is difficult to do, but in order to avoid unnecessary losses, it must be stopped before it is too late. But Chao Xianyu told Chao Qing that it would be a loss if he stopped him and would no longer do business with the Kichuang company. Chao Qing told Chao Xiangyu that she found out that the person he is collaborating with is called Lin Yi and he is definitely not an ordinary character in the world. Chao Xiangyu sat down in a chair and told Chao Qing that she was right and Director Lin was indeed not an ordinary person and she had learned a lot about him. Chao Xiangyu told Chao Qing that otherwise he would not have spent so much effort to get the plant and he wants more power for himself. Chao Qing asked Xiangyu if he knew about the real status of Lin Yi and he owns the Lingyun Corporation and he is clearly not so simple. Chao Xiangyu was perplexed and told Chao Qing that this cannot be and Director Lin is just greedy for money and he knows it. Chao Xiangyu asked Assistant Jia Meng to quickly find out as much information as possible about Lingyun Corporation and also about its head. Jia Meng immediately started looking for information about Lingyun Company on the internet and thought that she would find everything that Boss Chao asked her for. And then Chao Xiangyu looked at the computer and was very surprised and thought that this couldn't be and it looks like Jia Meng found everything she was looking for there. And at that very second, Cao Xianyu told Chao Qing that he was so disappointed in her and he did not expect that she could so brazenly deceive him with business. Chao Xiangyu immediately sharply turned the computer towards Chao Qing and she did not understand what Xiangyu meant and what he wanted from her. But looking at Chao Qing Chiu's computer, she noticed that this Lingyun Corporation was registered under the legal entity Qin Han and not Lin. Chao Qing was perplexed and asked how this was possible, and she was sure that this morning she saw the name Lin on this site. Chao Xiangyu closed the computer and thought that Chao Qing specifically wanted to deceive him and she has some kind of plan and he doesn't know about it. Chao Xianyu pointed his finger at his sister and asked the kind Chao Qing Chiu what her motives were and what she was hiding from him and what she wanted to do. Chao Qing thought that less than an hour had passed and how could he change the name of the director of the corporation so quickly and what kind of person is this guy Lin. Chao Qing started yelling at Chao Xianyu and said that she didn't need this business and if he forgot, 
she left to open her own business soon. Chao Qing told Chao Xiangyu that she was just trying to protect their Chao family and didn't want some scammer to deceive them in the matter. Chao Xiangyu asked Chao Qing why she was pretending and she just wanted to turn her father against her in order to improve the situation in the family. Chao Qing was angry and told her brother Chao Xiangyu that she no longer wanted to communicate with him because he still didn't understand anything about the matter. Chao Qing turned around and thought that she would no longer listen to her brother's stupid accusations and Xian Yu would soon find out that her sister was right. Chao Qing Chiu thought that sooner or later Lin would destroy her brother Chao Xiang Yu and he would not even understand that all this was a cunning trap. The next morning, Director Lin came to the hospital and immediately went into the cardiac surgery department and had to see what happened. Director Lin was walking along the corridor and all the doctors were in a hurry somewhere and they had a serious and very complex rare operation with a patient. Dr. Li noticed newcomer Lin and said that he had finally arrived there and she just wanted to talk to him now about everything. Diar, Li told newcomer Lin that she needed to go to the operating room and asked him not to go anywhere and to always be in touch there. At this time, all the doctors entered the meeting room and they all wanted to discuss important issues and settle all matters of interest. The chief physician told the doctors that they had discussed eight types of risks that could arise during surgery and that this was all very important. The chief physician told all the doctors that one of the biggest risks is stitching artificial vessels and it is so difficult. The head doctor of Huangshan Hospital, Miao Guofeng, asked all the doctors if this problem could not be solved and what they could do about him. But the head of the surgical department and Duan Peng's father, Duan Yongchun, told the chief doctor that it was not such a huge problem. Duan Yunchun told Miao Guofeng that he had minimized all risks and he was confident in his skills and they could all be calm and sit. The head doctor said Miao Guofeng said that then there are no more questions and asked everyone to tell the doctors to prepare for the operation. But Dr. Li stood up and asked the head doctor to wait and only she thought that there were problems with the suturing plan and this is a fact. All the people did not understand Dr. Li's words and thought that she was just there to show herself off in front of the chief doctor and this is a shame for the girl. Duan Yunchun asked her what problems she found in his plan and did Dr. Li doubt his experience and also his competence. Dr. Li said that this is a suturing plan made personally by their surgeon Lin and the plan can reduce the risk by 20%. Duan Yongchun was shocked and asked Dr. Li if she was joking there and Lin started work yesterday and his plan is not appreciated at all. Chief Physician Miao Guofeng studied the plan that Dr. Li gave him and he asked whether this plan was written by the intern of their hospital himself. Dr. Li turned on the projector and thought that now she would convince them all that they should consider the plan of the newcomer Lin and he is a genius. Dr. Li said that this report covered 14 sutures and included risks they didn't even think about. Dr. Li told all the doctors that she thinks that her newbie Lin is worthy to be her assistant in the operating room and this is her only request. But Dr. Duan Yongchun hit the table with his hand and told everyone that this was complete nonsense and why did they all listen to this nonsense and say nothing. Duan Yongchun said that just because rookie Lin got a couple of good stitches in the ER yesterday doesn't mean he's ready for surgery. Chief Dr. Miao asked people what they think about this whole situation and what they can suggest they do because he doesn't know yet. The man told Mr. Miao that he was the expert in this field and he himself should decide what to do with him and give orders to all doctors. The chief doctor began to think and realize that it was a difficult choice and all people were waiting for his answer and he had to give them the last word. And then the head doctor agreed to Dr. Li's request and said that let Lin be her assistant and the operation would begin in half an hour. After the meeting, all the doctors began to leave the room and they had to prepare the operating room and do everything to help the patient. When leaving the men, a woman met them and asked why they sat there for so long and what they said about the risks and was it really serious? And the guy said that there was a slight argument at the final stage, but he said that Dr. Lee assured that the risks would be minimized. The girl agreed with them and said that they would hope for the best and then everything would be fine and their operation would go without problems. At this time, Director Lin was sitting in the emergency center and he worked in the morning and helped all the people and they were satisfied with the doctor. But at that very second a man ran into the room and he screamed and called the doctor non-stop and wanted him to listen to his words right now. The woman asked Dr. Lin to examine her and said that she was about to die there from stomach pain and she needed emergency help from them. Director Lin was surprised and asked the woman what she was doing and he would examine her when he finished working with this patient and this is important. 
But the woman began to push the patient and said that he did not need their treatment and he did not look sick and he was only delaying the queue. Director Lin frowned and thought that this woman was very arrogant and she only thinks about herself and doesn't care about other people. The patient told Dr. Lin that he remembered the measures he told him about and asked him to better examine this woman instead of him. Director Lin agreed with the woman and asked her to give him her medical records and he would do an analysis of why her stomach hurt. The woman was surprised and wondered if Dr. Lin really needed this medical record and she didn't know about it and was confused by the request. The woman told Dr. Lin that there was such a queue and therefore she did not have time to register and asked to be examined without these. But Dr. Lin was very angry and thought that he didn't know that there were such arrogant people in the world and she didn't need anything and she was a fool. Director Lin pointed his finger at the woman and told the lady to get out of there and thought that she didn't seem to understand how she was behaving there. Afterwards, Director Lin looked into the reception room and called the next patient into his office and wanted to quickly help everyone. And then a beautiful woman came into the room, she was very embarrassed and did not say anything to the doctor and silently looked at Dr. Lin's office and things. Director Lin asked the girl to describe her symptoms and where she feels bad and what kind of pain bothers her and prevents her from sleeping. The girl asked Dr. Lin for forgiveness and said that she herself wanted to be seen by a female doctor and she would examine her problem. Director Lin asked the girl if she really needed a gynecologist and he thought that it was arrogant on his part, but this is his job. The girl was very embarrassed and told Director Lin that he was right and she needed a gynecologist, so she asked a woman to examine her. But Chiao Xian told the girl that in truth, in the doctor's eyes, she and everyone else are ordinary patients and it doesn't matter what gender she is. Chiao Xian told the girl that, in addition, Dr. Li's level of knowledge is much higher than hers and she is sure that Lin will help her with her problem. The girl told Xiao Xian that if this is so and said in a whisper that it hurts there and she wants help to help her quickly and she will be glad. Dr. Lin and Xiao Xian asked the girl what she said and they did not hear her words and asked her to repeat them if it was not difficult for her. The girl was very embarrassed and didn't want to tell them about her problem, but she thought that only they could help her solve everything there today. Dr. Xiao Xian told the girl that she saw increased sensitivity and she reacts there to minor actions. The girl agreed with Dr. Chiao Xian and thought that she was right in everything and she needed to overcome her complexes soon. Director Lin froze in surprise and thought that he did not expect that this girl was so beautiful and modest and she was driving him crazy. Director Lin pulled on the medical gown and thought that he should be decisive and help the patient and she should trust. Dr. Lin put on gloves and asked the girl to put her feet on a stand and he would quickly diagnose and help her there now. The girl thought that she should trust the doctor and hopes that he will help her and it doesn't matter to her that her doctor is a man and he's not a problem at all. The girl thought that she had never come to a male doctor for an examination before and she was nervous for nothing and Dr. Lin is a good doctor. The girl started screaming and said that Dr. Lin is a very good and kind person and she doesn't mind him conducting an examination today. Dr. Lin asked the girl to be a little more careful and thought that he could not imagine that this work could be so good. The girl lay unconscious and thought that she should not be afraid anymore because Dr. Lin should have already identified her problem. Xiao Xian approached Director Lin and asked him what to write in the order and what he found out after conducting the inspection and what was the main problem. Dr. Lin told Xiao Xian that the girl has a special constitution of her body and she can write about it in the report and he did not know this recently. Dr. Chiao Xian was shocked by Director Lin's words and thought that he seemed to like it and will continue to conduct examinations forever. Chiao Xian told Director Lin that he was so calm and maybe he had encountered something like this before and asked if he would like to cooperate. Director Lin told Chiao Xian that this was a great idea and they would be good partners and he would take her as a navigator if there was a race. Dr. Chiao Xian was embarrassed and told Director Lin that he could say one word like that and she would immediately begin to feel embarrassed about everything. And at that very second, Dr. Li Chu Han called Director Lin and he thought what she needed and he was interested in picking up the phone and finding out. Dr. Li asked Director Lin to go up to the operating room on the 13th floor and he would be her assistant and asked him to hurry up. Director Lin wondered if the meeting was successful and they allowed him to work and he could help Dr. Li with her operation. Director Lin told Xiao Xian that Dr. Li needed him and said that she would be in charge there while he helped their boss Li Chu Han. 
Director Lin entered the elevator and began to rise to the 13th floor and thought that he would be very happy to help the doctor in a good cause. Director Lin went up to the desired floor and began to exit the elevator and realized that the system had helped him by giving him the skill of a professional doctor. Director Lin went up to the operating room and noticed that Liang Ruxu was standing there and he did not expect to see her now and it was a shock. Liang Ruxu was surprised and asked Director Lin what he was doing in the hospital and what he needed, and she also didn't expect to see him now. Director Lin asked to be allowed to introduce himself and said that his name is Lin and he is a cardiac surgery doctor and is now an assistant to Dr. Li. Liang Ruxu was perplexed by Director Lin's words and thought that she did not know that besides the fact that he is Director Lin, he is also a doctor. The guy asked Liang Ruxu if they really knew the doctor and she said that she knew him and his name was Lin and she had crossed paths with him. The guy told Director Lin that he had heard about him and he was glad to meet him and he extended his hand to Lin and said that his name was Gao Chun. Gao Chong told Director Lin that Dr. Li had just convinced Head Miao there to fix the stitches according to his plan and they all agreed. Liang Ruxu was shocked and asked Gao Chong if they weren't told that the most difficult thing in the operation is suturing and this is Lin's plan. Gao Chong told Liang Ruxu that he sent the plan to another doctor and he responded very well and Dr. Lin's skills are really good. Liang Ruxu wondered if Director Lin even had a limit to his knowledge and it seems he knows everything in the world and will answer any questions. And then doctors started coming to them and they settled all the issues and were ready to carry out the operation and wanted to succeed and cure them. It was the chief physician of Miao, Dr. Li and Dr. Duan Yong Chun, and they all agreed that Director Lin's plan was very competent. Dr. Li approached Director Lin and said that it was time for them to go and begin the operation and he agreed with her and was ready for anything in the world. But at that moment, Liang Ruxu tightly grabbed Director Lin's hand and he thought that she seemed to be very nervous and the lady could be understood. Liang Ruxu continued to hold Director Lin's hand and did not want to let him go and silently stood next to him and was afraid for everything. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she was counting on him and she would pray for the operation to be successful and for him to be cured. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu not to be nervous and said that he would make every effort and help him and he promised his friend this. The doctors put on their scrubs and Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that although he came as an assistant, he was only allowed to observe. Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that this was a valuable experience and he could learn something if he went to surgery with her, which was great. Duan Yongchun asked Director Lin not to get in the way or faint when they start the operation, and it's not that easy. Director Lin looked at the Dr. Duan Yongchun and thought that he was a very harmful person and was doing everything to get on your nerves. Director Lin walked up to Dr. Li and asked if it was Duan Peng's father who they met yesterday and Li agreed. The doctors turned on the spotlights and realized that everything was ready and they could begin the operation and help the patient and he could be calm. The patient was in the operating room and the doctors realized that he had a very difficult diagnosis, but he had to believe that he would definitely get better soon. The head doctor of Miao told all the doctors that they are starting the operation now and they have prepared all the things and everyone should be vigilant. Director Lin observed the operation and chief physician Miao said that they would begin replacing the vessels and asked to start the cycler now. Miao's head doctor told Duan Yongchun that he was giving him the right to start the operation and evaluate the patient's condition and do analysis. But Duan Yongchun was shocked and said that this patient's blood vessels were compressed by other organs and it was very difficult for him to stitch them together. Chief Miao doctor asked Duan Yongchun what he was talking about and he told him that no one would be able to perform this operation and he was sorry. Duan Yongchun said that the vessels on the inside have fused with the axillary artery and if he starts to sew, bleeding will begin. Chief Dr. Miao was nervous and didn't know what to do and asked Duan Yongchun if there was really no way out and this patient was definitely doomed to death. Duan Yongchun told the chief doctor of Miao that he said correctly and no one in China is capable of sewing such vessels and this is all impossible. The doctors stood silently in front of the patient and the head doctor Miao began to think there what could be done and how they could help the poor man. And after a couple of seconds, the head doctor of Miao told all the doctors that they were completing the operation and they would not be able to help him if they wanted to. The head doctor of Miao told everyone there that Mr. Yang lived a decent life and they will never forget him and he will always remain a good-natured person. Duan Yongchun thought that he was right and the head doctor of Miao told all the doctors that this is all they can do and he cannot be cured. 
Chief Physician Miao told DR, Li that he would leave the final sutures to them and she agreed with him and began stitching. And a minute later the light in the operating room sign went out and this indicated that the doctors had completed the operation and soon the doctors would go out into the corridor. And then the doctors came to Liang Ruxu and she asked the doctors what happened there and how the operation went and how the patient's condition is now. The chief doctor of Miao said that the patient's condition was very serious and the vessels could not be sutured, so they stopped the operation and they tried. Gao Chong was furious and asked Chief Dr. Xiao what he said and was he really saying that they couldn't save him and the person would already die. Gao Chong started screaming and told the head doctor of Miao that they said that the risks were minimal and how could this happen in their operation. The chief doctor of Miao asked them for forgiveness and said that they all tried there and with the current level of medicine no one will be able to sew. Gao Chong told the head doctor Miao that he understood his words and pushed him and began to walk towards the operating room and wanted to find out something there. Liang Ruxu started running after him and asked brother Gao Chun not to do what he planned, he would regret it in the future and it was his mistake. Gao Chong wanted to open the door to the operating room, but director Lin was inside and asked no one to go in there and they were working with the doctors. Director Lin told the doctors that there was still an opportunity to save their patient and he could survive and they would do everything they could. Gao Chong listened to Director Lin's words and he froze in place and he thought that Dr. Lin was right and he believed that he could help there. Liang Ruxu asked brother Gao Chun and they can only wait there and trust Dr. Lin and she believes that he will help their patient. But Dr. Duan Yongchun told Director Lin that the patient could no longer be saved and asked him to let them go in there and evaluate it themselves. But at that very second Gao Chong hit the door of the operating room with his fist and he wanted to warn all the doctors and tell them not to make them angry. Gao Chong blocked the door with himself and told the doctors that they would stay there and would not enter anywhere and would not interfere with Dr. Lin while he was treating there. Duan Yunchun was angry and told Gao Chong that they were the chief surgeons in the hospital and he couldn't stop them and why was he doing this. Gao Chong told Duan Yunchun that he doesn't care who they all are and when Dr. Lin says they can come in, he will let everyone into this room. At this time, Director Lin told Dr. Li that he didn't know if his method would work yet, but he should try something. Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that if he thought there was a chance of salvation, she would assist him during the operation at all times. But Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that if something went wrong during the operation and he was fired, she would leave the hospital with him. Director Lin winked at Dr. Li and said that he did not think that she trusted him so much and that he would justify her revival and save the patient. Director Lin asked the system to activate the luck card and realized that only it could help him with the operation now and this was their chance. The system informed Director Lin that the luck card has been activated but there is a time limit and he now has 5 minutes to do everything. Director Lin asked the doctors to start artificial circulation there now and start dorsal circulation and help. The doctor told the doctor that what he asked for has already started and he is surprised that he thinks that this can help the patient and he will be saved. Dr. Lin told Dr. Li that the patient was overweight and needed double artificial treatment and this would help him. Dr. Li told Director Lin that she understood the reason why it was difficult for them and she would do everything and do it all very quickly. Director Lin continued to operate on the patient and noticed that he still had two and a half minutes and he had to do everything. Dr. Li was wiping the sweat from Director Lin's forehead and he was so focused right now and didn't want to be distracted by little things other than his operation. Dr. Li looked at Director Lin and realized that he was a good doctor and wanted to help a sick patient even if their chance was minimal. And at the moment when Director Lin ran out of time, he immediately completed the operation and said that everything was ready and the patient had already been saved. Director Lin thought that the most difficult part was done by the best lucky card and the easiest part remained and this is no longer a problem. And three hours later, Director Lin cut the thread of the seams, thought that this was the last task and he completed everything well and neatly. Director Lin exhaled and realized that the hardest part was over and he and Dr. Li had successfully completed the operation and could now rest. Dr. Li looked at the newcomer Lin and said that he was incredible and she did not expect that he would be able to perform an impossible operation there. The operating room sign lit up and this meant that Director Lin had finished the operation and soon he would go out into the corridor to Liang Ruxu. And after a couple of minutes, Director Lin went out into the corridor and began to walk towards Liang Ruxu and thought that she would be happy about his news. 
Liang Ruxu was very nervous and asked Director Lin what happened there and how the operation went and how the native patient is now. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu not to worry and the whole operation was successful and he would live with them for several more decades. Gao Chun and Liang Ruxu were very happy and thought that it was good that they trusted Director Lin and he saved the life of their loved one. And then Dr. Li came out of the operating room and she was also very glad that they managed to save the patient's life and Lin the doctor is from God. Liang Ruxu ran to her and told Dr. Li thank you for doing everything in her power and saving the life of her loved one and this is a miracle. Dr. Li told Liang Ruxu that she should thank Dr. Lin for everything and he was the chief surgeon of this operation and she was the assistant. Liang Ruxu and everyone else were shocked and thought that they did not expect that Dr. Lin would be able to cure the patient in this time. Duan Yunchun said that this cannot be and what is happening and he saw that the walls of the blood vessels were thin and could not be stitched. Dr. Li exhaled and thought that all people were stupid and they thought that he could not perform the operation on them, they were all very mistaken. Dr. Li pointed her finger at Director Lin and said that if it weren't for the newcomer, the patient would have died and even she couldn't help him there. Duan Yongchun froze in surprise and thought who Director Lin is and how does he have the experienced skills of a doctor and perform the operation. Liang Ruxu realized that they had to leave there and began to dismiss the patient with her and he needed rest after severe stress today. Director Lin entered the doctor's office and the system informed him that he received master's glasses for performing a very complex operation. Director Lin completed the task 25% and he received the Emperor's Internal Pharmacopoeia Award from the system. And then Director Lin began to gain a lot of knowledge and he could not bear such a load and thought that the system did not ask him there. Director Lin thought that his head hurt and he didn't expect that his system would give him a lot of books and why does he need the Emperor's fat book. And at that very second Lin Wei appeared there and massaged Lin's owner and said that this ancient book contains a lot of knowledge and it is needed. Director Lin received a task from the system and he must cure 100 patients and then he will receive a reward and the owner will be pleased. Director Lin agreed with the system and thought that there were not many patients and it would quickly cure everyone and help all people. Director Lin thought that with so many patients in his Huangshan hospital, he could complete the task in just three days. Director Lin was lying on the table and thought that he was very tired from this whole operation and thought that he should at least rest there for a while. Five hours later in Huangshan Hospital, Director Lin fell asleep in this office and he slowly began to wake up and realized that he had fallen asleep there. The Director Lin began to come to his senses and noticed that there was someone in the room besides him and he had to find out who came in while he fell asleep. Director Lin noticed that Liang Ruxu was sitting next to him and she asked him if he woke up and how he felt after his business. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that apparently he was very tired and he slept for five hours and fell asleep in the office and did not wake up the whole time. Director Lin waved his hand and told Liang Ruxu that he had not been this exhausted since he was a child and he was tired after this operation. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin if he could at least pretend to be polite and cover his mouth when he yawns and this is very ugly. Director Lin smiled and told Liang Ruxu that everyone was there and he opened her gift and asked if she had brought a dish for him. Director Lin noticed that Liang Ruxu brought him dishes and Lin asked her why she needed him and what she wanted to ask him there. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she came to him just like that and she wanted to thank him for the operation and he is so cool. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that if she wanted to help him, she could sign the document for him and he would print it now. Director Lin stood up and quickly printed out the document and thought that Liang Ruxu could help him a lot and she came now on time. Director Lin brought Liang Ruxu a document and said that she should just sign it and then she would be very helpful with the matter. Liang Ruxu looked at the document and thought that she did not expect that it would be such a contract and she wants to ask him a question and it is important. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin if this is the result of all his research and if she signs she can manage the case. Director Lin began to look around and Liang Ruxu was surprised and wondered why he was acting so strangely and what he was up to there. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that when she gave the project for the Chaoyang suburb back then, he said that he would not deprive her of anything for this, and that's true. Liang Ruxu put her signature on the contract and thought that Director Lin helped her a lot today and she should repay him. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that if he has any questions, he can call her and Chao Yang will not take care of the project and it's all true. Afterwards, 
Director Lin went outside and he froze in place and could not understand why she was standing there and what she needed from him. Dr. Lee stood near the car and asked Director Lin how his appetite was and whether he had dinner today and whether he wanted to join her. Dr. Lee smiled and told Director Lin that she was giving him a treat and they could have fun after their hard day at work. Director Lin told Dr. Lee that he would be very happy and she was right and they should have dinner and they are also people and should eat like everyone else. And at that very second, Duan Peng appeared in the parking lot and he started calling Dr. Lee and asked her to wait for him and he wanted to talk to her. Duan Peng told Dr. Lee that he had finally caught up with her and he recently joined the racing club and there will be a race in the evening and she can go. Dr. Lee told Duan Peng that she was very sorry, but she had dinner with Dr. Lin today and she promised him that she would go with him now. Duan Peng was furious and wondered what this scoundrel was allowing himself to do and why Dr. Li wanted to go with him and why he attracted such a lady. Duan Peng thought that he should make Dr. Lin disappear and he interferes with his plans and Dr. Li always goes only with him. But Duan Peng told Dr. Li that today's race is a duel between the four Zhonghai masters and this is rare. Director Lin heard Duan Peng's words and asked if the four Zhonghai masters would already be there and asked who they were and if he knew everyone. Duan Peng told Director Lin that it is obvious that a simple person like Lin does not know these people and they are the offspring of rich people. Duan Peng told Director Lin that all the great Qin Han and Zhao Zheng Yang and also Fan Qi Nan and Qing Yu will be there today at the race. Director Lin told Dr. Li that if she wants, they can both watch this race and have dinner at any other time and that's a fact. Duan Peng froze in place and thought that Director Lin did not listen to his words at all and he ignored him and what was he allowing himself to do there. Dr. Li asked Director Lin if he wanted to do it himself and he could decide for himself and they could go somewhere else another time and have dinner. Director Lin told Dr. Li that he wanted to go to the races and was very interested in seeing what was happening there and what would happen there. Duan Peng told Director Lin that he could go with them and even though he would see normal people relaxing, he had not seen this. And a couple of minutes later they arrived at the international circuit and they wanted to see how the races would go today and see all the racers. Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that there were empty seats and they could quickly take those seats before no one came and this was their chance. Director Lin told Dr. Li that it was a little far away and hard to see and he wanted to offer her another option and that might suit her. Director Lin told Dr. Li that they could go to the repair area and it would be more interesting to watch up close and see all the racers. Director Lin brought Dr. Li to a place where elite cars were parked and it was a VIP place and ordinary spectators could not go there. Dr. Li was surprised and asked Director Lin if they could go there because she thinks that they are already forbidden to enter this room. Director Lin told Dr. Li that of course they can go there and why does she think they can't go there and who is stopping them. And then Dr. Li called Duan Peng and asked where she was and he had already arrived and he was waiting for her at the entrance and wanted to meet her now. Dr. Li told Duan Peng that she and Director Lin had already entered the repair area and were walking in this area and studying all this there. Director Lin listened to their conversation and Duan Peng asked Dr. Li how they entered there and did no one stop them in the VIP area? Duan Peng told Dr. Li that they would be kicked out of there and asked her to wait for him there and he and Sun would come there and solve it all. Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that Duan Peng said that they should not be there and asked to return to the stands and she did not want any trouble. But Director Lin began to pour wine into a glass and asked Dr. Li not to listen to Duan Peng and believe him and they would not have anything to do with it. Director Lin served Dr. Li wine and said that if he told her it was possible, then it was possible and no one could stop them today. And at that moment Duan Peng came into the room and told Dr. Li that he had been looking for her for a long time and he was terrified and wanted to talk to her quickly. Duan Peng told Dr. Li that they should quickly leave there and they should not be there and they could be punished for this and fined. Dr. Li told Duan Peng that newcomer Lin allowed her and he told her that nothing would happen to her and she wanted to look around there together. Duan Peng was furious and asked who she was listening to and only those people who have more than a billion in their account are allowed into such places. Duan Peng told them that when the four masters arrived there, they would all be kicked out at once and he would not be able to do anything with these people. Director Lin told Duan Peng that this should not bother him and he himself will solve everything if problems arise and he promises this to everyone. And at that moment the race began and all the riders wanted to show all their skills and impress the audience who came to support them. 
Zhao Zhengyang asked if Director Lin was this man and did he really bring another girl there and it looks like he has completely lost his conscience. Director Lin went out to the race track and noticed that all the elite racers' cars were there and they were all ready for their race. Director Lin thought, isn't this his car and he was very interested in who was sitting inside the beautiful car and who it was from his acquaintances. And then Qin Han got out of the car and told Director Lin that he was there too and he was glad to see his friend there and he missed him so much. Director Lin told Qin Han that his girlfriend was interested in racing and he brought her there and wanted to show her the best in the business. Duan Peng looked at Director Lin and was shocked and thought what kind of person is this Lin and how does he know Qin Han and when did he meet? Zhao Zhengyang said that Qin is participating in the race today and since he and Lin are friends, they will do a couple of laps and the loser will leave. Director Lin asked Zhao Zheng what the rules of the kindergarten are and they will change the rules and whoever loses will burn their car. Zhao Zhengyang was very surprised by Director Lin's words and thought that he was crazy and he wanted to burn the car and he had a lot of money. Qin Han was also shocked by the words of Director Lin's friend and he realized that he was so confident in his victory and was not afraid of anything. Dr. Li and Duan Peng were also perplexed and thought that he did not understand what he was doing at all and Lin might lose the car. Zhao Xing told Lin that he was interested in his bet, but he would feel sorry for his car and whoever wins should take the enemy's car. Zhao Xing Yang thought that Director Lin's car was a limited edition and it would be his after the race and he was sure that he would win everyone. Zhao Xing told Director Lin that the rules are the same and four people will participate in their race and that is enough and it is only their business. Qin Han agreed with Zhao Xing and said that then he, his friend Lin Liang and Gao would participate in the race and it would be a good race. Zhao Xing asked the guys to come out and said that the game is starting and they will start the race soon and the weaklings can change their minds before their race. And then three guys approached Zhao Zheng and they were ready for whatever boss Zhao told them and he thought that no one would overtake them in the race. Qin Han looked at these people and thought why these three people seemed familiar to him and he definitely saw them but does not remember where he saw them. And then Qin Han said that he understood and these are the champions and prize winners of all racing competitions and he saw them when the races were broadcast. Qin Han said that this guy is Huang Wangqi and he is a world champion in racing and all these people are professionals and Zhao Zheng knew all this. Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that they are the best racers in the country and especially Gu Li and Huang Wangqi and these people are professionals in their field. Director Lin asked Dr. Li if she really knew all these racers so well and had she really watched racing tournaments before? Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that to beat these racers you need to know and feel the racetrack well and not get lost. Qin Han was very angry and told Zhao Zheng that this was vile and he himself knew that he could not win them and therefore called his riders there. Zhao Zheng told Qin Han that if he is afraid, then he can tell him everything and he should give the car back and not waste time there. And then Zhao Zheng noticed that Director Lin was standing behind him and he listened carefully to all his words and silently stood aside with his friend. Zhao Zheng turned to Principal Lin and told him not to stand there and go to the Qin Han stands and he could discuss their affairs with his friend there. But Director Lin started laughing and asked Zhao Zheng if his brain had completely melted and he didn't understand what he told him. Director Lin told Zhao Zheng that the racetrack is completely his and he still dares to tell him where to stand on his racetrack and this is impudence. Zhao Zheng Yang was shocked and asked Director Lin if this was his racetrack and thought that he had never known about it before that day. Duan Peng was thinking all this time and thought what kind of person is Director Lin and where does he come from so much influence and money and he is rich. Qin Han hugged Director Lin and asked his friend to ignore him and they would better develop tactics with him and beat this guy. Director Lin approached Liang's friend and asked him for forgiveness and he said that he would have to give in and he would explain why he decided this. And at that very second suddenly Director Lin told his friend Liang that he would have to give way to his friend Dr. Li and she would drive the car. Dr. Li couldn't believe her ears and asked Director Lin if he really wanted her to take the place of the racer and he agreed. Director Lin told Dr. Li that she was good at it and she only needed to drive two laps and her car was cool. Dr. Li asked Director Lin if he really trusted her that much and she didn't know that he valued her and this was all news to her. Director Lin approached Dr. Li and looked at her intently without taking his eyes off her and she thought that he was definitely up to something there. Director Lin told Dr. 
simply that he believes in her and she is better than all these racers but she must believe in herself and not doubt there. Chin Han asked director Lin to stop flirting and they should discuss the race and he doesn't care if they lose the car. Director Lin smiled at Dr. Lee's face and Chin Han told him that he could not afford to lose his reputation and authority there. Director Lin told Chin Han that there was nothing to discuss and Chin Han would go first, Gao Chong would go second, and Dr. Lee would go third, and he would go last. Ten minutes later, all the racers were ready to start the race and they all stood near the start line and waited for the girl to announce the start. Zhao Zhengyang looked at Qin Han and thought that he and his best friend director Lin were idiots and they would all lose their car due to stupidity. Qin Han looked at Zhao Zheng and thought that he might think that he could bypass them, but he still wouldn't succeed and would lose. The girl counted to three and said that the racers could start their race and all the people watched with interest who would arrive first at the finish line. And at that same second, all the racers pressed the gas pedal with all their might and they wanted to defeat their opponent and humiliate each other to teach them a lesson. The riders quickly continued to drive and Qin Han hoped that he himself would be able to break away at the turn and take Xiao Zheng Yang by surprise. At this time, Dr. Li was sitting on the car in the waiting area and thought that she should try not to let her newcomer friend Lin down. The guy told DR, Li that judging by the sound of the car, it was modified and asked to give him WeChat and he would teach her how to drive an elite car. Dr. Li told the guy that she is the head of surgery at Huangshan Hospital and she can make hundreds of cuts and she can show. The guy heard these words of DR, Li silently sat down and realized that he was very mistaken and he was terrified and afraid that the doctor was dangerous. And at that very second the traffic light turned green and the racers could start the race and they were ready for this and pressed full throttle. Dr. Li and the racer Huang Wangqi went and no one wanted to stay at the start and therefore no one gave up their place to their opponent and that's so cool. All the people said that this girl is great and she holds on there no worse than the racer Huang Wangqi and is in no way inferior to him in their important race. Qin Han told director Lin that his new girl is better than Gao and she definitely trained a lot and can compete. Zhao Zhengyang told director Lin and Qin Han Huang Wangqi's desk not to even strain yet and when he becomes serious he will finish the race. Director Lin and Qin Han were not happy with Zhao Zheng's words and he said that his driver Huang Wangqi is 10 seconds ahead of the lady. Director Lin told Zhao Zheng that he remembered that he only had 11 cars and they could compete with him for seconds of the race. Director Lin told Zhao Zheng that one second is one car and he asked if he really thinks that there will be a gap of 11 seconds. Director Lin got into the car and thought that Zhao Zheng thought he was joking and then the traffic light turned green and they could drive. And at that very second the racers set off and Zhao Zheng wanted to quickly and easily defeat Director Lin in the race and take revenge on him there. Director Lin was very calm and thought that his opponent Zhao Zheng Yang had overestimated his skills and he would lose and he would be furious. And then Director Lin pressed a secret button on his car to make it go faster and he was preparing it specifically for the race with the enemy. And at that moment, Director Lin's car began to drive fast and he thought that he would clearly surprise his opponent and he did not expect such a surprise. Director Lin's car started to go very fast and all the people were shocked and thought that Lin was an excellent and experienced racer. After the race, Huang Wangqi told Zhao Zheng that he was even ashamed to admit it there and there was only a gap of 3 seconds and this woman is talented. Zhao Zheng asked the racer Huang Wangqi not to be nervous and with all the skills of Guli it is not difficult to get ahead for a couple more seconds. Zhao Zhengyang told driver Huang Wangqi that not a single one of the 12 cars they drove today was left behind them. And at that moment, director Lin overtook his opponent at the turn and all the people were amazed that director Lin was so fast. Qin Han said that his friend Lin is cool and he overcame the difference of 8 seconds in just one lap and how could he do it quickly. Dr. Li said that the newcomer Lin has superhuman speed and after the second lap he is already in the lead by 9 seconds and he is simply a miracle. All the people continued to watch as the racers continued to try their best to overtake their opponents closer to the finish line. Zhao Zhengyang thought that this could not be and director Lin himself could bypass his best riders and be the first to reach the finish line. Director Lin continued to pull ahead and thought that he was correctly following the plan and doing everything correctly and overtook the rider. Director Lin almost reached the finish line and all the people were cheering for him and wanted him to win the race today, and he earned it with hard work. 
Qin Han asked Director Lin not to slow down and he should quickly move towards the finish line and he could defeat all the vile opponents. Zhao Zheng told Qin Han that he might not even dream about it and Director Lin's car would break down at the end and he wouldn't see the finish line. Zhao Zheng told Qin Han that not a single car could withstand this style of driving and the cylinder of the car would simply explode from all the load. But at that very second, Director Lin crossed the finish line and became the winner of the race and was ahead of his opponent, and he fell far behind. Zhao Zheng Yang was horrified because he didn't expect that Director Lin would be able to win and now he doesn't know what to do with the debt. Qin Han was also shocked and thought that he knew before that Lin was fast, but he didn't expect that he could overtake everyone so much. Qin Han was very happy and told Zhao Zheng that Director Lin had succeeded and he arrived first and their gap was 11 seconds. The manager thought what a shame this was and Zhao Zheng was completely at the bottom and could not answer for his words and was not ashamed to look at. And at that moment, all the people started screaming and demanding that Zhao Zheng give the car to Director Lin and he lost the bet with him. The assistant approached Zhao Zheng and asked him if he was okay and asked what they should do now and how to solve this problem with the dispute. Zhao Zheng Yang asked his friend what they could do and told him to give Director Lin the car keys and he honestly won the race. The assistant walked up to Director Lin and gave him the car keys, Zhao Zheng thought that he was an experienced racer and he was a legend. Director Lin told Zhao Zheng that after this, the title of fourth master of Zhonghai would never have anything to do with him. Zhao Zheng Yang was furious and told his friend that they should leave with him and thought that he was in vain arguing with Director Lin and it was a mistake. Director Lin told Zhao Zheng that today he made them happy and he organized interesting races and they had a good ride with them. Zhao Zheng didn't want to listen to Director Lin anymore and he told him that they could give him a nice farewell party at the end. Zhao Zheng shouted at Director Lin and said that they would look at who they had to say goodbye to and they would understand that everyone had made a mistake. Duan Peng froze in place and thought what kind of person is Director Lin and why does he work in the hospital and is it really because of Dr. Li? And then Lin called Liang Ruxu and asked him not to go to work tomorrow and she would pick him up at 10 o'clock and he should be ready on time. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that there was a batch of imported drugs ready for import to Zhonghai and he should help inspect. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that it was not a good idea to ask a person like him to do this, and he just did an excellent operation. But Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that he is the only one she trusts and she can share all the valuable information with him. At this time, a woman settled in the Jiangnanshan Hotel and she was discussing business there and thinking about what she could do for her benefit. The girl's name was Zhao Wen and she was the director of the marketing department of a pharmaceutical company and she said that they had already discussed everything. Zhao Wen's assistant Meng Haiqing told her that they had discussed it all with 13 experts and the price per box would be almost 300. Meng Haiqing told Zhao Wen that the cost of dealing with people had already cost 100 million yuan and Mr. Hayes was very dissatisfied now. Zhao Wen asked Meng Haiqing to tell this bald head not to be nervous and she would end up earning 10 times the amount. Meng Haiqing told Zhao Wen that he understood her words and asked her if he should notify the Fan family about this so that they would know everything. Zhao Wen began to rub the cream on her body and thought that she would tell assistant Meng Haiqing that there was no need to do this for now. Zhao Wen told Meng Haiqing that she herself would call them and tell them like it is and she hoped that they would understand that this is good business. The guy at that time arrived at the Yenshan courtyard and thought that he should now meet with his father and he had some business for his son. The guy asked his father why there was such a rush and why he needed him now and said that he was listening to explanations from his beloved father. Fan Donghui was the head of Dongsheng Pharmaceuticals and he told his son that he was stupid and the price of medicines had already been set and they had nothing to change. And the son told his father that ibulapin is a common medicine and one box of 60 milligrams is only enough for a week and this is all a fact. The son told his father that this was four boxes a month and asked which of the people could afford this and the father listened carefully to his son's words. But suddenly Fan Donghui grabbed his son by the ear and began to pull him with all his might and said that he was an idiot and did not understand anything about their business. Fan Donghui told his son that the higher the price, the more money they will receive and he must learn this lesson for the rest of his life. Fan Donghui told his son that he should study well the new head of the marketing department there and she is a difficult girl and she has whims. 
The son told Fan Donghui's father that he understood his words and he ran from there to quickly resolve all matters and settle all the nuances of their case. The next morning, Director Lin went out into the courtyard of his house in Jaya's Hauge and waited for Mayor Liang Ruxu to come to him for her business. And at that very second, a car drove up to Director Lin's house and Mayor Liang Ruxu did not make her friend wait for her on the street for a long time and get bored there. Mayor Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin to get into the car and said that she would explain all the information to him on the way and he would understand everything. Liang Ruxu opened the box and there were delicious dishes and she brought them there especially for Director Lin so that he could eat breakfast. Director Lin was happy and thanked Liang Ruxu for bringing breakfast with her and she brought them to him just in time. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she needed his strength and therefore he should eat and if he negotiated a good price she would be happy. Director Lin began to eat a delicious dish and asked Liang Ruxu what price would suit her and he was interested in knowing her calculations for their case. Liang Ruxu said that she would be satisfied with 60 mg of medicine and 138 per box and that would be enough. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he will try to do everything as she wants and assures that in the end she will be happy with the deal. And a couple of minutes later, Director Lin and Liang Ruxu arrived at the place where they agreed to meet and discuss the details of their deal with her. They entered the room and people told Miss Liang Ruxu that she was already there and they were very glad that she arrived on time and did not keep her waiting. Director Lin looked at the man in this room and recognized him, and immediately thought that he never expected to see an acquaintance there today. Fan Chi Nan was also shocked and wondered if it was Director Lin himself and why did he come to the meeting today because he is not participating. Mayor Liang Ruxu said good afternoon to everyone and if all the people are there they can start a conversation and not waste time waiting for something. Negotiation group expert Wang Yenching was surprised and wondered who this guy was and why he came there now with Mayor Liang. Wang Yenching told Miss Zhao Wen that if she is ready then they will start everything and hope that she can offer them an adequate price. Zhao Wen told Mayor Liang Ruxu that their company conducted a study on drug pricing again and she understood everything. Suddenly, Zhao Wen told Mayor Liang Ruxu that the price was 459 yuan per box, and the mayor and friend Lin were surprised. Liang Ruxu wanted to react violently to Zhao Wen's words, but Lin immediately squeezed her hand and thought that they were all doing this on purpose. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu to behave calmly and they all say this and expect her to react to everything people say. Liang Ruxu realized that Director Lin was right and she began to behave calmly and realized that her friend would help her there with this deal of theirs. Wang Yenching told Miss Zhao Wen that she should be familiar with the Chinese market situation and ibupalin is a very popular drug. Zhao Wen told Wang Yenching that this is already the lowest price and she knows that the quality of the medicine is the best, but she will say that the price will be reduced. Zhao Wen called people from the company and left the office and she wanted to quickly solve this problem and arrange all her people in the hall. And after a couple of minutes, Zhao Wen came into the office and she told all the people that she had just spoken with the experts and she had news. Zhao Wen said that they can reduce this price to 398 per box and this is the lowest price they will offer. Wang Yenching was angry and told Zhao Wen that if the price was not lower than 300, then they had nothing to discuss and would not close the deal now. Wang Yenching looked at Liang Ruxu and he said that he thought that they should all end the negotiations for today and they would all fail. Director Lin glanced at Wang Yenching and thought that this person was holding up well there and they should not be fooled by businessmen. Zhao Wen asked everyone if they really put money even above health and they should only be concerned about the treatment of all their clients. And at that very second, Liang Ruxu hit the table and thought that they all think that they can do business with her so brazenly and that's their problem. Liang Ruxu told everyone that if they are against then they can complete all negotiations and she doesn't want to listen to anything now. Zhao Wen told Liang Ruxu that she contacted people from this company and thought that she should convince the mayor that she was not joking. And at that moment, Zhao Wen told Liang Ruxu that 299 yuan per box is their last price and that's the maximum. Fan thought that Liang Ruxu was in her element and she didn't want to listen to their proposals and it seemed like she realized that there was some kind of catch there. Liang Ruxu said that she wanted less than 300 and they knocked off 1 yuan and Miss Zhao Wen knows exactly how to negotiate with people. Wang Yenching asked Miss Liang Ruxu why don't they discuss everything about it and she told him that he was right and they would talk about their matter. 
Liang Ruxu got up from her seat and started to leave the room and thought that Zhao Wan should change the price and this price is not suitable for her. Meng Haiqing told Miss Zhao Wan that she added 10 yuan and how does she think she wins and is it a good income for her. Zhao Wan told Meng Haiqing that these 10 yuan can be thrown off to remain friends with Liang Ruxu and in China they need to be friends. Meng Haiqing told Miss Zhao Wan that she is incredible and she knows how to run a business and he hopes that she will succeed. And at that very second the manager came out into the corridor and told Zhao Wan that they could continue negotiations and they were all waiting for her there for their business. Zhao Wan walked back into the office and thought that she was waiting for a response from the mayor of Liang Ruxu and she hoped that she would approve the deal with them. Wang Yenqing told Miss Zhao Wan that Mayor Liang Ruxu there is not very happy with her price and she still wants her to lower her price. Zhao Wan told Ruxu that they came with absolute honesty and asked the mayor if she could tell her a price that would suit them. And then Wang Yenqing told Zhao Wan that the price Mayor Liang Ruxu wanted was 279 yuan per box and that would suit her. Zhao Wan told Wang Yenqing that they could not accept such a price, but out of respect for her, they could refuse 10 yuan of profit. Mayor Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin what he thought about this and she was very interested to know his opinion about the price for this box. But at this moment, Mayor Liang Ruxu was surprised because she noticed that Director Lin had fallen asleep on the spot and she didn't think about it at all. Mayor Liang Ruxu pushed Director Lin and he woke up and asked his friend if they had finished their negotiations and he was so interested. Director Lin asked everyone for forgiveness and said that he was a little tired there because of yesterday's operation and did not fall asleep on purpose. Zhao Wan and all the other people froze in surprise and did not understand Director Lin's words and is he really still working as a doctor in the hospital? Mayor Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that they have finished all the negotiations now and the price is 289 yuan per box. Director Lin was shocked by Mayor Liang's words and asked if she had agreed to this price and said that it was a mistake and he would explain everything. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she wanted to lower the price, but they said that this was the lowest price they could offer. Director Lin immediately stood up quickly and thought that he should tell all the people what he thinks about them and this is so unacceptable. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu because she wanted the price to be a little more than a hundred, but now the price is huge and they are only interested in money. Zhao Wen told Mr. Lin that she hopes that he can understand them, and now the cost of raw materials and other things is already very high. Director Lin stood up and thought that now he will explain to everyone that they cannot deceive them and he will thoroughly explain to them all these details. Director Lin told everyone that the main ingredients of the drug ibupalin are isopropylamino and methoxyethyl and also phenoxy. Director Lin told everyone that this price cannot exceed 6 yuan and as for delivery, they do not deliver them all by rockets. Fan Qi and Zhao Wan were shocked by Director Lin's words and they did not understand how he knew all this and he revealed all the secrets of medicines. Director Lin told them that they work in this field and know all the prices better than him and therefore their price is almost 10 yuan and this is the condition. Zhao Zheng said that this price is simply nonsense and she hopes that she and Mayor Liang Ruxu will come to an adequate solution without this type. Director Lin asked Zhao Wan if they really took them for some idiots and staged performances and they would only accept such a price there. The man coughed and told Mayor Liang Ruxu that of course he had no right to say this, because he was just a sales agent there. But the man told Mayor Liang Ruxu that her advisor didn't think anything of it and he had no place there, so he should leave and not interfere. Liang Ruxu realized that Director Lin really helped her uncover all the plans of the scammers and that's why they are looking for excuses and it's all so disgusting. Liang Ruxu said that Lin is the best heart surgeon in Zhonghai and they say that he doesn't think anything and it's impossible and it's all a lie. All the people in the office froze in shock when they heard this information, and they never expected that Lin was a doctor and thought that he was a stupid person. Zhao Wen told Mayor Liang Ruxu that even if Director Lin is indeed a cardiologist, from the point of view of pharmaceuticals he is illiterate. Mayor Liang Ruxu got angry and immediately took all the documents in her hands and she thought that she no longer wants to argue with these people there. Liang Ruxu sharply told everyone that their final price was 9 and 9 yuan and that the negotiations were over and everyone could be free. Zhao Wen asked Liang Ruxu if she really trusts Director Lin to set the price because he knows nothing in the field of medicines. Liang Ruxu told Zhao Wen that Director Lin, of course, 
has no right to do this at all, and she can agree with these words of hers. But Liang Ruxu told Zhao Wen that she also had her doubts about the price and it seemed to her that this was an inadequate price for the medicine. Director Lin told Zhao Wen that she was also from China and said that she knew well how many sick people were now in Zhonghai. Director Lin told Zhao Wen that the price he offered her would give her a lot of profit and it was still profitable for her to enter their market. Zhao Wen told Director Lin that no pharmaceutical company would agree to this and they offered a strange price. Director Lin told Zhao Wen that if they don't agree with their rules now, they should leave their market and find a new one. Zhao Wen turned around and told Mayor Liang Ruxu that she hoped for another meeting with her where they could solve all the problems. Liang Ruxu told Zhao Wen that they could rearrange a meeting with her in three days and she hoped that they would accept all their conditions. Liang Ruxu told Zhao Wen everything she wanted to say and then she slowly began to leave the room with Director Lin. Zhao Wen was very angry and thought that everything almost worked out and if not for Director Lin they would have been able to successfully close their deal. Afterwards, they went out into the corridor and Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin whether the price of the medicine at 6 yuan was real and how did he find out. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that the price is almost real and even if he was mistaken, the error is very small and no one will notice these numbers. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin what if they still don't agree with their terms and just want to leave the market for another. Director Lin thought that in truth he could find an alternative to this medicine and he should study the pharmacopoeia in his system. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he promised her that he would handle everything himself and she should be ready to fulfill her deal. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that he needs to be more serious and she does not understand many of his jokes and they are discussing serious matters. Mayor Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that by the way, Mr. Ong wants to see him and she will take him to the hospital and he will talk to him there. And a couple of minutes later, Liang Ruxu and Director Lin arrived at Huashan Hospital together, and he thought that he should find out how Yang was doing. And then in the hospital, Director Lin met Gao Chun and he told Lin's friend that he had come to the hospital and he was glad to see him again now. Director Lin opened the door to Mr. Yang's room and thought that he had not communicated with him since the day of the operation and hoped that everything was fine with him. Director Lin asked Mr. Yang if he was looking for him and he came to him and is ready to answer all questions and he can ask them everything. Mr. Yang asked Director Lin not to be shy and asked him to sit down and he wanted to chat with him for a while and discuss important matters. Director Lin asked Mr. Yang why he came there and Mr. Ong asked him what his future plans were in Huangshan Quarry. And at that very second, Mr. Yang smiled and asked Director Lin if he wanted a promotion at Huangshan Hospital and he said seriously. But Director Lin refused Mr. Yang's offer and said that he was very comfortable in the place where he was now. Mr. Yang told Director Lin that youth is not eternal and Mr. asked him what his name is and where he is from and is he really from Zhonghai. Director Lin told Mr. Yang that in truth he doesn't even know where he was born because he grew up in an orphanage and doesn't remember his childhood. Duan Yongchun was surprised and wondered if Director Lin was an orphan and now he understood why he was acting strange and it was because of his childhood. Liang Ruxu thought that if Director Lin is an orphan, then where does he get so much money and he has so much influence and authority already everywhere? Mr. Yang told Director Lin that this is such a rare thing and today in their time the youth are not as smart as before and that is their problem. Mr. Yang told Director Lin that when he gets back on his feet, he should go out with the old man for a drink and he will be very happy about the company. Director Lin smiled at Mr. Yang and said that he would be only happy and asked him to rest and he should gain strength and energy. Mr. Yang agreed with Director Lin and said that he can already go back to work and he is a little tired and he will rest and sleep there. After these words, Director Lin began to leave Huangshan Hospital and realized that their conversation with Mr. Yang was over and he would rest there. Mr. Yang asked the assistant if Dr. Lin looks like that guy and he thinks that he is a copy of that person and it's all very interesting. The assistant told Mr. Yang that Lin's appearance is somewhat similar but his character is less ruthless compared to that same person. Mr. Yang said that at that time in the Northeast he killed a black bear with his own hands and people still admire him. The assistant said that although they differ in character, they are very smart and he called people in Yangcheng to check the shelter right away. Mr. Yang told his man that he could check and find out everything about Director Lin and he helped him a lot with his problem then. 
But Mr. Yang told the assistant that he must remember that no one should know about this matter and this information cannot be leaked. The assistant told Mr. Yang that of course he understood all his instructions and he would do whatever he said and was ready for anything at all times. Mr. Yang thought that this Lin is a very interesting guy and he has a great future and he can become a great man and this is true. At this time, Director Lin was waiting for Miss Z on the street, and he looked at his watch and wondered where she was and why she still hadn't come to him. And at that moment, Zi Qing Yang appeared behind Director Lin and she asked the handsome man if he was waiting for her there and how he was doing now. Director Lin glanced at Miss Z and noticed that she was very beautiful today and he was lucky to have such a cool sweet lady. And then Director Lin grabbed Miss Z's hand and asked her to just stop showing off and they should go and she said something to him. Principal Lin told Miss Z that she said that Teacher Zhang's husband is a professor and is the head of the department's doctoral dissertation. Director Lin told Miss Z that he must have a lot of contacts in the field of pharmaceuticals and then Miss Z threw a package at Dear Lin. Miss C told Director Lin that they couldn't go to visit empty-handed and it's good that she bought a couple of things on the way to her dear. Teacher Zhang Minghua told Zi Qing and Lin that she asked them not to bring anything and why should they spend money and they did not listen to her. Teacher Zhang Minghua asked her friends not to stand at the door and they should enter the house where they would sit and discuss all matters with them. Zhang Minghua asked Zi Qing Yang if they really have problems with their business and the Lingyun company is now having problems with investments. But teacher Zhang Minghua told Zi Qing that she had talked to Yuan and the situation was quite good and what happened to them. Director Lin thanked them for their concern, but this time he came there to ask Mr. Peng Xinghua a few questions about the case. Teacher Zhang Minghua was very nervous and asked Lin if he had health problems, but he said that this was not entirely true. Peng Xinghua put his water on the table and thought that it looks like now he has an idea of what Director Lin is talking about and he will talk there. Peng Xinghua pulled his glasses higher and thought that he would now seriously discuss all matters with Director Lin and he would answer all his questions. And at that moment, suddenly Peng Xinghua asked Director Lin to go with him and he would examine him and the treatment should not be delayed for a day. Director Lin was shocked by Peng Xinghua's words and told Mr. Peng that he didn't need to be examined and it seemed like they had guessed wrong. Director Lin told Peng Xinghua that he came to ask a couple of questions and he wants to make a Chinese medicine patent and check everything. But Peng Xinghua told Director Lin that they are ordinary people and they cannot do this and there must be a license otherwise it is a violation. Lin told Peng Xinghua that it is not that serious and the medicine can be destroyed and he only needs a report on the experiment from his friend. Peng Xinghua smiled and told Director Lin that then he would take him to the hospital and there they could solve all the matters and he would help him. Director Lin was happy and Peng Xinghua said that they would come there with his deputy and they used to be friends with him and he could help them there. And a couple of minutes later, Director Lin and Peng Xinghua arrived at the Zhonghai Traditional Chinese Medicine Hospital and thought about success. They found the office of his friend Peng Xinghua and he thought that he would try his best to quickly solve all the affairs of his friend young man Lin. The vice president of the hospital, Zhao Dongmei, was sitting in the room and she was very happy and told Peng Xinghua that it was a great meeting with her friend. Peng Xinghua asked Zhao Dongmei to let him introduce their university student Zi Qing Yang and her boyfriend Lin and he is good. Zhao Dongmei looked at the students and Principal Lin said good afternoon to Miss Zhao and he is happy to meet her in person today. Director Lin told Miss Zhao Dongmei that he had one recipe for medicine and wanted to make it a finished product for the residents. Director Lin told Zhao Dongmei that he hoped that she could help him with this matter and he would be very happy and would not be in debt. Zhao Dongmei asked Director Lin where this recipe came from and it was so strange and for so many years she had never known it before. Director Lin told Miss Zhao Dongmei that this was a recipe that was written down in the Yellow Emperor's Pharmacopoeia and he studied them all. Zhao Dongmei was surprised and said that this is the most complex classic in traditional Chinese medicine and a dozen sets were burned. Director Lin told Zhao Dongmei that the book was passed down to him from his family and in order to fulfill the last will of his ancestors, he brought them the recipe. Miss Zi Qing Yang was very surprised and thought, isn't Director Lin a serpot and how can he have a family then and this is all strange. Zhao Dongmei told Director Lin that although there is a factory, the medicine needs to pass many tests and it will take one year. Director Lin told Zhao Dongmei that after preparing this medicine, it will not be so difficult to find a lab rat and it is easy. 
Director Lin told Zhao Dongmei that his grandfather's birthday was expected in three days, and Miss stood frozen in place in surprise. Director Lin said that he wants to donate 3 million to Zhonghai Traditional Chinese Medicine Hospital and this is a benefit. Zhao Dongmei listened to Director Lin's words and said that there is no problem and they are ready to make his medicine so quickly. Director Lin offered his hand to Miss Zhao Dongmei and thanked her very much for helping him in this matter and he will not forget it. Director Lin was talking with Miss Zhao Dongmei and Zi Qing Yang looked at them and didn't understand how her sweetheart always manages to manage all their affairs. Zi Qing Yan looked at Director Lin and thought that she realized that he was very cunning and he was using this story for his own benefit. Afterwards they arrived in Jaya's house and Director Lin was very glad that he was now able to negotiate the release of his personal medicines. Miss Zi Qing was lying on the sofa and telling Dear Lin that she couldn't believe that he managed to fool all the teachers with the case. Director Lin told Miss Zi that he had done nothing wrong and they had been on their feet all day and should take a bath and wash up. Miss Zi Qing told Principal Lin that she was very tired and didn't even want to move and she couldn't get up from the sofa and it was so hard. But suddenly at that very second, Director Lin grabbed Miss Zi and he began to lift her into his arms and did not want her to tense up there so much. Director Lin told Miss Zi that if she doesn't want to get up, there is no need to do this and you can always find a solution to any problem. Director Lin told Miss Z that he will help her take a bath and it is not at all difficult for him to help her and he always thinks about her health. Director Lin went into the bathroom and asked Miss Z how her project was going there now and what was going on with the move and what was interesting there. Miss Z told Director Lin that some people there refuse to move and this cannot be rushed and they all need to think it over. Miss Z began to enter the water and thought that it would not hurt her to wash there and her dear was right and it's good that he always helps her. Director Lin asked Miss Z how the water temperature was and he could change it if his sweetie didn't like something and he was happy about it. Miss Z told Director Lin that he helped her a lot, but then she will wash herself and she does not need help and she is capable of all this. But suddenly at that moment Director Lin fell into the water and thought that he was not at all afraid of getting wet because he was now next to his sweetheart. Miss C was surprised by this and thought that Director Lin was arrogant and he would never change his mind if he had already decided on something. And after a couple of minutes, Miss C Ching came out of the bathroom and realized that it was the right decision and she was refreshed after a pleasant shower. Miss C thought she had a great guy but he is arrogant and always does the opposite if she asks him for something and Lin is like a child. And then Wang's mother called Director Lin's phone and she immediately asked Zi Qing if she was sleeping and she wanted to tell her something. Mom Wang told Zi Qing that this should stay between them and she said that Lin was now in the bathroom and asked what happened there. Mom Wang said that two people came to the shelter this afternoon and wanted to know about Lin and also asked if she had met his family. Zi Qing Yen asked Mom Wang not to tell anyone about this except her and she agreed with her and said that it would remain their secret. Miss Zi Qing thought about this and wondered what happened to Lin's parents and he doesn't always talk about them and doesn't know anything himself. At this time, Mom Wang opened the closet and wanted to look at the documents and all the information about Lin Yi's family and she should remember them. Mama Wang took the box and thought that she didn't know why people wanted to know about Lin's real parents and what these people were up to. Mom Wang saw Lin Yi's birth documents and remembered his mother and he was a baby at that time and he is a very cute child. And at that very second, Mom Wang closed the box back and thought that she should no longer remember these things and it was dangerous. Mom Wang thought that it was better never to tell anyone about some things and this information should remain her secret forever. Miss C thought about it and thought why would anyone find out information about Lin's parents there now and what are these people up to now. The next day, Director Lin came to Huangshan Hospital and he wanted to quickly help all the patients and complete the task immediately. Director Lin was standing next to Chiao Exian and then he heard that someone there was asking him to quickly come with us to buy medicine and this is so important. The grandmother told the guy that she wouldn't go and they would have to pay more than 2000 for medicine and her grandson also had to pay for his studies. The guy was on his knees and begged his mother to go with him and she really needs these medicines and her life depends on it and this is not a joke. The son cried and asked his mother to go with him to the pharmacy and buy all the necessary medicines and it doesn't matter how poor they are and this is the principle. The woman told her son that her grandson needs money to go to school and she is already old and she doesn't need anything else in this life. And then Dr. 
Chao Xian came up to him and asked them what happened there and why the guy was kneeling in front of a nice woman. The guy asked Dr. Chao Xian to help him and she should persuade his mother and she told him that her heart hurts and this is not a joke. The guy said that's why the doctor prescribed his mother medicine and his mother thinks it's too expensive and doesn't want to buy medicine. Director Lin asked the guy if the doctors did an electrocardiogram for his mother and he was interested to know what medicine they prescribed her. Director Lin looked at the diagnosis of Huangshan Hospital and froze there in surprise, and Dr. Chiao Xian said it looked like an extrasystole. Director Lin was furious when he saw the diagnosis of Huangshan Hospital and he asked them which idiot prescribed this for them and whether the doctor was a fool. The guy told Director Lin that Dr. Chao prescribed this and it seemed to him that he was the head doctor of their hospital and what was wrong with the medicine. Director Lin said that his mother's illness is not serious, but this drug, on the contrary, puts a lot of pressure on her heart. The guy froze in surprise when he heard Dr. Lin's words and asked the doctor if this was true and he didn't think such a thing was possible. Director Lin asked the guy to change their doctor next time and better go to Dr. Li Chu Han and she is experienced and will help right away. The son and mother bowed to Director Lin and said that he was a good doctor and thanked him for warning them about this mistake. The son told his mother that they no longer needed that drug and asked her to go with him and buy the pills that Dr. Lin recommended. Mom asked her son if these pills were expensive and she always wanted to save more money for her grandson to go to school. Dr. Chiao Xian told the woman that these pills cost only 5 yuan per bottle and they are very inexpensive and she need not be nervous. The woman was happy and told her son that then they could buy these pills with him at the pharmacy and they would help her cope with her illness. The woman began to leave with her son and said thank you to Dr. Lin for helping strangers in their difficult times. And at that very second, People began to go to Dr. Lin and asked him to check if everything was in order and with the medicine prescribed by the doctor. People told Dr. Lin that two boxes of medicine cost more than 800 yuan and their family could not afford to buy them all. The girls asked Dr. Lin to help them and they could not find the medicine they needed there and lost faith in a miracle and this could be a gift. Dr. Lin asked people to wait and there were too many of them and if they had doubts about their recommendations they could go to Li. People told Dr. Lin thank you for all his kindness and they all could not have done it without his advice and he is the wisest doctor of all. Director Lin walked into his office and thought that he didn't like that many dissatisfied patients were leaving their Huangshan hospital. Director Lin told Xiao Xian that there are already too many problems with this Chao Jia Wang and this does not suit him and this needs to be resolved quickly. Xiao Xian asked Lin's friend to calm down and not be nervous and she said that these are the unspoken rules of Huangshan Hospital and this is a fact. Xiao Xian told Dr. Lin that doctors receive commissions from the sale of goods and it is better for them not to interfere in this and not to touch everyone. And then Director Lin kicked the chair with all his might and asked Xiao Xian what's wrong with this hospital and why they can't work properly. And at that moment, Dr. Lee came into the room and asked Director Lin why he was so angry and wanted to hear the answer to this question of hers. Dr. Lee asked newcomer Lin to go with her to the head doctor's office immediately and he could explain his behavior there. Chiao Xian asked Dr. Lee if Dr. Lin was really called there because of what recently happened near the reception and he was not to blame. Dr. Lee told Xiao Xian that now they will go to the office with newcomer Lin and check why their superiors called him there. Chiao Xian told Director Lin that he should behave extremely calmly and then maybe nothing will happen to him for this matter. And a couple of minutes later, Director Lin entered the chief physician's office and thought that he would tell all the doctor's superiors about this situation. Director Lin asked Mr. Zhao if he was looking for him and said that he was ready to answer his questions and what he wanted to hear from him. Mr. Zhang told Dr. Lin that he is too impulsive and needs to be calmer so that there will be no problems with them in the future. Mr. Zhang asked Dr. Lin if he understood how this could affect their hospital and what else would happen to Huang Shan's reputation. Director Lin asked what he did wrong and he just looked at the patient's medical record and re-prescribed the medicine and that was it. Mr. Zhang told Dr. Lin that he had created a rift in his team, but he hoped that he himself would reconsider his behavior. Director Lin was furious and told Mr. Zhang that he promised him that he would reconsider his behavior and make a conclusion and analysis. Mr. Zhang was terrified and he froze in surprise and realized that he had made Dr. Lin very angry and he could harm him for his action. Mr. 
Zhang pointed his finger at the newcomer and told DR, Li that Lin was going too far and he would be punished after all such impudence. DR, Li told Mr. Zhang that she did not think that Lin was wrong and in this situation he took the wrong side and the doctor made a mistake. Mr. Yang was angry and told newcomer Lin and DR, Li that he would not just let it go and they would regret acting like this in the future. Director Lin went into his office and Xiao Xian asked him what happened there and would he really have problems now because of goodness? But Director Lin told Xiao Xian that it was nothing serious and he immediately asked the next patient to come in and he would continue the examination. And then a patient came to Dr. Lin and he asked her to give her a medical record now and only then would he be able to examine her for everything. But suddenly the patient turned out to be He Yuan and she asked the boss if it was him and she couldn't believe her eyes and thought she was sleeping. Yuan asked boss Lin not to tell her that he was a doctor and he already worked at Baba's company and why did he need so much money from his affairs. Director Lin asked Yuan what kind of money she was talking about and that he works there for thanks and does not take money from all his patients. Xiao Xian told Yuan that a couple of days ago Dr. Lin performed a major operation there and now he is very popular there in their hospital. Dr. Lin began to study Yuan's medical record and he learned about her problem and said that she already had a lot of red spots. Yuan showed Director Lin the spots on her hand and said that they all appeared after her trip to Yangcheng and she doesn't know what to do now. Director Lin told Yuan that it was nothing serious and that she should just buy an ointment for 14 Yuan and apply it to the spots. Yuan was shocked and asked him if he really told her all this seriously and didn't understand why this anti-stain ointment was so cheap. Director Lin looked at Yuan and said that she was right and he was mistaken and this would not be enough and it was good that she doubted his recommendation. And then suddenly Director Lin told Yuan that she needs two ointments and he advises this because he knows she has a very big fifth point. Yuan started shouting at Director Lin and said that these jokes were in his spirit and she would stop being kind after such jokes from the boss. And then Lin Wei appeared and congratulated the owner Lin on completing the task and the percentage of the profession is 35% and that's cool. Lin Wei told Director Lin that the reward is 20% of the shares of any company but their value is less than 200 billion. Director Lin was surprised and asked if he could buy any company and Wei said that any company would be cheaper than 200 billion. Director Lin thought that he first needed to think about all this carefully and he would take the reward later when he came up with the idea of buying the company. And then Xiao Xian told Dr. Lin that his phone was ringing and she asked him to answer and it was Mayor Liang Ruxu who called him about their case. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that now all six major international pharmaceutical companies have announced price increases. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that they had raised the prices of all 25 drugs exported to China and Lin was surprised. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin to go outside in 10 minutes and they would meet in a cafe near the hospital and discuss all matters. Director Lin told Xiao Xian that she was in a hurry to get time off and therefore left the patients to her and he was sure that she would cope. And 10 minutes later, Director Lin entered the cafe and thought that he and Liang Ruxu should quickly solve this problem with medicines. Director Lin saw that Mayor Liang Ruxu was already sitting inside the cafe and he began to slowly approach her from behind and wanted to avoid appearing to her. Director Lin stroked Liang Ruxu's hair and asked her to never decide anything in a hurry and ruin her gorgeous hairstyle. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that now is not the time to tease her and they should think about how they can quickly solve all the problems with the case. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she checked and one of these pharmaceutical companies has shares in three other companies. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that all the other three companies were directly or indirectly collaborating with them and they were doing strange things. Director Lin said that how cunning it is and all these 25 medicines are very important and if they raise prices it will make life worse. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she completely agreed with him and asked if he had any ideas and how they could interfere with everyone. Director Lin asked his friend Liang Ruxu if she really believed him that much and thought that she trusted him with all her information. Liang Ruxu loudly told Director Lin that she believed him and she really hoped that he would help resolve the matter with their competitors. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that she should already cut off all contacts with them in all directions and then everything will be fine. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that it is difficult and she will explain to him why it is much more difficult to do it than he thinks and this is true. 
Liang Ruxu said that the management department is responsible for the import of medicines and local departments no longer have the right to interfere. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he would inform all third-tier hospitals to increase the volume of these imported goods. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she could arrange it and he wanted to stock up on the goods before they raised the price of it all. But Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that this is not entirely true and all their goods will be detained in the transportation department and he has a plan. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that Zhonghai Port holds at least 80% of their cargo and isn't it all interesting to them? Liang Ruxu was at a loss and asked Director Lin how this would affect them and she still could not understand the essence of their action. Director Lin said that firstly they will violate the contract on delivery dates and secondly he will publish some information about them. Director Lin said that he will inform them that their reserves will be cut in half and this will cause panic and shock the entire world market. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu to systematize this necessary information and give him the names of six companies and their drugs. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that there are no problems and she will do everything as soon as she returns and she hopes for their success in the end of their business. Director Lin and Liang Ruxu went outside and talked about how they would soon return to this topic and try to sort out all the nuances. Mayor Liang Ruxu opened the car door and wanted to quickly return to her workplace to begin an attack on all their competitors. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that hundreds of thousands of people depend on her and she relies on him and believes that he will not let her down now. Director Lin thought that Liang Ruxu was nervous for nothing and he knew that they would do everything right and be able to get rid of all the enemies. Director Lin asked Mayor Liang Ruxu not to be nervous and he is confident that everything will be fine and they will be able to defeat all her enemies so quickly. And after these words, Liang Ruxu left on business and Director Lin stood there and realized that he also had to go on business and he stayed there. Director Lin called Chao Ching Chiu and asked if she was in the company now and if she could help him with one thing and this is all important. Director Lin quickly came to Fenlang Culture and thought that he should talk to Chao Ching and hope that she will help her friend. Chao Ching Chiu became wary and asked the insidious Lin why he was looking for her and what help he needed from her and she didn't know anything. Lin told Chao Ching that he had sent her a document by email and that he needed to find the armchair army and spread the word. Chao Ching told Director Lin that it is too risky to use their country servers these days and said that this is all so serious. Director Lin approached Chao Ching closely and thought that he would try to convince her to do this and nothing would happen to her company. Director Lin told Chao Ching that he would help her with falsifying the addresses of several foreign servers and this might suit her. Director Lin told Chao Ching that they would transmit the information to the internet through these addresses and therefore they would remain unknown. Chao Ching Chiu was very surprised and asked Director Lin if he really had hacking skills and when did he learn all this? Director Lin grabbed the chair and thought that he knew a little about computers and thought that he could hack the server without any problems. Director Lin asked Chao Ching if it was really that difficult to falsify this address and that she could assess his chances of success in their case. Chao Ching asked Director Lin how she knew about this and she asked him if there was anything else she didn't know about his skills. And then suddenly Director Lin told Chao Ching that he was a heart surgeon at Huangshan Hospital and she could come see him if she wanted. Chao Ching Chiu was shocked and froze in place and thought how is this even possible and what kind of person is Lin who has so many skills. And two hours later, Director Lin continued to work on the computer and thought that it looks like he has completed hacking the servers and this is a success. Director Lin told Chao Ching that the addresses are ready and it is best to post this information in a place where there are more male people. Chao Ching told Lin that she knew this and that she would later discuss it with the marketing department to try to achieve a better effect. Director Lin waved his hand and told Chao Ching that the rest would depend on her and she could do anything for their result. Chao Ching realized that a person who has such a brilliant and also extraordinary intellect is not to be trifled with and can defeat anyone. At this time, Meng Haiqing told Miss Zhao Wen that the headquarters had already removed everything, and when the price increased, they would understand it all at once. Zhao Wen said that Liang Ruxu thinks that she is smart and makes mistakes, and their department is also not a gift, and tomorrow is the day of the second negotiations with her. And at that moment Zhao Wen's phone began to ring and she was very surprised and thought who was calling her and what this guy needed now. And looking at the phone, Zhao Wen noticed that Director Roy was calling her and she realized that she had to pick up the phone and discuss matters with him. 
Zhao Wen put out her cigarette and thought, she must look very good there now when talking to Director Roy and he is important. Zhao Wen connected her phone to the selfie stick and realized that they should not screw up in front of Director Roy and he is an important boss. Zhao Wen asked Director Roy if there would be any instructions for them and they would do whatever he ordered them and they were his people. Mr. Ro told them that six large companies contacted him and told him that Zhonghai was purchasing 25 drugs before the prices went up. Zhao Wen told Mr. Nog that it was normal that they all wanted to stock up before prices went up and tomorrow she would close their deal. Mr. Roy agreed with Zhao Wen and said this quarter's reports will be good and she is now doing an excellent job. Mr. Roy told Zhao Wen that he had a new position for her and could get a promotion when he returned and she was happy. Zhao Wen stood up and told Mr. Roy thank you for your trust and she will not let him down and will work as hard as always. The next morning, Director Lin himself came to the emergency center and wanted to meet his friend and talk about the case. And at that very second, Director Lin noticed Zhao Dongmei's acquaintance in front of the building and thought that he was just thinking about her and saw her. Zhao Dongmei handed over a folder with documents to Director Lin and she said that everything important was there and she had collected all the necessary contracts. Zhao Dongmei told Director Lin's desk that she had already told him this many times, but she would repeat it and asked him not to create problems for her. Director Lin asked Miss Zhao Dongmei not to be nervous and said that he had a sense of caution and would be very careful there. Zhao Dongmei told Director Lin that they had an internal meeting to study and this is a very good medicine and she is amazed. Zhao Dongmei told Director Lin that she wanted to continue testing the medicine as before and asked him what he thought about it. Director Lin told Zhao Dongmei that there was no problem and he would write her a power of attorney and later she would handle the documents herself. Zhao Dongmei asked Lin if this was true and asked him not to worry and if his medicine passed all the tests from them. Zhao Dongmei told Director Lin that in this case, everyone would not take his merits into their hands, and he told Miss that she was very kind. Director Lin told Zhao Dongmei that it was time for him to go on business and said that he would not detain her and she could go on from there. Zhao Dongmei said goodbye to Director Lin and asked her friend to take care of himself and said that he creates innovative things for the future. Director Lin headed to the tender center and thought that Liang Ruxu should already be waiting for him there and he would not leave her in trouble, and this is true. Liang Ruxu noticed Director Lin and didn't understand whether it was him or she just made a mistake and her brain amnesia is now progressing. Liang Ruxu saw Director Lin with documents in his hands and she immediately asked him if he had really prepared and came there like a fighter. Director Lin showed Liang Ruxu the documents and said that he and she could go there and now she would witness a miracle and believe him. Zhao Wan and her team were already sitting in the tender hall and were waiting for the arrival of Mayor Liang Ruxu and thought that today they would close the deal. And at that moment the door to the conference room opened and Lin began to enter there along with Mayor Liang and thought that they would outplay them all. The manager told Miss Liang Ruxu that she came a little earlier today than then and he was very happy to see her there again with her friend Lin. Zhao Wen told Liang that after their repeated research, they all realized that there was no room for price reduction and the price was almost 300 yuan. Director Lin asked Mayor Liang Ruxu not to sit down and said that they would not talk much and would leave this place after saying a few words to them. Wang Yenching asked Director Lin what he meant and none of all the people understood what Lin said and why he did it now. Director Lin told all the people from the company that if they don't reduce the price now, then they have nothing more to talk about and he promises it to them. Zhao Wen thought that six companies had already raised prices on everything and doesn't Mayor Liang Ruxu understand what's going on with the business? Zhao Wen was furious and told expert Liang Ruxu that now the extraction of raw materials for pharmaceuticals is growing all over the world and this is a fact. Zhao Wen told Liang Ruxu that if they discuss the price, what will they negotiate about and she doesn't understand the mayor's logic. And then Lin threw the folder on the table and said that this is a new Chinese patent medicine and it is more effective than ibupalin and it is better. Director Lin said that the document in the folder is a certificate and it was issued by a professional organization and he thinks that this is enough. Zhao Wan and Meng Haiqing froze in surprise and wondered if their competitors had developed a new drug and this was like their dream. All the people stood up and thought that Mayor Liang Ruxu had managed to outweed them now and they did not know that they had developed a new medicine. Liang Ruxu did not expect such a reaction from her competitors and realized that Director Lin was right and he made everyone silent and proud. 
All the people picked up Director Lin's document and studied it to understand if there was a trick there and maybe he deceived them all and this is a joke. Mr. Fan was at a loss and said that their composition is completely the same as Ibupalin and Director Lin told everyone the truth now. Meng Haiqing was very worried and asked Miss Zhao Wen what they would do now and they did not expect this from Mayor Liang Ruxu. Zhao Wen couldn't find a place for herself and thought that they could still offer the mayor their conditions and she would show them all a master class. Zhao Wen told everyone that these documents are just laboratory data and not a clinical report and do they really think that they will believe it? Director Lin told Zhao Wen that clinical trials have already begun and this evidence is enough for negotiations. And suddenly Lin put his medicines on the table and said that this is it and they have developed it and they can all take them to the laboratory. Director Lin told Zhao Wen that when they realize that there are no disadvantages in the best pills, they will continue to talk to them about the price. Zhao Wen studied Director Lin's medicines and couldn't find words and realized that it seemed like they had lost and Lin was a genius in their business. Director Lin told everyone that they had not studied this drug at all before, but they managed to quickly come up with their own ingenious product. Liang Ruxu listened and Lin told everyone that if they raised the price of 25 drugs, his team would make a better replacement for them. Zhao Wan and her assistant Meng Haiqing could not say anything and they were speechless after learning what Director Lin did with their case. Wang Yenqing was also shocked and thought that he had underestimated Liang Ruxu's friend Director Lin and he was able to give surprises to everyone there. Afterwards, Director Lin and Liang Ruxu went outside and she said that she was scared there and it was good that he was next to her and protected her. Mayor Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin if he really researched this medicine and this is not a trick to fool these people. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu how she could think about his deception and whether he really looked like a swindler and could no longer be trusted. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin if his medicine could also replace Ibupalin and how he was able to develop its structure. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he hoped she would give him the green light to enter the clinical stage as soon as possible. Liang Ruxu silently looked at Director Lin without taking her eyes off and he asked her why she was looking at him like that and frightening him with her smile. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she was simply amazed at how quickly he solved the problem and she didn't think he was that cool. Director Lin smiled and told Liang Ruxu that perhaps he was chosen from above for this and he has a talent for solving problems in their world. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he had already said that he would help her rise as quickly as possible and maybe two months would be enough. Director Lin said goodbye to Liang Ruxu and she said that she was so glad that she had a friend like him and she would not forget the help. Director Lin was in a great mood and he started to walk home but with uncontrollable steps and hummed a song saying that everything is fine. Liang Ruxu saw her friend's behavior in the side mirror of the car and thought that it looked like he was also happy to help her and he was a good friend. Liang Ruxu thought that Director Lin was at least a little bit of a scoundrel, but he is an incredible person and is ready to help at any time. At this time, in the meeting room, Zhao Wan continued to stand and she looked at Director Lin's documents on medicines and she didn't believe. Meng Haiqing told Miss Zhao Wen that they must report this to the head office otherwise they will be in trouble and he knows for sure. Zhao Wen realized that her assistant Meng Haiqing was right and they should contact the main office and tell them how things ended. And at that very second, Zhao Wen called Mr. Roy and thought that he would definitely be angry with her, but he should find out the results of their negotiations. Mr. Roy was very happy and asked Zhao Wan how the negotiations went now and when she returns he will throw a party for her there. Zhao Wan told Director Roy that she asked for his forgiveness and something happened there that could not be expected under any circumstances. Director Roy was very shocked to hear Zhao Wan's words and he asked her what she was talking about and maybe she was just joking with him. Zhao Wan told Director Roy that their competitors have developed a drug with an effect similar to ibulopin and this is not science fiction. Zhao Wen told Mr. Roy that she had the finished product there and all the laboratory reports and in simple words all their medicines had been replaced. Mr. Roy asked Zhao Wen how it was possible to develop the same medicine as ibupalin in such a short time and this is impossible. Zhao Wen said that they took the medicine to the laboratory and it really works and that China itself will produce all the pills. Director Roy told Zhao Wen that this was unthinkable and why did third-tier hospitals place such a large order recently. Mr. Roy told Zhao Wen that transportation should be done by air, not by water, and she would receive the money and look after the whole operation. Immediately after these words, 
director Roy hung up and he wanted Zhao Wen to quickly find a way to fix the whole ridiculous situation. Zhao Wen thought that Mr. Roy turned off the video call and it is clear that he is very dissatisfied but how can she correct all their shortcomings? Zhao Wen put her hand on the table and she realized that it would be very difficult for her to resolve all matters alone and the management no longer believed her. Zhao Wen started to feel very bad and she almost fainted and thought that she should calm down and not think about him. Meng Haiqing was horrified and asked director Zhao Wen what happened to her and maybe he could take her to the hospital and they could help her there. But Zhao Wen told Meng Haiqing that he didn't need to help her and only he should do what the boss told him and follow his orders. Zhao Wen told Meng Haiqing that by raising prices, they could all make a lot of money, and he understood his boss Zhao's words. And the next morning, Fan Donghui was sitting in their hotel and they were extremely unhappy that director Lin managed to outweat them all. Fan Donghui threw the documents on the table and shouted that this couldn't happen and how could he pull this off and they didn't understand anything there. The son told Fan Donghui that problems cannot be solved by anger and they better come up with a plan and strike back at Lin. The son told Fan Donghui that he had seen their new medicine and it would be difficult to enter the market again without agreeing to the price of 9 yuan. Fan Donghui told his son that with such a price, he doesn't see the point in working with them and who is helping Liang Ruxu and who is this stranger. Fan Donghui asked his son to find him all the information about this friend Liang Ruxu but he stood up and said that they don't need to do this. Fan Qi Nan told his father that he knows enough about this man and he is a friend of Qin Han and soon he will deal with him and he will answer for everything. The next morning, Director Lin came to Huashan Hospital and he thought that today he could do a good job without thinking about anything. Director Lin walked into the hospital and was surprised because he didn't expect to see this person in the morning and she was in very good condition. Chiao Xian stood there and she said that Dr. Lin was also theirs and she asked if he had eaten in the morning and she brought two bananas with her for breakfast. Director Lin said thank you to Chiao Xian, but he refused the banana and said that on the way to the hospital he bought a pancake with fruit there. All the people in the hospital continued to look angrily at Director Lin and he did not understand why they were looking at him like that and was very surprised by them. Director Lin sat on the sofa and asked Chiao Xian what happened to these people and maybe he did something to them and offended them greatly. Director Lin asked Dr. Chiao Xian why all the people in this corridor kept looking at him with anger without stopping. Chiao Xian told Lin that he asked that woman to buy cheaper pills and now all patients only go to Dr. Li. Chiao Xian told her friend Lin that Dr. Lu and Dr. Fan no longer have patience and of course they will look at him as their enemy. Director Lin yawned and told Xiao Xian that this is only their problem and it does not concern him and he does not want to discuss the problems of these people. And after a couple of hours, the doctors said that Dr. Chao finished work so early and they have very few patients and soon they will become clowns. Dr. Lu Yuncheng and Fan Xu Fang, together with Zhou Zichiang, came to the experienced doctor and said that the newcomer Lin was to blame for all this. The experienced doctor asked two doctors to go with him and said that they would go straight to the authorities and solve this problem and expel Lin. And at that very second, all the dissatisfied doctors entered the chief doctor's office and thought that they would tell him everything they thought about the newcomer Lin. Dr. Zhao asked Dr. Chow and the other doctors what they were all doing there and what they needed and he was ready to listen to their questions to him. Dr. Chow asked Dr. Zhao if he knew trainee Lin and he wanted to say a few words about what he did to all the doctors at the hospital. Dr. Zhao told all the doctors that he knew about it and many people called him with complaints about the newcomer Lin and he did not suit many. Dr. Zhao told the doctors that he wanted to transfer newcomer Lin to emergency care and then gradually isolate him from the team. Dr. Chow started screaming and told Dr. Zhao that he would not tolerate Lin for more than a minute and he should quickly get rid of him quickly. And then someone started calling Dr. Chow's phone and he thought that this person had distracted him now because he was complaining about the newcomer Lin. And then Dr. Chow noticed that Wang Guanghong was now calling him and realized that this was a very important call and he now had to answer the call. Dr. Chow froze in place and thought that he could not miss a call from this man, otherwise he would face consequences. Dr. Chow told all the doctors that he needed to answer and he would immediately return to them in a couple of minutes and they would continue talking about Lin. Wang Guanghong asked Dr. Chow what was going on there and whether this medicine would be sold and he spent millions on financing. Dr. Chow told him that they have a new doctor in the department, so he has no patience and there is only one way out, 
they must drag him into this too. Diar, Chao told Wang Guanhong that he would give him this guy's number and he should talk to him and Guanhong decided to meet the guy. And at that very second, Zhou Zichiang suddenly came out to him and he asked his uncle why he did this and he wants to hear all the answers from him. Uncle Zhou Zichiang was in shock and almost died of fear and asked him if he really wanted his uncle to have a heart attack from him there. Zhou Zichiang told his uncle that if they involve newcomer Lin and this is their business, there will be nothing left for them and he must think it over. The uncle asked Zhou Zichiang then what he could do and he didn't know what he could do because he had other senior heads. The uncle told Zhou Zichiang that after they agreed on cooperation with them, he would report everything to Mr. Zhao and Lin would be fired. Zhou Zichiang told his uncle that this is very smart and he thought it through very well and he is proud that he has such a smart uncle and he is cool. At this time, the guests came to visit the patient Mr. Yang and they all wanted him to get well soon and leave Huangshan Hospital. And then Xia Xiaotong told the guests that they all no longer needed to stay there with him and they would go home and prepare for the funeral. Li Jingyu asked Xia Xiaotong how dare she say that and dad is now in a stable state and she wants to divide his property. And at that very second, the doctors came into the room and said that they had to go around the wards every day and check all the sick people. The doctors looked at Xia Xiaotong and she told Dr. Li that she was very glad to see her and she had long wanted to talk to her about everything. Dr. Li told Xia Xiaotong that half a month had passed since he came out of intensive care and he had recovered well but needed constant rest. Xia Xiaotong asked Dr. Li if he would feel better if her father had surgery now and she was interested to know how it would affect. Dr. Li told Xiaotong that her father is too old, which increases the risk and the success rate is less than 10% and it is better to leave. Li Jingyu nodded her head and thought that Dr. Li said everything correctly and the operation could kill her father and this is all very dangerous. But Xia Xiaotong clenched her fist tightly and thought that this would not suit her, and she told everyone that this did not suit her and she did not agree with them. Xia Xiaotong told Dr. Li that they need to operate on her father and then she hopes that he will recover and come out of the operating room like a bull. Director Lin looked at them and thought that this girl might definitely have problems in her head and she doesn't understand what she's talking about there. Li Jingyu told Xia Xiaotong that the risk is too great and she definitely does not agree to the operation and this is the worst option for their own father. But Xia Xiaotong was furious and told Li Jingyu that she was still his daughter and didn't she want their father to get better so soon? Xia Xiaotong asked Li Jingyu if she really didn't want to cure her father of such a terrible disease and he raised her and always raised her. Li Jingyu told Xia Xiaotong that Dr. Li just said that her father might not come out of the operating room alive and this is a huge risk. Xia Xiaotong started screaming at her husband and asked the idiot why he was silent there because he was the head of the family and he was not capable of anything in life. The husband told Xia Xiaotong that he also thinks that it is better not to have his father undergo surgery and it is very dangerous for his life and he is not sure about it. Xia Xiaotong was furious and asked her husband what he was saying and why he disagreed with her and how dare he argue with her there in the hospital. Xia Xiaotong told her husband that he is an unworthy son of his father and she cannot live with someone like him and she will soon file for divorce from her husband. The guy asked Xia Xiaotong not to leave and offered to discuss everything with her and maybe the operation should be done and he agrees with her now. Xia Xiaotong's husband told Dr. Li that they had decided that they would perform an operation on their father and so they wanted to save him from his serious illness. Dr. Li told the guy that she told them what was at stake, but since that was their decision, she couldn't do anything and it was up to them. Dr. Li asked Chao Xian to conduct a surgical examination of the patient after lunch and then prepare documents for signature. Dr. Chao Xian agreed with Dr. Li and said that she will do everything soon and prepare everything for the operation even if it is not good. In the morning, Director Lin arrived at the Zhonghai Center for Disease Control and Prevention and he was waiting there for his girlfriend Liang Ruxu. And after a couple of minutes, Liang Ruxu came there and she asked Lin for forgiveness for the suddenness and she wanted to discuss a couple of things with him. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin if he had eaten anything and he said that he had not had breakfast yet and he immediately went to see her there after his work. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that after the meeting they would definitely have a delicious meal there and she should treat him for his help. Director Lin and Liang Ruxu entered the office and noticed that a lot of people were already sitting there and they were waiting for them and began to look at them. Zhao Dongmei noticed Director Lin and nodded to him and made it clear that he should pretend that there was no business between them. 
Liang Ruxu said that she hopes that at today's meeting everyone will be able to express their opinions and give recommendations on their recipes. Fan asked Director Lin that he would like to know where this recipe came from because no one had been able to make such a medicine before him. Director Lin told the guest that he took the recipe from the very ancient pharmacopoeia of the Yellow Emperor and Inner and he answered honestly. The man told Director Lin that this book was lost a long time ago and then where did he get it from and he should be more serious and this is not a joke. Director Lin stood up and told the guest that he believed that they should not even discuss this and that this was not interesting information. Director Lin said that he hopes that the Chinese patent medicine will enter the clinical stage as quickly as possible. And at that very second, Director Lin stood up and walked towards the door and wanted to leave the room and he no longer wanted to answer the guest's questions. Liang Ruxu caught up with Director Lin and asked him to be a little more serious and the people in the conference room are great figures in their medicine. And suddenly, at that very second, a man appeared behind Director Lin and asked him to wait a couple of minutes and stand there. It was the director of the Zhonghai Hospital of Chinese Medicine, Dao Liang, and he now wanted to talk to him personally and get to know him there. Dao Liang shook hands with Director Lin and he appreciated his work and realized that he was a genius, because not everyone can even come up with their own medicine. Dao Liang told Director Lin that his words contain more wisdom than a book and he respects every decision and he is a very smart guy. Director Lin told Dao Liang that he had just broken through the hard ice that prevented Chinese medicine from developing and he was delighted. Director Lin and Liang Ruxu were very surprised and thought that this man was very polite to them and how they helped him in his business. Zhao Dongmei asked Director Lin to come visit them for dinner when he had time and discuss business projects with him. After that, they went outside and thought that Zhao Dongmei was also a very good woman and could be relied on in their situation. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that six large pharmaceutical companies had already shipped the goods and she learned about it recently. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that they say that the first batch of medicine will arrive in Zhonghai this evening and this is very interesting. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that when the time comes, she can tell them that the goods will be confiscated and now they will have dinner. And then Lin received a call from the owner of the Tianjia Pharmacy at the entrance of Huashan Hospital and he would like to invite him to dinner and ask him questions. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin who called her and whether he hadn't finished his work yet and his business partners were calling him. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that the owner of the pharmacy wanted to chat with him over dinner now and it seemed like he had an interesting topic. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he was not used to having dinner with a man, so she would keep him company and he would be happy. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that he was a fool and asked him not to talk like that and that he always finds time for his ridiculous jokes. And a couple of minutes later, Director Lin and Liang Ruxu arrived together at the Qinghe restaurant and he wanted to find out who this mysterious man was. Director Lin went to the restaurant with his friend the mayor and she was also very interested in talking with the one who invited Lin's friend there. The man was sitting at the table and he was very surprised to see that Director Lin did not come to the restaurant alone and he did not warn him about it. It was the owner of the Tianjia Pharmacy, Wang Guanghong and he asked Lin who came with him and for some reason this girl seemed familiar to him. Director Lin told Wang Guanghong that she was his friend from the hospital and he could say anything and she didn't know much about business. Wang Guanghong told Director Lin that he is a serious person and he will tell him everything directly and now they will discuss everything and this is all important. Wang Guanghong told Mr. Lin that they had a batch of medicine in the pharmacy and could he help him figure out how to sell it quickly. Wang Guanghong told Director Lin that if he helps him in this matter, he will give him 20% of the profits and he really hopes. Director Lin asked Wang Guanghong if he really offered him 20% there and he thinks that this amount will be enough for him. Wang Guanghong asked Mr. Lin how much he then wanted to get for his help and he could name the price and he would think about the amount. Director Lin told Wang Guanghong that he would agree to 30% and then he would help him with his pharmacies and he promised this. Wang Guanghong asked Dr. Lin not to talk nonsense and he is not lying to him and 20% is already the ceiling and he cannot do more. But Wang Guanghong told Director Lin that if he could get Dr. Li involved in this matter, he would raise the offer to 23. Director Lin thought that Wang Guanghong was clearly up to something and soon he would know exactly what he wanted to do and then he would regret everything. Director Lin told Wang Guanghong that they had agreed but he would only believe him when they signed the contract and it was all true. 
Wang Guanghong told Mr. Lin that he can trust him and he has been in this business for many years and knows a lot about this business with him. And at that very second, Wang Guanghong threw a wad of money on the table and was very glad that he managed to come to an agreement with Director Lin and he would help. Wang Guanghong took out the contract and handed it to Mr. Lin and he immediately signed it and there was an alliance between them and they are now friends. Wang Guanghong smiled and told Director Lin that now they are partners with him and he is very happy to cooperate and this will be the best friendship. Director Lin waved the document in front of Wang Guanghong and said that they are fully protected by law with this agreement and that's cool. Wang Guanghong became tense and told Mr. Lin that he was a joker and this contract was a dubious thing and it was better not to go to their law with it. Director Lin slightly pushed Liang Ruxu and thought that she had not yet said a single word and seemed to have missed all the important details. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu to stop eating and she immediately agreed with him and thought that she did not understand what they were talking about. Liang Ruxu began to wipe her mouth and thought that she could help Director Lin because he also saved her many times and it's all true. Liang Ruxu asked Wang Guanghong to introduce herself and she is in fact an economist in Zhonghai and her name is Liang Ruxu and she is so glad to meet there. Wang Guanghong froze in place in surprise and thought, is this all true and she is mocking him and this is not funny and so brazen. Director Lin silently ate his food and told Wang Guanghong that she wanted him to do his job and she was not that interested in this whole matter. And suddenly Director Lin asked Wang Guanghong where he got his phone number and which of his friends gave him the number without asking them. Wang Guanghong began to think about the answer and thought that it seemed that he would not be able to deceive Director Lin and he would definitely understand the trick there. Liang Ruxu started screaming and told Wang Guanghong that he didn't even have to try to lie and she would immediately recognize the deception of the swindler of a family friend. Wang Guanghong told Director Lin that his number was given to him by the head of their department, Chao Jia Wang, and they all signed an agreement with him then. Director Lin told Wang Guanghong that besides his department, are there doctors in other departments who work with him and he is interested. Wang Guanghong said that besides these doctors, there is also Zhao Jianwei and he and Chao Jia Wang are greedy for money and very insidious and cunning people. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu to ask people from their management department to check on them and find all the information. Director Lin winked at Liang Ruxu and he asked her without words to play along with him and they themselves would outweet the scoundrel Wang Guanghong now. Liang Ruxu understood what Director Lin meant and nodded her head and said that she would do it and send her people to check. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she would deal with this and he need not worry about this issue and everything would be settled soon. But suddenly, at that very second, Lin Wei's leg appeared in front of Director Lin and he did not expect it and was surprised and thought that Lin Wei was a miracle. Lin Wei congratulated Master Lin for crossing all the illegal work of the hospital and completing her assignment as a doctor ahead of schedule. Lin Wei told Director Lin that he received a professional gift bag of 10 million yuan and a fashionable rickshaw. Director Lin was surprised and asked Lin Wei and he was now so interested in what kind of fashionable rickshaw it was and where he would see all the gifts. Director Lin told Lin Wei that he didn't care and liked working at the hospital and would stay there a little longer and help everyone. At this time in Huangshan Hospital, all the people who hated Director Lin wanted to hang out with friends and get him kicked out. Dr. Chao told Dr. Zhao that he wants to tell him good news and Wang Guanghong has signed an agreement with Lin and their plan is good. Dr. Chao told Dr. Zhao that this is a good reason to get rid of Dr. Lin soon and he should leave Huashan Hospital. Dr. Zhao told Dr. Chao that of course he was right and this would be enough for them to pass a verdict and Dr. Lin would be fired for this. But Dr. Zhao told Dr. Chao that reporting such news only to the guards is a little boring and he wants to have fun and there is a reason for this. And then suddenly Dr. Zhao told Dr. Chao that he would now call the police and Dr. Lin's reputation and life would already be ruined. Fifteen minutes later, Director Lin opened the door to their Mr. Zhao's office and wondered what he needed from him and he was distracting him. Director Lin asked Mr. Zhao if he called him and how he could help him and he was ready to listen to his questions and give him answers. Dr. Zhao told Dr. Lin that he heard that he and Wang Guanghong who is the owner of Tianjia Pharmacy signed a contract. Dr. Zhao pointed his finger and asked Director Lin if he understood that this was a violation of the hospital rules and how dare he betray them. Dr. Zhao told Director Lin that such a person is not worthy of being a doctor at Huangshan Hospital and he will be fired for his frame-up.
Director Lin told DR, Zhao that without evidence these are all empty words and he won't be able to prove anything even if he really wants to. And then Dr. Zhao showed Director Lin the phone and asked him if he had enough of this evidence and these were all documents of dirty deeds. Director Lin looked at the document on Dr. Zhao's phone and said that he was framed and this cannot be true and this is a complete lie. Diar, Chao told Director Lin that it was a pity that they would no longer be able to be colleagues and that he would miss his best friend very much. But at that very second the door opened and all the police officers began to enter the room and they wanted to find out important information from the doctors. The officer asked the doctors if he was Zhao Jian Wei, the head doctor of their Huashan Hospital, and Chao Jia Wang, the head of this department of cardiac surgery. Zhao Jianwei and Chao Jia Wang were very surprised and wondered if the officers had really arrived so quickly and they were all such great fellows and their heroes. Diar, Zhao told the officer that this man Lin was colluding with the pharmacy owner to get kickbacks for all their medications. Diar, Zhao asked the officer to treat Diar, Lin strictly and use him as an example to warn all their staff. But suddenly the officer told Zhao Jian that they had not come there for Diar, Lin, but for him, and said that he was under arrest and had to go. Dr. Zhao Jian froze in surprise and thought that he didn't know why they wanted to arrest him and he was not to blame for any of their cases. Chao Jia Wan also couldn't understand why they didn't want to take Lin and why they suspected that they were bandits and he was very afraid of them. Chao Jia Wan told the officers that the culprit is Lin and why are they arresting them and they have no right to do this and he is unhappy. The officer told Dr. Chao Jia that he knew he would say that and he showed him the arrest warrant and asked if he had any objections. Zhao Jian was horrified and asked the officers if they were saying this seriously and why they had a warrant and were good people of the city. The officer told the doctors that they should know about their violations and deception better than him and said that the doctor was Lin and gave them a report on them. Diar, Zhao couldn't believe his ears and thought that Diar, Lin was impudent and how dare he accuse them of something they didn't do. Dr. Zhao Jian asked Director Lin if it was he who did this and said that he would finish him off and make him answer for his actions. Director Lin told Dr. Zhao that he was in the hospital for only more than a week and already wanted to say goodbye to them and leave. Director Lin pretended to cry and told Dr. Zhao that he really didn't want to leave and he was so used to his colleagues there. Xiao Xian was looking for her best friend Lin at that time and was wondering where he could have gone because she had been looking for him since the morning but couldn't find his friend anywhere. Zhou Zichiang told Xiao Xian that she might not wait for friend Lin and he would definitely not come back and they would miss their best Dr. Lin. Xiao Xian was very surprised and asked Zhou Zichiang what he meant and what he did to her best friend and said that she was shocked. Zhou Zichiang told Xiao Xian that Dr. Lin had arranged a meeting with the owners of the pharmacy yesterday and he was most likely already arrested there. Dr. Li told Zhou Zichiang that this cannot be and Dr. Lin is not the person who will chase money and power. Xiao Xian told Dr. Li that she also thinks so and does not understand how people can blame such a kind person as Lin for this. Zhou Zichiang told Dr. Li that there is a saying that there are devils in still waters and he could have done all the bad things back then. But suddenly Xiao Xian was very happy and said that it was Lin and he would appear next to Zhou Zichiang and he froze in place and sat quietly. Zhou Zichiang asked Director Lin what he was doing there and didn't he have other things to do and didn't he communicate with the officers for all his affairs. And then Zhou Zichiang noticed that behind Director Lin stood Dr. Zhao and the officers and he did not understand why they came there with him now. Zhou Zichiang was very happy to see the officers there and he told everyone that he talked about it and they didn't believe it and they came to arrest him. But suddenly the officer told doctors Lu Yongsheng and Fang Shufang that the two of them should go with him and answer a few questions at the station. All the doctors looked at how the officers took all the friends of the violators with them and thought that they did not know that all their friends were bandits. Director Lin told the police officer that there was another one of them there and his name was Zhou Zichiang and he was Chao Jia Wang's nephew and was helping. The officer said thank you to Director Lin and asked his men there to quickly check Chao Jia Wang's nephew and he might be a thief. Zhou Zichiang was horrified and told the police officer that he didn't do anything and they were making a huge mistake and why should they lock him up. And then Dr. Li walked up to Chao Xian and newcomer Lin and said that she had just talked to Mr. Mao, and he told her all the news. Dr. Li told her doctors that as of today, the directors have promoted her to head of the cardiac surgery department and she is glad. 
DR, Lee told the newcomers that DR, Lin has now been appointed as a deputy and the review period is six months and they want to study his affairs. DR, Lee told Xiao Xian that she would not have to move to the emergency department in the future and would stay there. Dr. Lee told Dr. Xiao Xian that there are currently not enough people in the department and she will have to work hard there to show her skills. Xiao Xian was delighted with this news and said thank you to Miss Lee and promised that she would try and work tirelessly. Director Lin told his friends that they need to hurry and be ready for the operation of the patient from the 804th ward and this is coming soon. Diar, Lee agreed with newcomer Lin and asked her doctors not to be nervous and they would prepare for the operation there together. And at that moment a sign lit up and this meant that now there would be an operation there and no one should disturb the doctors. Xia Xiaotong and the others sat outside the operating room and waited for all the doctors to start operating on their father and then he could be cured. And then Xia Xiaotong noticed that someone was calling her and thought that it was him and she needed to talk to him and it seemed like he wanted to tell her something important. Xia Xiaotong looked at the others and realized that they did not see her and were all waiting for her father to leave the room and realized that she could leave. Xia Xiaotong went down the stairs and asked the sweetheart what he was doing there and they would have problems if they were seen there together and there was a risk. The guy told Xia Xiaotong that she told him that the old man was having surgery today and he couldn't miss this and had to come take a look. Xia Xiaotong told the guy that the doctor said that the probability of success of the operation is very low and he may not leave the operating room alive. And suddenly at that very second the guy pulled Xia Xiaotong to him and began to hug her and asked if this really means that he will die and this is a chance. I, Xia Xiaotong told the sweetheart that he should just wait there for good news and when the old man dies, all the property of the Lu family will be hers. Xia Xiaotong kissed the sweetheart and said that she would figure out later how to get rid of Lu Jingwei because he was not needed at all and he was disturbing them. Xia Xiaotong cleaned herself up and told the sweetheart that she would go to them and otherwise this idiot would suspect something and grumble at her there. And three hours later, the doctors finished the operation and began to leave the operating room and thought that they would tell everything to the family of their patient. The son asked the doctors how his dad was feeling there and how the operation went now and he hopes that everything went very well there. Diar, Lee told the patient's son that he should not be nervous and this operation was very successful and he will live another 10 years for sure. The son and sister were very happy and thanked Diar, Lee for saving her father and now she would always be welcome in their family. Xia Xiaotong found out that the operation was successful and froze in place and could not understand how it happened and the likelihood of success was low. Diar, Li told the patient's children that they would soon be able to see their father and he also really wanted to communicate with his family after the operation. Lu Jingwei told his wife Xia Xiaotong thank you and if she had not insisted on the operation then they would not have done it and his father could have died. Lu Jingwei kissed his wife on the cheek and Xia Xiaotong thought that she wanted to get rid of the old man, but on the contrary, she extended his life. Dr. Li told Xiao Xian and Lin that they should stay there together today and the first night after surgery is important and he needs care. Dr. Xiao Xian was very happy and told Miss Li that of course they would stay together with newcomer Lin and help the patient in difficulty. Night fell and many doctors went home. But Xiao Xian and Lin both stayed on night duty and had to keep an eye on everyone there. Director Lin was sitting in the room reading a book and Xiao Xian fell asleep there and she was very tired after the operation and had to rest there. Xiao Xian saw in a dream how she was eating a lot of food and said that she could no longer eat it all and she had enough sweets for today. But suddenly, at that very second, Lu Jingwei ran into the room and he told the doctors that there was a problem and his father had no heartbeat there. Director Lin was very surprised to learn about this and wondered why the patient's heartbeat disappeared because he had recently been fine there. Xiao Xian and Lin began to quickly go to the patient's room to find out what happened to him and why he felt so bad there. The doctors ran into the office and noticed that the daughter and Xia Xiaotong were already standing there, and the daughter could not understand why her father became ill quickly. Xia Xiaotong pointed her finger at Dr. Li and said that it was all because of her and she did the surgery poorly and otherwise the old man would not have died now. Xiao Xian was angry at Xia Xiaotong's words and asked her not to talk nonsense and the operation was successful and the patient was completely fine then. Xia Xiaotong said that maybe there was a problem during the operation, but Dr. Li didn't tell them and was afraid of being to blame for her father's death. 
Dr. Li examined the patient and Xia Xiaotong told her that she had exposed her and the old man's life was now on her conscience and it was all so shameful. But suddenly at that moment, Director Lin slapped Xia Xiaotong in the face and told him to get out of there and this is not a zoo, she is acting like an animal. Xia Xiaotong fell silent and couldn't understand if this doctor had just hit her in the face and how dare he do this and she would punish him. Director Lin told Xia Xiaotong that they were examining him and only asked her to behave normally and not disturb them because they would help. Xia Xiaotong asked Lu Jingwei if he was really stupid and why was he standing there on the sidelines and not doing anything because it was so painful. Lu Jingwei began to roll up his sleeves and asked Director Lin how he dared to hit his wife and he will now answer for this act. But suddenly at that very second, Director Lin immediately kicked Lu Jingwei in the stomach and he no longer wanted to hear threats from the scoundrel Lu. Xia Xiaotong and Lu Jingwei were lying unconscious on the floor and Dr. Lin asked if they had calmed down and this was not the place to behave like that. Director Lin told them both that he would send them there after their father and they would regret acting like complete idiots and freaks. All the nurses looked at Director Lin and said what a real man he was and they fell in love with him at first sight. Director Lin asked Dr. Li what was wrong with the patient's health and she said that unfortunately they couldn't do anything and she was sorry. Dr. Li was very nervous and she was very sorry that such a good man died and he had to live for so many more years with children. But at that moment, Director Lin's attention fell on the machine next to the patient that showed the heartbeat and he thought there. Director Lin silently looked at the dead patient and thought that he was sure that something was wrong there and that someone was involved in the death of the old man. The device showed that the old man had no heartbeat and could no longer live and they did not understand because the doctors had already done a round recently. And then Xiao Xian came into the room and she was perplexed when she saw the patient there and thought that she should ask Dr. Li a question there. Xiao Xian asked Dr. Li why the patient's face was slightly blue and purple, as if something had happened there and it was all so strange. And then Director Lin said that he thinks that the reason is not the operation and even if it was a medical error, death would not be like this. Dr. Li asked her students to call the police so they could figure out what happened there and she herself is interested in finding out all this. Xiao Xian asked Xia Xiaotong and the others not to touch anything at the scene of the incident and wait for the police to arrive and she is already calling. Half an hour later, the police arrived at Huashan Hospital and the officer told them that they had found out the cause of death of the old man and it was definitely strangulation. The officer said that it was initially established that the problem lay in the ventilator and the uncle died from hypoxia. Xia Xiaotong stood in the room and listened to the words of the police officers, and she began to get nervous and realized that they could all solve this case. And then Xia Xiaotong began to tremble and she was very nervous and she thought that she might be sent to prison for many years after this. And suddenly at that moment Xia Xiaotong began to run out of the office as fast as she could and Yuan Si Qi asked the girl what she was doing now. Yuan Si Qi started running after Xia Xiaotong and asked her to stand and she should ask her a couple of questions and this is important for the investigation of their case. Yuan Si Qi asked her people Zhang to block all the doors and Zhao to follow him and they would not let this girl escape from there. And at that very second, Yuan Si Qi grabbed Xia Xiaotong and told all the officers that she had caught her and now they would deal with her and she was evil. The patient's daughter began to run to Xia Xiaotong and wanted to know if it was she who took the life of her father and she would answer for this terrible sin. And then the patient's daughter delivered a powerful blow to Xia Xiaotong's face and said that she deserved it and she wanted to finish her off there too. The patient's daughter asked Xia Xiaotong why she did this because her father always loved her and treated her very well, like everyone else. Yuan Si Qi went to Dr. Li and said that the body of this victim will remain in Huashan Hospital for now and she agreed. Yuan Si Qi told Dr. Li that she must first take this suspect and family home and then she will take care of the murder case. Dr. Li told Xiao Xian and Lin that they can rest and tomorrow they will have a serious conversation and they should be mentally prepared. The next day in the morning, Chao Xian told patient 25 that she could go there and the doctor would examine her and make a diagnosis. And then suddenly Zhao Wen came into the room and she was surprised to see director Lin there and asked if it was him and what he was doing there. Chao Xian was also surprised and asked Zhao Wen if she really knew Dr. Lin and he told her that he didn't know this girl and who she was. Zhao Wen told Director Lin that there was one thing he didn't know and all the major hospitals in China had signed contracts with them. 
Zhao Wen told Director Lin that they were all signed at the price after the price increase and in any case she was in the black and Lin was proud. But at that moment someone started calling Zhao Wen and she realized that it was her assistant Meng Haiqing and she should talk to him. Zhao Wen replied to Meng Haiqing's assistant and was in a good mood and wanted to hear good news from him now. But suddenly Meng Haiqing told Zhao Wen that in the delivery department they were told that there were problems with their goods and all their goods were detained there. Zhao Wen was perplexed by the words of the assistant and thought how this could happen because recently everything was fine and this is so bad. Zhao Wen asked the director if he did this and he said that the contract says that if they do not deliver the goods they will violate the contract. Xiao Exian did not understand anything and director Lin told Zhao Wen that not only would they not have to pay for it, but they would also cover everything themselves. Zhao Wen felt very bad after director Lin's words and immediately she began to hold her heart and realized that her heart was hurting again. And at that same second, unexpectedly, Zhao Wen fell to the floor and Xiao Exian told Lin that she should have examined her first and then spoken. Director Lin asked Xiao Exian why she was standing there and said that Zhao Wen needed to be hospitalized urgently and was unconscious. And after a couple of minutes, Zhao Wen continued to lie unconscious and Director Lin realized that it seemed like it was time for a better plan. Director Lin wrote a message to Chao Qing Chiu and said that they could already begin their plan and she agreed with him and asked him to believe. Chao Qingxiu's workers immediately started hacking into the servers and they spread all the rumors about Mr. Lin's drug case so quickly. Chao Qingxiu's workers realized that they were doing everything right and so soon they would send all the information to all sites on their internet. Chao Qingxiu started rumors that pharmaceutical products had some serious problems and everyone was detained in the department. Director Lin read all these news and thought that Chao Qing did a very good job and he is happy that she helped him now. Director Lin asked Chao Exian how Zhao Wan from the 804th Ward was doing and whether she had regained consciousness and how her health was now. Chao Exian told Dr. Lin that Zhao Wen's condition is not good and she looks depressed and in a very bad mood now. Director Lin told Chao Exian that he understood her words and he will examine her and prescribe medicine and she will feel better and will recover immediately. Xiao Exian told Dr. Lin that she wants to go with him and wants to learn a lot from him and he is very experienced and the best doctor in the world. Director Lin approached the 804th ward and thought that he would now try to help Zhao Wan if she felt so bad today. At this time, Zhao Wan was sitting in the room and silently thinking about all the things that had failed and she must find a solution to everything. Director Lin saw Zhao Wan and realized that at this rate she would begin to have mental problems and would have to be transferred to another place. Zhao Wan asked Director Lin if he really came there to her ward to show his superiority because he is a winning boss. And suddenly Director Lin told Zhao Wan that now the stock price of her company has fallen by 3% and it will definitely reach the bottom soon. Zhao Wan was angry and asked how this happened and even if the transportation department delayed the goods, this should not have happened. Zhao Wen started to reach out and wanted to snatch Director Lin's phone, but he didn't let her grab the phone and he mocked her there. Director Lin told Zhao Wen that they were trending on Weibo and in just one day, her company's popularity there had already reached a billion. And at that very second, having heard all this news, Zhao Wen immediately began to spit blood there and thought that she was already dying and this was her end. Director Lin was horrified to see what happened to Zhao Wan and he called a nurse there and asked him to bring a pacemaker there. Xiao Exian approached Dr. Lin and said that she admires him and he said that he has been like this since birth and he is also glad that she is his friend. Director Lin asked Xiao Exian how Zhao Wan was feeling there and she said that she was fine and had already come to her senses there. Xiao Exian told Dr. Lin that Zhao Wen felt a little weak in her body and he said that tomorrow he would come to her and check on her. The next day in the morning, Director Lin arrived at his Huashan hospital and thought that he had promised Xiao Exian yesterday that he would come to Zhao. Director Lin went into Zhao Wen's room and asked her how she was feeling today and he thought that she was already feeling better than yesterday. Zhao Wen told Director Lin that she was fine today until he came and now she feels uncomfortable again. Zhao Wen asked Director Lin if he had any cigarettes and she really wanted to smoke to calm her nerves because she was depressed. Director Lin sat down on the chair and thought that he should talk to Zhao Wen and then he would find out a lot of information about the medicine case. 
Director Lin told Zhao Wen that smoking is prohibited in the hospital and he cannot give her cigarettes and in general it is harmful to her health. Zhao Wen told Director Lin that she was tired of waiting and let them get straight to the point and he would say what he wanted to tell her all along. Director Lin told Zhao Wen that judging by her tone, she had received instructions from the company and should negotiate all matters with him. Zhao Wen said that the head office agreed to reduce the price to 138 and they will not increase the prices of all these medicines. Director Lin told Zhao Wen that the price of ibupalin should be 9 yuan and the price of the other 25 drugs was greatly reduced. Zhao Wen began to get up and told Director Lin that this was impossible because otherwise the company would go bankrupt and the entire business would be lost. Zhao Wen said that 23 is the final number and otherwise there is no point in entering the Chinese market and it will be their failure. Director Lin agreed with Zhao Wen and said that this would suit them, but he said that he needed something else from her and would ask for it. Zhao Wen was very nervous and did not know what Director Lin wanted from her and asked what he wanted and asked him not to delay with this request. And half an hour later, Director Lin left Zhao Wen's room and immediately realized that his affairs were getting better and everything was going according to plan, and that's good. And then, near the door of the director, Lin met Xiao Xian and the doctors, and she asked why he had been in the room for so long and whether Zhao was alive. Xiao Xian asked Director Lin if he needed anything else to provide first aid and how the patient Zhao Wen was doing there. But Director Lin lightly hit Xiao Xian on the head and thought that she fantasized too often and could invent many events. Director Lin told Xiao Xian that Zhao Wan is alive and well and he will discharge her from the hospital tomorrow and she can go back home. Xiao Xian was surprised and asked Director Lin if he really said this seriously and why he would discharge the patient from the hospital so quickly. Director Lin told Xiao Xian that of course he is telling her the truth and Zhao Wan is healthy and she had panic attacks, this can be treated at home. The nurses were in love and said that Dr. Lin was incredible and they were specially ill so that he would treat them and it was so nice. Director Lin went outside and called Liang Ruxu and asked her what her plans were for the evening and asked her to come to his place for dinner. And after some time, Director Lin came to Jaya's house and he was waiting for Liang Ruxu's guest and thought that he would organize a good dinner. Liang Ruxu came to Jaya's house and asked Director Lin if he was ashamed to force the girl to buy food for her dinner. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu to come in and said that he had been waiting for her and he specially cancelled all his business to have dinner with her at home. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he had no use for the grill and a swimming pool, but she had no use for meat and honestly he asked if she really didn't have critical thinking. Liang Ruxu sat down at the table and thought that she never expected that her friend Lin was obsessed with little things and he was begging to buy her products. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin why they met with him today and did he really have any news about their past case? Director Lin sat down next to Liang Ruxu and thought that it seemed that she was not very happy to come to visit him and maybe she was embarrassed by him. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that she had guessed right and there was one thing and it might interest her too if she found out for herself. Director Lin smiled and realized that he had attracted the attention of Mayor Liang Ruxu and now she was waiting for what he would offer her and what does it matter. But Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu to look at how big his pool is and how clean the water is that everyone wants to swim. Liang Ruxu understood Director Lin's hint and thought that she now expected him to talk about a completely different matter but he was talking about water. Liang Ruxu stood up and told Director Lin that she was tired of his mystery and would go get a swimsuit to swim now. Liang Ruxu went to change clothes and Director Lin started grilling kebabs on the grill and thought that he should treat the mayor to something delicious. And after a couple of minutes, Liang Ruxu began to leave the house and thought that it looked like Director Lin would appreciate her dress for swimming in the pool. Liang Ruxu went out into the courtyard and she stood in front of Director Lin in a very beautiful dress and thought that the weather there is great today. Liang Ruxu herself really liked her dress and she realized that she had made the right choice and found excellent and very comfortable clothes. Liang Ruxu continued walking and approached Director Lin and he wanted to say a few words to her and she was ready to listen to all the words. Director Lin was happy and told Liang Ruxu that he had never thought that Madame Mayer had such a slender figure and was so beautiful. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin not to talk nonsense and she is still far from Zi Qingyang and she is the real beauty, not like everyone else. 
Liang Ruxu approached the water and realized that it was very warm and she immediately wanted to plunge into this water and swim to quickly freshen up. Liang Ruxu sat next to the pool and felt the clean water, which helped her take a break from all her affairs and think about pure nature there. Director Lin looked at Liang Ruxu and thought that there is nothing better than natural beauty and girls should know about this and not forget. And after Liang Ruxu swam and left the pool, Mr. Lin immediately took out an envelope and handed it to Liang Ruxu to evaluate. Liang Ruxu pulled the documents out of the envelope and thought what documents they could be and why Director Lin gave them to her there. Liang Ruxu was very surprised and asked Director Lin how he got it because she thought it was impossible and he had connections. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that the value of the shares of the six companies would soon fall and therefore they were willing to do anything to avoid losses. Lin told Liang Ruxu that the price of ibupolin had dropped to 23 and the prices of other goods would already be reduced by 70%. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that this document contains a list of people who took bribes, but unfortunately it is incomplete and they will correct it. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that they could not give him the names of authoritative people and it would not be difficult for her to complete the list. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she should think about it and first discuss all this with her grandfather and listen to his opinion too. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that now everything is in her hands and he is no longer joking and these words can be taken literally and they will fix all this. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that it was too late to go home and there were many free rooms in his villa and she could stay. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that then she should take a shower first because she swam in the pool and it was necessary for her. At night, Liang Ruxu was still in Jaya's Hauj and thought that she had a good friend and Lin could help her in difficult times. Liang Ruxu took a shower and dried her beautiful and long hair and thought that Director Lin has a huge and cool pool there. Director Lin wished Liang Ruxu good night and said that tomorrow they could discuss all other matters and find their new business. But suddenly at that moment Liang Ruxu pulled Director Lin towards her and thought that she should tell him what she had wanted for a long time. Liang Ruxu asked Director Lin not to leave and stay with her and she was afraid to be alone and now she will explain to him why she is afraid. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu if she was drunk and if she thought what she was saying now and she should control herself in his house. And then Director Lin noticed that there was a bottle of wine next to Mayor Liang Ruxu and realized that she was definitely drunk and he didn't like it so much. Liang Ruxu did not answer Director Lin's questions and silently looked at him and thought that he was so handsome and helped her with her affairs. Liang Ruxu wanted to pull Director Lin towards her, but he quickly stepped aside and told his friend that she was very drunk now. Liang Ruxu told Director Lin that she is not drunk and knows what she is doing and it is not because of his help and she already likes him as a man. And a couple of hours later, Director Lin was lying on the bed and thought that he was very tired today and it didn't hurt him to take a little break from business. Liang Ruxu remembered and asked Director Lin to send her this copy of the document, and it's good that now she remembered this matter. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that he would send the document to her phone now and he almost forgot about it and was busy with something completely different. Liang Ruxu got up and thought that she needed to go home because tomorrow she had to get up early in the morning and alone she might be late and oversleep there. And then grandfather called Liang Ruxu and asked where she got it and she could guarantee that the document was valid and it was not a hoax. Grandfather agreed with Liang Ruxu and said that she should quickly deal with this and most importantly as soon as possible and then it will be cool. Director Lin asked Liang Ruxu if she needed help with the zipper now and he noticed that she would not be able to fasten this zipper. Liang Ruxu became very nervous and grandfather heard these words and he asked her whose voice it was and who she was with and where she was now. Liang Ruxu told her grandfather that her phone battery was running out and she needed to go and ended the call and realized that she understood in time. At this time at night in Yenjing, the men were sitting in the building and thought that they called Liang Ruxu in time and it seemed that she was nervous there. The men looked at the time and noticed that it was already 1 in the morning and where was this girl walking then and who was she with now and this really worried all of them. Liang Ruxu's grandfather Liang Xiangha and her dad Liang Tsunxiao were shocked and wondered if they had heard the voice of the guy with her during the call. Liang Tsunxiao was horrified and asked Liang Xiangha what happened just now and whether Liang Ruxu really had an affair with someone before the wedding and how terrible it was. 
Liang Ruxu's mother Shen Shuei told Liang Tsunxiao that she and her grandfather were overreacting to this and asked them not to be nervous there. Shen Shuei told them that maybe her daughter Liang Ruxu is there with her friends and they are having fun and having a good time together. Liang Tsunxiao flipped through the list of evidence that Lin had obtained and he was very surprised and wanted to discuss it with his father there. Liang Tsunxiao told his father that this document is a very dangerous thing and as soon as it is published all the consequences will be a disaster. Shen Shuei told Liang Xianha that this could be a great opportunity for their Liang family and maybe their daughter gave them this chance. Liang Xianha agreed with Shen Shuei and said that his bride is smart and this list can save them from many obstacles and this is a fact. Liang Xianghe asked everyone not to drink this wine anymore and he will take it tomorrow to a meeting with his old acquaintance and they will discuss everything there. Liang Tsunxiao was shocked by Liang Xianghe's father's words and asked if he really wanted to intimidate him and what he meant and wanted to hear the answers. Liang Xianghe told Liang Tsunxiao that for some they are an eyesore and for others they are the same and he is curious to know one important thing. Liang Xianghe told his son that he wanted to find out where Ruxu got this information from and did she really meet someone more influential than them? Shen Shui asked her father if he knew what Lin Yi's origins were and she heard that he performed a successful operation on old man Yang recently. Liang Xianghe asked Shen Shui if she remembered the man who defeated a black bear with his bare hands and in the northeast then. Liang Tsunxiao heard his father's words and was very surprised and he stood up from his seat so abruptly and asked if dad was really talking about that man there. Liang Tsunxiao asked Liang Xianghe if he was talking about a man named Lin Jingzhang and this man could never be forgotten. At this time, Liang Ruxu straightened her hair and told director Lin that she had sent the document to her grandfather and he was studying it. Liang Ruxu told director Lin that her grandfather is a smart person and he knows what to do with this document and will definitely not let them all down. Liang Ruxu kissed director Lin on the cheek and said that others may not know how he helped her, but she will always remember everything. Director Lin told Liang Ruxu that it doesn't matter because she knows what he wants and she understands him better than everyone else. Liang Ruxu asked director Lin to rest because he was so tired and he didn't rest at all today and he should sleep there alone. Liang Ruxu told dear Lin that she needed to go to work and she needed to completely resolve the issue with medications and then she would be calm. The next day in the morning, Lin arrived at Huashan Hospital and he was glad that yesterday he managed to solve many plans and all the problems. Director Lin entered the hospital and froze in surprise and thought that he did not expect to meet strangers there in the morning and who they were. The man gave Diar, Li a gift and told her that he was a new colleague and hoped that they would become friends and there would be no disagreements between them. Dr. Lee told newcomer Lin that he has finally arrived and these two people next to her are the new deputy heads of this department. Diar, Lee told newcomer Lin that one of these new doctors is called Wang Jia and she just met them and they are so happy. Diar, Lee told director Lin about the second new deputy and his name is Zheng Binjiang and he is also very happy to become one team. Wang Jia told director Lin that he had heard that he also held a high position and that he had carried out a very complex operation there. Director Lin looked angrily at newcomer Wang Jia and didn't like what he said at all and didn't know why he said it to him. Xiao Xian stood between Dr. Lin and Wang Jia and realized that there was clearly tension between them and they were in conflict. Xiao Xian told Dr. Lin that the same patient from 804 was being discharged today and would he like to check on her now? Director Lin glanced at Xiao Xian and thought that he had completely forgotten about Zhao Wan and he really needed to check on how she was doing. Director Lin told Xiao Xian that she was right and he would go to her and he would find out how she was doing and how she was struggling with her problem head on. Director Lin headed to the 804th ward and thought that he wanted to have a normal conversation with her and find out everything from her. Zhao Wan was already packing her things there and wanted to quickly go home and rest, because this week had been difficult for her mentally. Zhao Wan noticed Director Lin and asked why he came there and did he really want to mock her again and he wasn't tired. Director Lin asked Zhao Wan how he could bully her because she spent so much money there and on the contrary it was so good. Zhao Wan told Lin that she knows that she is no match for him, but she does not understand for what purpose he comes to her and Lin is not a philanthropist. Director Lin took Zhao Wen's examination results and thought that she hated him but that was good and he wanted to get on her nerves. Director Lin told Zhao Wen that this is not why he comes to her and it's just that he likes to make her eyesore and that always makes him happy. 
Zhao Wen felt bad with her heart again after Director Lin's words and she realized that it was in vain to listen to all his words every time and she did not leave. Director Lin told Zhao Wen that she should rest because she shouldn't be nervous and then her heart would soon return to normal. Zhao Wen shouted at Director Lin and said that she was already leaving the hospital today and did not want to see the scoundrel again. Director Lin was on the contrary happy and told Zhao Wen that she could check out and he would not stop her and ask her to stay. Zhao Wen continued to be angry and Director Lin asked Xiao Exian to issue a hospital bill to the patient and she should pay it. Xiao Exian handed Zhao Wen the hospital bill and said that the amount was 12,480 yuan for everything. Xiao Exian told Zhao Wen that she had paid 10,000 earlier and she still had 2,480 yuan left to pay. Zhao Wen looked at her hospital bill and asked Dr. Xiao Exian if her treatment was really so expensive and it's all strange. Xiao Exian told Zhao Wen that Dr. Lin said that she has a very high status and they should only use imported goods. Zhao Wen was furious at this and thought that Director Lin was a scoundrel and a pain in the ass and always tried to hinder her in everything there. Afterwards, the doctors went into their office and Director Lin told Xiao Exian that they had finished with the formalities and would proceed to their business. Xiao Exian told Dr. Lin that she took several people so that he would not have problems and wanted to help him with all this. And at that very second, Dr. Li entered the room and immediately asked all her doctors to look at this information on her hand about their patient. Dr. Li told newcomer Lin that this was a chart from a patient who was having surgery tomorrow, and Lin told Li that he understood it and would study the chart. But suddenly at this moment, newcomer Wang Jia walked into the room and he was flapping his hands and wanted to attract the attention of all the doctors in the room. Wang Jia told the ladies and gentlemen that they met with Boss Zheng there and decided to celebrate their first day of work there together. Wang Jia asked his colleagues not to order lunch today and said that he himself treats them and hopes that they will become best friends. Xiao Exian was very happy and said thank you to Dr. Wang Jia and also Dr. Zheng Binjiang and they did not expect that they would treat them today. Wang Jia told Xiao Exian that there is no need to thank them and if he remembers everything correctly, there are only 28 people in their department. Director Lin looked at Wang Jia and he did not pay attention to all his words and wanted to do his work, which is very full there. Xiao Exian asked Dr. Wang Jia if he really wanted to treat everyone there, including the nurses, and said that this was a very decent amount. Wang Jia told Xiao Exian that he is grateful to her for thinking about his expenses but it doesn't matter and he is honored and proud. And half an hour later the courier arrived and told Dr. Wang that they had already brought his order and were grateful that he chose their cafe. Wang Jia told the couriers that they were great and delivered all the dishes very quickly and asked them to leave all the dishes on the table at their entrance. The couriers left all the dishes on the table as Dr. Wang asked and left, and the doctor thought that now he could call his future friends. Dr. Wang Jia told all his colleagues that he invites everyone to eat and he has prepared everything and they will have a good time at lunch. Dr. Wang Jia decided to approach Dr. Li and put a box on her desk and thought that she should be surprised and he tried very hard. Dr. Wang Jia told Dr. Li that this was a caramel latte and he ordered it especially for her and asked her to try its taste now. Xiao Exian didn't understand and asked Dr. Wang Jia why she just got the last portion and where is Dr. Lin's food and it's not there. Wang Jia asked what was wrong with him and told Dr. Lin that he had completely forgotten about him and he would have to order delivery himself and that was sad. Dr. Li looked at Wang Jia and thought that this was not good and the doctor did the wrong thing and in vain he did not order food for her friend Lin. Xiao Exian also realized that Wang Jia did this on purpose and he is there removing Dr. Lin from the team and this does not suit her at all. And then Xiao Exian approached Dr. Lin and wanted to give her lunch and didn't want him to be left without food because of the bastard Dr. Wang Jia. Xiao Exian asked Lin's friend to take her portion and said that she was on a diet and there was enough fruit and she no longer wanted to eat the dish. And at that moment the door opened and a girl came into the room and she asked all the doctors if she could now find Dr. Lin there. It was Miss Zi Qing Yang and she wanted to see Dear Lin and she brought with her many delicious dishes so that her dear would not go hungry. All the nurses were shocked and they looked at Zi Qing and thought, is this beauty really Dr. Lin's girlfriend and he is very lucky. 
Director Lin wondered what his dear Zi Qing was doing there and why did she come to Huashan Hospital and was it really to visit him there? Zi Qing told dear Lin that she was free now and so she decided to bring him food and he said thank you and he had not eaten yet. Director Lin told DR, Wang Jia that they could all have lunch there and he would go away for a while and hope that they would have enough to eat. Wang Jia was angry and thought how such a beauty could get involved with such a freak like Lin and he doesn't understand this lady's logic at all. At this time, Director Lin and Miss Z came to the rest room and Lin began to open the bowl that his beloved brought him. Director Lin noticed that the dishes were full to the brim and there was so much delicious food that could feed many entire families. Director Lin asked Zi Qing Yang why she came and asked her to tell him the truth and he would listen to everything that dear Zi told him. Zi Qing Yan told Lin that they had not spent time together for a long time and she had nothing to do and she decided to feed him there today. Director Lin happily ate the dish that sweet Zi had prepared and said that it was very tasty and he was happy that she was with him. Zi Qing was pleased that Director Lin liked everything and she already missed him and they had not seen each other for many days. Director Lin and Miss Zi sat in the lounge room for a long time and they told each other what happened to them while they weren't seeing each other. And after a while, Director Lin walked Miss Zi Qing to the elevator and said that he would pick her up after work and wished her good luck. Zi Qing Yan blew kisses towards Director Lin and said that she would wait for him to come to her at night. Director Lin was walking along the corridor and noticed how all the nurses had gathered there and they were discussing something with Chiao Xian, they were clearly gossiping. Chiao Xian turned around and noticed Director Lin walking towards them and she was happy and began to approach him to ask a couple of questions. Chiao Xian asked Dr. Lin if that beauty was really his girlfriend and she didn't know that he was dating, he asked Chiao what she said. Director Lin told Chiao Xian that this girl was stalking him and he was so popular among girls and there was nothing he could do about it. Dr. Wang Jia listened to Director Lin's words and thought that he was also an actor and he knew that not a single beauty would communicate with him. Chiao Xian told Dr. Lin that they were discussing that the skirt the beauty came in was from the new Ba collection and it was very expensive. Director Lin told Xiao Xian that this girl has her own company and this is normal and she can afford the best branded things. Xiao Xian couldn't believe her ears and asked Dr. Lin if he really had such rich fans and where did he come from so handsome. And at that moment Dr. Li approached them and said that tomorrow they had surgery and the log should start preparing and everyone should get up early tomorrow. Xiao Xian told Dr. Li that she understood her and they will not let her down and will diligently prepare for the operation and save the life of this patient. At this time, on the street, Wang Ying was running and thought that she should hurry quickly and then she would have time to arrive at the place where she planned to go. And then suddenly Director Lin appeared in front of her and asked Wang Ying where she was in such a hurry and she could fall from such a speed of her running. Wang Ying was very happy to see a familiar person and she told Director Lin that she had not seen him for a long time and what he was doing these days. Director Lin told Wang Ying that he had become a doctor and wanted to gain experience in the medical field and asked her where she was in such a hurry. Wang Ying told Director Lin that he never ceases to amaze her and this is so similar to him and for this she adores him and he is definitely her best friend. Wang Ying asked Director Lin if he remembered the tender for a project in the suburbs and there was a group of people who refused even for a hundred thousand. Director Lin told Wang Ying that it is difficult to do business and come to an agreement with such people and asked him to help her and he is now free. Wang Ying told Director Lin that he would only make a fuss and they needed to be sensitive in this matter, otherwise Chao Yang would have problems. Director Lin asked Wang Ying not to be nervous and said that he knows exactly when to stop and no one will have any problems and he will solve all matters. Afterwards, Director Lin and Wang Ying drove in her car and he thought that his girlfriend should not think about it and he would solve this trifle himself. Director Lin called Qin Han and asked him to call 10 trucks to the Huihai Road slum and he would need them later. Qin Han was very surprised and asked his friend Lin why he needed all these trucks and had construction by tender really begun so quickly? Director Lin told Qin Han that there are people there who don't want to move and they need to be helped to make up their minds and explain everything carefully. Qin Han told Director Lin that he understood him and he didn't even have to think about it and he would arrange everything for Lin's best friend. And an hour later, Director Lin and Wang Ying quickly arrived in the Zhonghai slums and he realized that he needed to talk carefully with people. 